Heidi, are we live? Uh, wait for it. Wait for it. Is it live? Oh, there it is. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're having a wonderful day. If you're watching this and it does not say live at the bottom of the screen, unfortunately, you're watching the recap. The good news is we are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. Drop your thumbs up on the video. Make sure you're subscribed. You're on mobile press. Hot chat. X out the chat. Hit the thumbs up button. Second link for the nightly watch list and main channel. First link for the Scream Alerts boot camp and real estate course. But... Ladies and gentlemen, we didn't have much today. I mean, there was a lot of individual company news leading into this, but, oh, the PCE came in hot. So the numbers, core PCE, that was the big one. Uh, it came in at 4.7 year over year instead of 4.3, which was very hot. They even revised last month up by 0.2. Month over month came in at 0.6 on core. Even on the headline, it came in at 0.6. Honestly, it was a all-around solid print of inflation showing that things are kind of coming back. So some people are still trying to bring up no landing and talking about the economy being hot. But as far as the Fed, the Fed futures, this was not good. Every single rate hike expectation across the board is started to go up. Services are climbing. I don't know if you see that. This is what you do not want to see. It is no longer going down, but it is finding a way to creep back up. So Chad, it's going to be a wild day. This is already a very big reaction considering it's been about a uh, 30 minutes since the data came out. I want to say it's already big uh, or it's one of the biggest so far. Uh, futures are already down. They hit a level lower than yesterday. And the thing was, we were already down about three quarters of a percent leading into the report. So Chad, it's going to be a wild one. It's Friday. We got a week of uh, decent data. And then right after next week, we're getting into the non-farm. So Chad, a dog. I hope you're ready, baby. I hope you're ready. Good morning. How you living, man? What's up, Joey? What's up, Dispassionate? What's up, Donnie Viatav? Oh, Donnie, it's good morning, baby. Top of the morning. I got my pony. Hey, man, Chris, tell him. What's up, Edward Patel? I got no ad, baby. No ad, baby. Oh, run it, baby. That's good. That's beautiful to hear. What's up, Najee Wolf? What's up, Juice Trades? Good morning, William Ward. Lateral Drift Kareem. Small Bash. Hobby Life. LRF, baby. Laker J. Oh, good morning. What's up, Samuel? What's up, Nate McAllister? What's up, Skylar? Jacob, Kevin McClain, Christina. Open face sandwich, baby. Oh, we got Nepal in the house. Amen. What's up, Nepal? Oh, Nepal, not not from Nepal, but he's Nepal. You know what I'm saying? It's Nepal, baby. Nepal been putting in the work. Oh, Banks, Sinatra, Chaos Zero, Drew B, Mr. Spriggs, Edgar, Charles Creighton, good morning, Juicy Mint, Shaq, Wheezy, Benny, Silverio, baby. Oh, good morning, Alaskan Assassin, Hamid. Oh, Xander, Screw College, Robert Wilcox, Tom Smith, Sizzler, Charlie in the tree, baby. Friday is coming in hot, man. What's up, Payday? What's up, Amor Fati? What's up, JT? What's up, Riley Mack? Yvonne and Verse King, Stafford with them dividends, baby. Tell them. Tell them with the dividends. <clears throat> Stop playing with me. Oh, Hugo Boss. What's up, Rock? What's up, Caesar Ray? How you living, man? Good morning, Mahar. Good morning, David. Honey, Isaiah Khabibi, you ready? Javier, J. Max, Anthony, Tristan, Terry Rhodes. Good morning, Chad Adonia. Bro, I may have missed some. The chat is going quick, baby. Chat is going quick. Good morning, CJ. Good morning, Jack Delaney. Oh, we got this, Drewy B. Tell him, Drewy B. I don't know. Is it Drew B or Drewy? Has anybody called you Drewy? Is that is that we I don't want to make it weird. If it's too weird, you let me know, man. You know, Joshua Harris. I love that name, Joshua. It's a good name, man. It's a good name. Della Greasy. Good life. Greenscape. Oh. Chattadonia, let's do it. I made your morning with this shout out, man. You made my morning shout me out in the morning, bro. You out here, JT. Let's go. You know, not, not many people wake up this early. If you're on the East Coast, I give you less credit because it's damn nine o'clock. Your ass should be up by nine o'clock. If you in Hawaii, you just an animal. Uh, that's so that in the West Coast, you a G. You know, East Coast, you like on the cusp, but lazy and not right now because I don't know why you're not up by 9 a.m., asshole. You know what I'm saying? Uh huh. Yeah, I'm sorry. East Coast is like, why did you just call me out that heavy, bro? Because it's 9.30 a.m. right now. It's 9 a.m. What the fuck? You got the sun out. How the hell did you not? Central, you... Yeah, I guess... I didn't really think about Central, to be honest with you. That's like the middle of America, man. So, I don't know. Shout out to Ohio. 
Uh, maybe Texas. I don't know. Oh, thank you, Jasmine. We needed that. I needed a good old. I need that in the morning. You know, we back in my day, we used to walk around saying that. It was really cool. <laughs> but Chad, let us get into the earnings, uh, or earnings, the news. I hope you're ready again. Today's going to be a wild one. We'll see, though. I'm still kind of, uh, I don't know. I don't I don't doubt the market to do nothing. I hope you got my theory. We're going to talk about it. Um, just simply, I don't think much is going to even happen next week. So we'll see what type of note we end on on Friday. And let's enjoy the Friday. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. I see you, brethren. I see you, man. So here is the news. Uh, inflation, it is taken off again last month as measured by the Fed's favorite gauge, upending optimism that the peak has passed. The headline PCE deflator rose 0.6 month on month with the annual rate picking up to 5.4 from a revised 5.3. More worrying, the core gauge accelerated to 4.7 from a revised 4.6. The sources of the pickup are income spending and growth, which have remained healthy last month. And honestly, though, man, like, shit is getting wild. I need to actually show you this related to the data. And remember, too, we still have a, a couple more sets of data here today, about an hour, uh, an hour and a half after the bell. Or no, 30 minutes. But check it out, man. I want you guys to look at these revisions. It's getting unreal. So you got to realize, last time you had Core PCE, uh, it came in at 0.3. They revised it to 0.4. It was at 4.4 core. They revised it to 4.6. So that's the crazy part because, like, it's a big jump based on expectations. But you're noticing the revision from the actual number. It's moving there. No, the revisions are insane. Uh, I'm telling you, even some of the revisions that you've gotten with jobs and everything else. But mainly, you know, I don't want to focus on the nitty gritty. But this right off the bat, I mean, these revisions are absolutely unreal. And another part of today, too, personal spending and income. You know, income didn't go as much, which is kind of good for wages. Some of you are like, why is that good? I made less money. I know. Bring that up with Jerome. Uh, but personal spending is, again, showing a hotter sign of inflation, more or less. What the hell is it? Damn it. What is that? What's closed? I don't want to close. What? Do you guys see that little thing that says close? How do I get rid of that? How do I get rid of that, man? Man, this is this is getting real difficult out here, bro. What just happened? There you go. There's there's my dirty desktop. God bless you. Okay, I, I was able to find the close button. All right, we good. We good. But yeah, keep that in mind. That was part of today. Uh, the source of the pickup is home as uh, home spending or home prices and income and spending growth. They remained healthy last month. Equity futures extended declines. Treasury yields jumped and the dollar strengthened after the PCE report. European stocks fell and Asian equities gauge was on course for a fourth weekly decline. The longest losing streak since September. Crude advanced and gold was lower. Uh, investors are dumping equities and cash in favor of bonds as they position for risk that the Fed persists with the hawkish tone. Bank of America said global equity funds lost $7 billion in outflows last week through February 22nd, while 3.8 billion left cash funds, the bank said, citing EPFR global data at 4.9 billion. Bonds drew additions for an eighth week in the longest streak of such a trade since November 2021. Uh, City and Goldman restricted employees' use of AI-powered chat GPT. Uh, GPT, GPT. Uh, the Department of Justice wants to block Adobe's $20 billion purchase of startup Figma. An antitrust lawsuit may be filed next month. The deal also faces antitrust reviews in the EU and UK. Uh, Boeing slumped after pausing deliveries of 787 over documentation issue with the fuselage component. Goldman said investigations and inquiries into their credit card business have expanded beyond the CFPB. Credit Suisse cut pay on three and a half billion uh, or cut payouts on the three and a half billion real estate fund. BASF scrapped their three billion buyback program ahead of time, and they will cut 2,600 jobs. Ex Ericsson will also be laying off 8,500 employees. Uh, the dollar has peaked, and that may end the world's most painful trade. The USD surge last year left a trail of destruction in its wake. Inflation charged higher as the cost of food and oil jumped. Nations such as Ghana were driven from the brink of a debt default, while stock and bond investors were saddled with outsized losses. I read the big take on implications for a dollar retreat. Russia war in Ukraine reached the one-year mark today. China called for a ceasefire in a 12-point peace plan, but several of the clauses offer clear benefits to Vladimir Putin and got a short shrift. Meanwhile, Joe Biden's $300 billion sanctions are failing to achieve their ends. The economic punishment was touted as a game-changer. And then the map of the day uh, is the Russia-occupied land at the beginning of the war till now, which has decreased uh, since a year ago. 
And then 10 a.m., you're going to get January new home sales, February University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment, 1015, Fed Jefferson and Fed Mester are speaking, 1130, Fed Bullard, uh, 1 p.m., Baker Hughes, 130, Fed Collins, and then 130, again, Fed Waller. Oh, you got a lot of Fed speakers today. Happy Friday, man. Uh, Janet Yellen said a soft landing is possible for the U.S. economy thanks to a strong labor market. U.S. data on tap new home sales may have risen slightly, though Bloomberg expects the estimate is slightly above consensus in the softening of mortgage rates encourage borrowers on the bubble to complete purchases. Republicans will hold their first presidential primary debate in August in Milwaukee. Party officials have discussed requirements that include all candidates pledged to support the eventual nominee, which may be a challenge for Donald Trump, who has so far declined to commit to do so. Uh, Mexico's economy grew at a preliminary rate uh, estimate uh, compared to a preliminary estimate last quarter compared with the prior period. GDP rose 0.5. Brazil's inflation cooled for a nine month, uh, nine month, ninth month to 5.6. Uh, German economy shrank to 0.4 in the fourth quarter, double the decline of the previous estimate. Renting a home in the UK is cheaper than taking out a new mortgage to buy one for the first time in 14 years. Uh, UK household confidence rebounded by the most in uh, in February, with GFK's consumer confidence jumping seven points to negative 38. The ECB may need to deliver a significant rate hike in the second quarter. Joachim Nagel said uh, Turkey is leaning towards holding general elections in May as planned unless political consultations suggest otherwise. Uh, Kozowa Oueda largely stuck to the existing Bank of Japan script in the first parliamentary hearing to approve his appointment as governor, saying there wasn't any magical solution to producing stable inflation and normalizing policy. He backs easing for now. Data showed Japan's CPI picked up to 4.3. Uh, the Bank of China pledged to strike a battle uh, balance between supporting growth and preventing inflation risk this year. It will provide sustainable support to the real economy and refrain from using flood-style stimulus. Philippine Central Bank Governor Philippe Medella said he sees space uh, for 25 basis point move next month. Uh, Malaysia's revised 2023 budget provos proposes a tax vanity spending and protects livelihoods. China prepares to police AI as chat GPT frenzy spreads. Uh, bird flu infects another person in Cambodia as a wider worry grows. Uh, the U.S. announced new action against the Russian metal and mining sector that includes measures that said it will significantly raise the cost of importing aluminum. Uh, tariffs will be raised on more than 100 Russian metals. Europe's been able to import large amounts of diesel this month, even after curbs on Russian supply. Arrivals are set to be about 1.5 million barrels a day, slightly above January levels. Crude rose for the second day ahead of U.S. data. Bullish oil catalysts, Chinese demand, and falling Russian supplies may be playing second fiddle to monetary policy concerns. Uh, PVM Oil said a cold snap will sweep across. Western Europe next week, potentially boosting natural gas demand. Gold was little changed as ETFs have cut holdings yesterday. Uh, China steel stockpiles at major mills surged 8.3 to 19 million tons, highest since June. Uh, China's southern power grid is considering a binding bid for Enel's Peruvian distribution operations. Jeff Bezos hired an investment firm, Allen & Company, to evaluate a possible bid for the NFL Washington Commanders. Uh, Triton's Crayfish raised their offer for the Finnish building maintenance provider to 1.2 billion euros. Uh, CBIC's traders boosted earnings on a stretch of interest rate products. Revenue from the capital market division rose $1 billion. British Airways parent AIG fell in London as the outlook failed to impress investors. TSMC will invest $7.4 billion in their second chip plan in Japan. Uh, Merck's COVID pill is getting negative recommendations in EU. Whole Kim hunts for new CEO. Um, Goldman discloses expanded probe in a credit card business. Remember, that was when we played Goldman not too long ago. Uh, Merck's COVID pill gets negative recommendation in EU. City and Goldman joined crackdown on chat GPT. Merck backed Kaloon Biotech is set to pick banks for Hong Kong IPO. Goldman strategists see wage costs hurting Europe profit margins. Chevron price target cut to 170 from 185. And then Merck's uh, lag of Rio gets negative recommendation in Europe. Uh, cocaine bear, which opens today, is exactly as advertised. There's a bear who does cocaine and goes on a rampage through a Georgia national park. It sounds funny. Get ready for a wild ride. If it doesn't, you're in for a long 95 minutes. That's today. Uh, in the J.P. Morgan Jeffrey Epstein case, plaintiffs in two lawsuits accused the bank of facilitating Epstein's sex trafficking and their asked for court orders requiring Jamie Dimon to turn over more documents. Both suits claim he was involved in J.P. Morgan's decision to keep Epstein even after sex abuse came to light. 
a brokerage for rich Russians that accounted for more than two-thirds of all trading through the tiny all island of Gorseni, was shut down by regulators. ITI Trade offered a gateway to trading the Moscow Stock Exchange and booked annual volume of 53 billion euros in the year ending last March. Its sole Gorseni based executive didn't appear to fully understand the firm's business. The regulator said ITI said last year all of its customers were rated as high risk for financial crimes. Uh, Russia's richest have lost $67 billion of wealth uh, after a year of far-sweeping sanctions hit their fortunes. The biggest loser, uh, Alexei Mardashov, the main owner of Severstal, he's seen a $6.7 billion wipeout from his net worth. He's still in the country's fourth richest person, $19.8 billion. That's crazy. After a year of sanctions, Elon Musk's lose more to Twitter comments. That's crazy. Insta showdown, Selena Gomez, Salina! Now has 982 followers, 982 million followers, dethroning Kylie Jenner to become the most followed woman on the platform. Oh, and Gomez has also announced she's taking another break from social media. Great timing. Uh, millions of U.S. workers are still missing after the pandemic, and economists are scratching their heads as to where they all went. Blame retirees, immigration, or COVID. Even the size of the labor shortage is now in question. And then on this day in history... London's Theatre Royal, Drury Lane, uh, burned down in 1809. It was the financial ruin of its owner, the Irish playwright Richard Brinsley Sheridan, who had rebuilt the structure just 15 years earlier, spotted drinking a glass of wine in the street. While watching the flames, he is reported to have said, a man may surely be allowed to take a glass of wine by his own fireside. The building's replacement, which opened in 1812, is currently home to the Disney musical Frozen. That's ironic. Uh huh. The 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 theater that burned down is now home to Frozen. <laughs> Look at that. Elsa came to save the day. I'm down with it, bro. It's my birthday, all. <laughs> Finger to the sky, baby. Let's go. Happy birthday. We skate. <laughs> we we skate. That sound like an Adam Newman project, dog. I love it. Good morning, man. Good morning, Chad. But that's the day. That's all your news right there. Again, uh, I think it's all company individual, company centric. We still got a little bit more data coming out. But I mean, at the end of the day, man, the, the main story here is simply that you had a solid higher move up in inflation and it kind of gets rid of uh, or at least it brings back fear that you may watch inflation start to come back up because that's what the data is showing. Uh, but I got a couple of pre-market movers for you. Adobe shares are down 5.2 after Bloomberg reported the Justice Department is preparing an antitrust lawsuit over Figma. Uh, ACBA gains 15% AKBA after the European Medicine Committee uh, for Medicinal Products gave a positive recommendation for their Vofcefio or Vofcio drug uh, to treat kidney disease. Alibaba and NetEase lead a decline in U.S. listed stocks. Uh, both are down 3.6 and 5.8. Damn. Uh, Autodesk shares are down 6.3 after the software company gave full-year billings. Uh, they gave full-year billings forecast that is weaker than expected. Beyond Meat jumps 11% in the fourth quarter. Revenue topped analyst expectations. Big Commerce shares are down 15% after the application company gave a full-year forecast that underlined concerns about growth potential. Boeing drops 3.8 after the plane maker paused 787 Dreamliner due to documentation issues. I, they're not, I like how they're not bringing up the FAA. They make it sound like it was a company personal decision. Uh, Carvana sinks 13% after the second-hand car platform posted fourth quarter 2022 below expectations. Cinemark is down 2.9 after the theater chain reported fourth quarter revenue that was slightly weaker than expected. Context Logic Wish is down as business slumps 13%. Uh, revenue missed estimates and J.P. Morgan flag pressure on their consumer from macroeconomic backdrop. Uh, Domino's Pizza fell 1.7, extending Thursday's drop after City and Bear downgraded the company. Farfetch gains uh, 5.9 after the specialty online retailer reported fourth quarter revenue that beat. Uh, major tech stocks, internet, are falling after the largest data on inflation. Microsoft, Amazon, NVIDIA, Google, Meta, all down over 1%. Moderna drops 3.7 after SVB security analyst uh, Mani For I thought I said Mami. Uh, Manny Forhar cut his recommendation to underperform from market perform. Oh, what's up, C-Money? Salute to you too, baby. Oh, don't make me yell, though. I'm, I'm excited. I'm, you got me hype, bro. It's a happy Friday, bro. God bless you and thank you, my friend. Nectar Therapeutics drops 38% after a mid-stage study of investigational lupus uh, missed the main goal. Open Door falls 8.8 after Key Bank Capital said that the data-driven home flipper faces limits on how fast they could buy and sell. Upland Software declines 34% after the company gave a forecast that spurred a pair of analyst downgrades. Zeta Global analysts are positive on the application software after they reported fourth quarter results. Shares rise 7.1%. Wow. 
And you're hitting a new low, man. Cash open is going to be excited, huh? Look at that, 39.60. You know how you want to know how we're really low? Is that I got a level on the future. This ain't even the SPX. I only got like four of these, bro. So <laughs> this is your top one. Back to the gulag, motherfucker. Yeah, you know why? Because we're back to November and August and July levels and May levels. I can't make this up. Yeah, the Zaza is, we're about 30%, dude. So if that goes crazy, but watch out here. But Chad, we're ready to go. Uh, you got about, what, 10 more minutes here until the bell. I do need to go to the potty. So I'll be right back. I hope you use this time to like the video. And I hope you use this time to uh, follow me on Instagram at the trading fraternity. And I hope you use this time to maybe meditate in the morning and be ready for today. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I rebuke any demons, expel any negative thoughts. You know, bring in some good energy, bro. Get focused. Even if you ain't into that, like, crystal rock positive shit, bro. Like, you better be focused. I better get the fucking Lion King out of you. And you better have the Lion Beast Mode mentality, dog. Pick whichever one you want. It's either good vibes or focus, my man. So let's go. I'm sorry. I'm not even that hyped, honestly. Like, I could totally, like, just, I kind of want a cheeseburger right now. Okay, I'm going to go pee. I need to go pee. That's actually what I do need to do. I'm not going to lie to you, man. That's uh, I do need to I need to go pee. All right, I'll be right back. Show in, in late January. So quiet. We have to be careful not to extrapolate. We've had, you know, some uh, really favorable data, better weather, and we've seen improvements. And of course, inflation is proving to be sticky, but it's been consistent with what we've gotten all throughout the month. And this has been a tough month for the bond market. We I mean, seventy bips move in five year and ten year rates. I think a lot is priced in at this point, but at the same time, you know, if we don't see a, a kind of move lower in March, April, May, which should happen given the base effects on inflation from last year, then I think, yeah, we, we have a bigger problem on our hands in the bond market. George, credit where it's due. You said this before, Larry Summers. You said a real no landing might actually be a Wiley E. Coyote moment instead. What do you mean by that? Well, the idea is that, like, you know, if you have no, if you have a we're now at this point where we believe that we're going to have a recovery from this point with, with really high rates and still sticky inflation. And in fact, that just uh, further encourages the Fed to stay on hold for even longer, maybe even go higher in rates, which almost ensures a, at least a bumpy uh, landing, soft landing, maybe even a hard landing later in the year into 2024. So this idea that you know, we're kind of suspended in air as Wile E. Coyote uh, and those cartoons would, would show us, I mean, uh, it only could stay there that long. Gershon, I want to go back to the higher for longer and why it is that the market doesn't buy the higher for long. Um, there's two arguments. One is that the cumulative impact of rates is going to be too much for this economy. This economy is going to slow down really, really quickly, and therefore the Fed is going to have to cut. That's, that's camp A. Camp B says the Fed is going to have to cut because inflation is going to come down really quickly. So how do you reconcile those two views? And, and tell me what you think higher for longer actually means in terms of how high and how long? Yes, Mohammed, I think you hit the nail on the head. Mohammed, it makes a huge difference which of those two scenarios Gotta love El Arian. Right. If, gotta if, love if, him. If the, I thought he said cap A and cap B. <laughs> He's like, you know, you know what everybody thinks about the Fed? Here's cap A and then cap B. They all cap it. Nobody knows. Amen, amen, amen. So, Chattadonia, I hope you guys are ready. Uh, we are getting here to the moment. We got a couple of minutes. I hope we can make the most of it. So, Chad, uh, I do have a very important question. You've gotten to listen to everybody else so far. It is now your turn. I even got a couple plays for you, but I think we're just going to be seeing uh, a, lot, a lot of plays from yesterday and what comes up. But, Chad, what's your first play of the day? If you don't want to be serious, I'm most likely going to want to ban you. So I hope you understand the natural dichotomy of how this works. Uh, so God bless you, and let's go, Chad. What do you got? IEP. $2 Divi, Carvana Short, Shorting Square, Google Shares, SOXL, Sell ES, Tesla Put, No Play, Beyond, SUNEE, -E, SQQ Calls, Holding, UNG, Short, short NVIDIA, LOL, AMD Put, Square Puts, NVIDIA, NVIDIA, Apple, UUP, BABA, UNG, LMT, PARA, Buy Perhaps, SPY Puts, uh, UVXY Shares, Holding My Puts, Sell Everything, Holding Cash, Shorting MES, Metacause, Long, QQQQQ, a short SQQQ, ET shares, Disney put, Apple calls, Met puts, my NQ short, call, 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 Amazon shares, Tesla puts, Tesla puts, Baba puts, Boeing puts, Unity today, I'm on the bench, crying alone, oh, that's sad, IBM puts, still holding S now, R-Y-C-E-Y, M-D-O-G, Yang, Spy puts, L-L-A-P put, Gold, shorting NVIDIA, Tesla call, 6J short, NVIDIA gap short, Tesla puts, oh, you guys are on fire right now, ESD and AMD short, Sox S, Meta puts, Tesla puts, Cash, day trading daily, oh, holding my Tesla, oil calls going all in, scalp 
up in market direction. Top shares, Tesla puts. Buy open, sell close. Sox short, long silver. Tesla straddle. Meta puts again. SOXL, Myrna. Tesla call for the long term. Holding and watching. Tesla gold all in. Mayor Deraf King puts Intel. Zimmy, 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 Zimmy. Taking 50%, making it free. UVXY, gold. MNQ short. DXY, Meta puts. ILUS. Carvana short. Carvana put. Tesla put. Booking calls. Six month T bills. Oh, you sophisticated. Short and Netties and Myrna. And then Autodesk put. Let's go, Chad. There you go. Y'all ready? Y'all ready for this? There you go. That's how, that's what I'm talking about. So don't get too jumpy. Again, you've seen uh, the last couple of days, even yesterday, we had a crazy 1% move all out of nowhere, only for it to run up 1% out of nowhere. So I'm sure uh, your fortitude will be tested today. And I encourage you to make the most of it and think about next week and then also think about what we're getting into. So I only got a couple plays. A lot of it is from the watch list. Boeing, I really I just saw it break 200. But once that goes, there you go. It's uh, game time for the downside. Zim, they're down today, but they were able to perform on a down day yesterday, so I hope that kind of plays into the whole shipping logic, booking. Uh, they had their earnings. I haven't really looked at them here, but that one is actually the play I really, really want out of all of them uh, since it's kind of holding up there, but I haven't heard anything from analysts yet. Square, uh, again, still in that one from earnings that's actually up, and then Domino's, McDonald's, Walmart, going to be looking at some consumer plays if they go down, and then still kind of watching Domino's from yesterday. So, Chatadonia. Oh, man. It's time. It's time. Before we do anything, you know what we got to do? We got to pay homage to a very special group of people. And honestly, from the bottom of the heart, this is one of the special groups that I really, I, I hold them in high esteem. And I'm just very thankful, man. And I'm talking about the veterans of the United States of America. Before we do anything here, man, every single day, we want to give a shout out to all the active servicemen, past servicemen, anybody has served this country and even down to the families, man, for real. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and I hope and I encourage you to show love and appreciation to all of your servicemen and veterans who have served for this country. God bless you and thank you, and same thing even goes, man, for a lot of people helping out their community, even the mods in here helping out, and anybody just bringing a light to people, man. I don't know if you're a doctor, nurse, firefighter, teacher, police officer, garbage man, janitor, you know, just really giving, giving back to the community in your own way, man. We love and appreciate you, and thank you guys as well. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Place your right hand over your heart. Say it with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all, baby. Set the chance! Oh, it's game time, baby. Uh, or nah, let's go, Chad. Uh, are you ready? <laughs> oh, it's game time. It's game time. Good morning, baby. Good morning. Shout out to the vets. Shout out to the Chad. Shout out to the people who wake up early. Oh, it's game time. It is. It's that time. The bell is about to go. You don't have much time, actually. I think you got about one minute and a half. So I hope you are ready. Uh, definitely be prepared to make your call outs. I hope you guys have had uh, your time to like the video. Uh, I hope you've had your time to go to the bathroom and do what you need to do. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I, ho I hope you got that meditation in. I hope you're ready, man. I hope you're ready. We're ready for you, bro. We're ready for you. So call out any plays. Call out any news. Uh, we'll do our best to verify anything, too. And then we're going to find out higher volatility on the way. If VIX buyers are right, the call to put ratio on the VIX remains elevated, suggesting option holders expect longer term implied volatility to rise. Uh -oh, hot dog. So let's find out again. I have very interesting theories coming into next week. So depending on how we end the day, I think it's going to be very important. Uh, but you are having 40 seconds, 40 seconds till the bell, my friend, 40 seconds to the bell. Good luck. God bless you. Thank you for being here, and let's go. Yeah, new home sales is going to be big. Uh, also, what's it called? Uh, Kansas City Services, that's an hour after. But home sales, I mean, we're going to find out. Home prices did go up on PCE. Uh, you know, core excluding shelter still ran up. Services was very sticky. So it just overall, the way, you know, it's already been described, like the data we got right now on PCE, if you're not familiar, it was just a solid inflation print. 
So you got five seconds, four, three, two, one. Round one, fight. All right, we're opening up 1.28% down on the SPY. Uh, where's the NASDAQ? Let him load up. Uh, there's booking. So booking's down 0.8. Mm -mm. I need to get you the levels because now I think we're at 3960. Low key on the SPX. Let's find out. 3967. You should be there. Yeah. Yeah. So literally, damn, you gap down from 4011. That's almost a 40 point gap down. You are about, uh, what? You are one point away from hitting the 3960 right now. And the yen is totally clobbered as well. Raul, where is he? And then see the Boeing. I'm checking booking right now. Carvana tumbles 12% at open. Bayer to the sky. Ah, uh, yeah. Booking got price target increases. Mm hmm. Lunar halt. 25 20. And then we still got the square. Did that go negative? No. I was going to say that would have been sucky. Short the yen or we'll keep it up. I think it might go down again. What happened yesterday with the yen was uh, the, the new guy, Ueda, uh, he made a comment towards uh, pretty much keeping policy the same, uh, which kind of means he's going to be just as dovish as Karuda for now or that it buys some time before uh, you start to watch the Bank of Japan tighten. Grabbing. You're going a little bit lower here again. I believe this is the 3960 now. This is the first level. I'm going to grab you some new levels here in a little bit. You're below it now, 39.59. I got a soft level at 39.55, but, bro, where does it go from here? I think the next level is 3,900. Yeah, that's it. So it's kind of no man's land. I think there's a couple points like 39.33 in the middle and then like 39.20. But right now, if this continues, I mean, you got to watch out for the gap fill, but... If anything, if that downside continues, you're, you're pointing straight to 3,900. But I don't know if it'll actually get there in the sense that we got to wait till we see our first bounce or first morning flush. Damn, booking already ran. Well, that was quick. Mm -mm. Five, it was like a $100 difference. Boeing under 20, under 200. Square still there. So booking might have just ran. That I literally just missed out 50 bucks on that. So that one might be over. Oh, uh, yeah, Boeing, again, Boeing has been hugging 200, so watch out for that. UAL's on the high. Again, Airlines did good yesterday. Let's see, all of big tech is down. Amazon's down 2%. Apple is down 2% as well, 1.6. Uh, Microsoft, 1.7. Meta is 1.6. And then Google is 1.4, and Google is leading down. Uh, the inflation data was hot. It was, like, objectively hot inflation data. It was objectively bad in the sense that it no longer shows, uh, you know, inflation declining. If anything, you had one chart of inflation technically going back up uh, on the PCE. So here's the best chart to show you is this right here. So you guys remember, you know, the shape of the curve is very important. So again, core PCE is still declining. But now even for headline, instead of kind of going down, you had this little slight tick up and that just wasn't pretty. But like I'm saying, after this data, you know, we still have other data today, but then coming into next week, I think it's going to be a, I think it's going to be interesting because now you'll get time for the market to digest, and then Fed future odds, uh, they have gone up tremendously, or they're at, they're just kind of at a danger point. I would say is a better way to look at it. The Fed futures are at 32.9 percent right now. Y'all don't feel me. So you're eight percent away now from the market being undecided which means uh, massive amounts of volatility as it comes down to trying to price in and, you know, reacting to any other data from here. Eggs are still up. All sectors are red. Yeah, financials are the best, uh, but they're still down 0.7. Healthcare is down 0.78. Tech is the worst on the day, 1.6, and discretionaries are 1.5. I will say, though, uh, the other day we saw bigger, you know, all the industries were, we saw bigger individual moves on the way down. So it's in a weird way. Uh, this isn't bad yet, <laughs> As, even though we're at the 39.60. And then if we do flush here, we're going to 39, uh, 3,900. You mean they couldn't cook these numbers? No, they did. Uh, again, I'm, I'm, I think it's like even JP Morgan is saying something too. A lot of people are calling it out. The revisions are, are hideous now. Like straight up, it's kind of 
you know, I know we, I, and I get, I get it because a lot of you guys say this every single time, and, and, you know, my logic is just take what's given and play it, but it's just, dude, the revisions are insane. Like, there's actually, we are, every single month, you are trading a set of data, and then one month later, you're finding out the data was completely different. Uh, that's, that's even what happened here with the PCE. So they revised uh, the PCE from last month by almost half a percent, or like at least by like 0.3 in some instances. And it's just like, that's, <laughs> it's, it's kind of hard to uh, understand what you're really trading off. Bay or Bay E-E-R? What's Bay E, Bay, B-A-E-R, Bay E-E-R? What is this? Bridger Aerospace up 160. S Dow looking good. Square coming down. Uh, booking already ran up. I missed out on that one. Uh, NVIDIA's on the high. Look at that. It's still red. But they're able to move up here. Again, they got a couple minutes of going up. I haven't checked the volume yet. Uh, and 3960, I just watch out for there. Let me see if I could get you any other levels. Where is it? There it is. Meta level. Yeah, I guess we're right on. So we're right on the levels, but yeah, I got good news and bad news because this sucks because I believe we're below the 200-day average now. Uh, let's see. So here are your levels on the day. Again, like we say, and the lowest you go to is 3,900, which would be wild if you actually reach there, but... I think we're at like 39.58, 39.46. The 200's at at uh, 39.40, and then 39.10 is the 100-day. So I, I honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if you made a test towards uh, 39.40 now, knowing that that's the 200-day. Tesla's selling off. NVIDIA coming down. Boeing is still down 3.5. Tesla's down 3.2 right now. <laughs> mm -mm. They scam me on the booking. Tesla, Tesla's down a lot. Uh, let's see, UPS, FedEx. Again, every industry is down right now. Financials are the best. It's still Fed swaps price in peak po peak policy of 5.4. So literally now, the bond market is pricing in a, a uh, what's it called? The stock market, the Fed futures, they are pricing in a higher terminal rate. And remember, March meeting, we will get terminal rate expectations. You got to bounce off there, a little bit of a green shoot. Again, still down over 1% on every index. Actually, the Dow just went underneath that. But now the terminal rate is pricing in 5.4, which is kind of crazy, by July. Mm -hmm. December is 5.7. Again, you're at 32% on the Fed futures. Let's see. FedEx with the bounce. Booking. Bob is on the high. Let's check NVIDIA again. AM, AM, AML, AMD. Square targets on the high. Square's giving up there. Again, they were up 9% or something earlier. Been watching the December. Baba Pop. Uh, Baidu. All China names are getting clobbered. Bitu. B-I-T-U. And then energy is even down. Again, a solid 1% across the board, but a couple industries are bouncing. Healthcare and financials are leading the way alongside utili uh, utilities. And then Tesla's a big bounce. All right, you're going a little higher here, but you still, even the top candle is 39.73, though. So honestly, you're still very much in the danger zone. TSCO is on the low. I would want to buy more Google now that I got out of the AMD. I do like it at the $90 flat price, and it's much below that, but let's give it a little bit more in the middle of the day. I don't know if it's going to be three minutes down and then run up, but we are just so close to that 200-day average. I want to see uh, if anything else comes down there, but I wouldn't be opposed to it for, for a swing there. But Nasdaq's climbing up here again, 1.4. It's the worst on the day. 
why Beyond? Beyond, they like barely did good on their earnings and people got excited. It's actually quite phenomenal. We got all big tech is coming up. Tesla, Square. Square's just chilling now. They're at BNB. They have Fed futures 38%. I had 32 just not too long ago. I still see 32.9, but that's still massive. And now, you're like we said, you're going to be on that cusp of undecided. And that's just where things get a little bit more data dependent. Well, the budget retailers, they might do good. But remember, part of yesterday's downside, you had names like Domino's and eBay, and then especially Dollar General. They, they were warning on their guidance, or they were at least saying that they had to lower it due to uh, unforeseen or or the unforeseen volatility they plan to deal with in 2023. So the logic works, but specifically the, some of those were companies with bad earnings. That's almost a seven-point drop right there. So 39.63, again, you've been climbing up here, but you're holding in the middle right by close or right by open, and then uh, also at VWAP right now. At a BNB is going down. Just wait till Boeing dies. LMT's in the green. Got a couple names in the green. Netflix on the low. What is green right now? Dollar Tree is moving up, though. Booking still holding. Uh, let's see. SPX. Load it. Autodesk falls as billings guide. Misses estimates. Lunar. Wasn't that one going crazy yesterday? Mm-mm. Is green. It's been halted a couple times. Remember, yesterday had a here's Lunar's chart on there. So just be careful. Looks looks fun though. Looks fun. Into it green. And then uh, you only have like ten names up right now. Twenty names are up on the S and P. Four hundred and eighty are down right now. So like booking into it, Lockheed, Cigna. Clorox, PCG, uh, GIS, uh, Schwab, JP Morgan, and then Cardinal Health and Vici. And the WBD is bouncing around right now. But yeah, everything else is red. And then even real estate stocks are kind of getting a hit. And then discretionaries are now worse than tech. Materials are worse than tech. And then tech is down 1.6. And you're coming back down there. Beyond's coming up to... And now you're back to the opening candle here towards the low end of it, 39.60. Remember, this was the level. You have a couple of soft levels below there. 39.40 will become the uh, 39.40 flat is the 200-day. And if you break that, you're probably going to test uh, 3,900 flat. <clears throat> Let's see. We're gonna get into Zim. I'm already in, I'm already in Zim. I don't know if we're at uh I think we're at break even right here. <clears throat> but it held up yesterday, so I'm hoping it could hold up here today. J is green. Coming down a little lower. Dollars getting a boost from inflation. Not to mention the yen. Spy and yen are matched up now, but you're going through the level. Watch if they move in tandem, and then bonds are even dropping too. So you're kind of getting that sell across the board, down 1.67 now on the NASDAQ, and it has only been about 13 minutes. Apple's trying to fight there. Microsoft has actually been doing good and uh, climbing throughout the day. Micron on the high. MU's still down, but they are climbing up here. So not everything's falling into this. Keep that in mind. VFC's on the low. Oh, where's our 3M? Oh, 3M is down. Cat low of the day. GIS is up. General Mills. Again, there's about 20 names that are green on the S&P. The other 480 are red right now. So it's uh, it's borderline. Everything across the board has some blood. But it's yeah, we have saw bigger the other day, which is ironic. Not in terms of breadth, but in terms of percentages by industry. Fed futures 36. They hate us. Yeah, that was the report I read you in the morning. Put premiums on longer dated puts are beginning to rise up right now, which is kind of different considering every day we've been talking about everybody buying zero day options, which has been suppressing kind of the longer term volatility on the VIX. Fed 36. 
39.55, new low here on the day. Uh, in the last 20, again, this is the lowest you've been on in three weeks. I think the last time you were at this point was uh, January 25th at the low. And then previously you were here on January 20th. And then this was the low into January 18th. Uh, and then once we began to drop from here, it usually, I mean, you could kind of see how it plays out. And this is where you broke following Powell uh, in December. So this level has a lot of meaning here. 39.51, you're getting back towards the 200-day now, 10 points away. Ford, new low. Tesla's on the low as well, too. Everything cold is on the high. And then volatility indexes are running. And Microsoft is holding up. That one, I think, is interesting. But bonds are dropping now. Wait till Boeing comes down, and that should bring down the Dow. The Dow's the best on the day. 1.5 on the NASDAQ, 1.8 on the – or excuse me, 1.5 on the SPY, 1.8 on the NASDAQ as of now. Booking still holding. McDonald's even down 1%. Target was up on the high earlier. They're only down one. Bonds are trying to get a, catch a bid. Yeah, man, the Fed is – the Fed rate hikes are – they're just moving up the odds. I mean – Again, that one chart is just uh, its just coming back up, sadly. That is just unequivocally not good if you thought inflation was calming down. Now, I will tell you, there is people who already in the morning said this data supports no landing because it just shows the economy is still hot. But like we're, you know, the biggest problem would be if inflation surged back up. So although I still think it's kind of too early to make the assessment, I think today's data is just going to mess with people's imagination and it's going to lead people to really, really now start to extrapolate on the future, uh, which is, I think, the exact reason why the Fed futures are running up now because people are getting more sensitive. Fed futures are at 35.8% uh, for 50 basis points. Remember, once you get to 40, you are fully undecided. So 39.49, you're breaking through below it here. Let's see. SQ wants red, asshole. You ain't need to do that, sir. You totally could have just held your gang here today, sir. Mm -mm. We won't flush till the video, but now Microsoft's giving up. But ironically, you got a little bit of a green candle there. A lot of big tech is on the low, though. Uh, NVIDIA 231, that doesn't, that's still high. So maybe if they give up 230 here, but like... I think they got to get to like 222. I guess 230 is where they closed prior. So it's not as if these earnings gains, but I'd more, I think like 224, 222 on NVIDIA. I think if that breaks, then you, then you could see the fear more or less. Mm -hmm. Everything in the portfolio now red. Well, yeah, out of 500 stocks today, uh, only 20 of them are green on the S&P 500. So even the SPY itself is having a difficult time. I think the good part is that it's not that big. I mean, even though one and a half, you know, we've seen this on other days, but it's just like today is widespread. And then low of the day is 39.48. Was that on level? 39.46 is the June 28th high. Again, June of last year. And then 39.40 is your 200-day. 39.21, September high. 39.10 is the 100-day. And then 3,900, that's the June 10th low. How does this look on the daily? So, yeah, you've really just given up. Uh, you're back to, what, the second week of January now? And this is, and like it's like we've talked about, this is just the gulag from Thanksgiving till Christmas. NVIDIA is catching another candle. Beyond's ripping, uh, which I think is funny. And then Square's going more red right there. Boeing's kind of holding up. LMT's running, which is great. Boeing's coming down now, and LMT's starting to play out. 
Watch Microsoft, though. That could have a big effect. And I think they're one of the stronger ones, Microsoft and Apple. Tesla, 4%. That's pretty bad. 193 now. Boeing, I mean, it goes, breaks below 200. Then it's going to test like 195, 194. And then if it breaks that, you know, 188 to 190. Uh, pretty, and that's where I started to short at. But I'm glad, though, it's working kind of how I wanted. I mean, Boeing's coming down and now L L literally Boeing down today, LMT up. That was the original idea on that trade. It just took a damn month and a half. Uh, yeah, I forgot. 10 minutes, you do have more data. So get ready. That could probably take you to the 200 day or that's going to give you your little bounce. But we'll see. I'm starting now that we have inflation data out the way. You know, part of my theory coming into next week, I just feel like the market will be a little more sensitive in the sense of being able to actually ignore some things until it's like the real inflation data or the real inflation set. So we'll find out. We will find out. The data print today was PCE and both core and headline went up and then even high revisions. That's just stupid. <laughs> like it's actually crazy. Boeing big pop. Dirt pop. A little bit. A little bit. Like that's the thing about Boeing right now, is that it's at the two hundred level, but it's still down three and a half percent today. So they do have room to move up and still be negative. And then NVIDIA is selling off. Microsoft still at the low. Damn, booking is just holding up. CPI covers in shell. Probably not, and that's that's probably what people are reacting to. Bonds are catching a bid. Dollar Tree's on the high. Beyond as well, too. <clears throat> Yen and SPY matched up. If anything, bonds are moving a little bit more than uh, currencies and the market right now. What time is it? 52. Stocks hit by everything down day as inflation fears mount. S&P has opened in the red, uh, hitting the lowest level in a month with decliners for every sector topped by consumer discretionary in tech. After a hotter than expected January data, interest rate sensitive mega cap firms like Tesla, NVIDIA, and Apple have slid. The 200 day is at 3940 and all eyes will be on that. So a lot of people are waiting for 3940 right now. Whether you're a momentum trader, technical, and just to give you more context, most of these levels now from here, we're going back to summer levels of last year. So keep that in mind. Amazon's moving up a little bit here. No, Intel lowered their dividend by 66%. They did not fully cut it. They just lowered the pay the payout amount. Now only 13 names are up on the SPY. Telecom Italia says KKR offer needs to be improved. Tesla won't get permit in North Mexico if not enough water. That just came out. And then seven minutes till data. Yeah, Beyond is up 30%. Beyond's loving it. 50 basis point odds at 39%. Yeah, 38.8. Dude, wicked. So this could change by the end of the day. I mean, I've been telling you this every day, but, <clears throat> you know, as a reminder, these odds were about 5% last week. <laughs> Just for, for context of that. But now this is kind of showing the market is getting to a, a very debatable point here. Yeah, is this it? Can you see it? Yeah, look at this thing was dead. Not even. At February 6th, the probability of this was 0.4%. The market was fully convinced of a quarter. The last time the probability shot up like this, it was like January 6th. And that was after, I guess, some of the beginning of the month volatility. And then other than that, you know, you're back to the December levels. But now you're getting closer to the deadline, which is wild. Still three weeks, though. That's why I'm thinking burn one next week. 
And then the week after that, non-farms, and then everybody gets ready. And then before you know it, your CPI and Jerome are back in the house. We in the house. The next econ numbers that we're going to get today, uh, Kansas City services, that'll be at 11. And then in about seven minutes, you're going to get real estate data and consumer sentiment. But I don't know. I don't know if consumer sentiment will move anything. The only way consumer sentiment moves will be related to energy. Uh, because usually the one-year and five- to ten-year expectations on University of Michigan, it is dictated by uh, gasoline prices. That's like usually when they measure the survey of these individuals you've never fucking heard about. Uh, you know, gas price is what makes them very sensitive. But in a weird way, I'd kind of downplay the consumer sentiment unless it comes in extremely high or will notice the impact of energy if it does come in high. Other than that, though, new home sales... I mean, you know, super core, core excluding, uh, you know, real housing, we're going to find out. But demand in real estate probably won't be good right now. So if we could get a miss on new home sales, I think it'll be good. The expectations are high. But if new home sales comes in hot, uh, I don't think it's going to be a pretty sight. But even then, I mean, it's I, I'm, I'm starting now to say we already got the big data, the PCE. I would just be watching for now momentum. Watch if we hit that 200 day. And then bring this into next week and then give it some time to to kill because, you know, we're, we're going to have a lot of stuff next week that is going to be there to kind of, you know, push and pull you. And at this point, I think you should know the story. Rate hike odds are coming up. The 50 basis point odds have been revived. Inflation is definitely ticking back up. And a lot of that Goldilocks we saw in January really wasn't as Goldilocks as it appeared. And now we're, we're getting into the final stretch ahead of the good data, the final data sets right before the Fed and then the Fed, and that's it. So like I've been saying, I think uh, the downside is limited to a degree. I wouldn't be surprised, like I was saying, like I was saying like 39, 390, 30, 388 maybe, and then if you really want to get bearish, you go to 382, but you're not going to rip back up above 417, 418, but you're not going to really die below 380 without Jerome and hot, way hotter data. So just get ready for it. And get ready to be pushed and pulled. And yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Beyond is just unreal, man. That's it. And it's one of those days where it's like everything does bad. If you could cling to one thing doing good, you might as well. And that's what it really looks like here. Hmm. I wanted that booking, man. About two minutes here till the data. Oh, man. EXFY. And then GoDaddy on the high. Expensify and GoDaddy are running. EXFY had a pretty big pop. Pizza on the high. Oh, yeah. Where's Domino's? They downgraded Domino's. It hit 302. VM 107. Beyond was uh, news. They just did better than expecting, even though they lost a shit ton of money. Same story with Beyond, but, I mean, you know, could have been worse is the word on the street. Yeah, home sales a minute and a half right now. It is data. I think the PCE was. I, I was I'm actually even surprised it moved it this much, but like we were saying, it was already expected to come in hot, and then it came in hotter, and then they revised hotter. Like, quite frankly, you should be more – the thing about today is the revisions, I would all, I would argue. As much as, it, like, you know, the month over month and everything that came in this month is bad, but, like, those revisions make it that much worse because that means last month what you thought was stabilization really wasn't, and, and it came right back up. So 45 seconds, you're at the low now. As housing data, no, I mean, if housing data is bad, you will bounce, uh, I would think, a little bit, or it'd give you at least one green candle. If it's too good, then I think we're going to we're gonna start to flush a little bit until we could finally stabilize for the day. But we'll see. You got 30 seconds to find out.
That PCE was hot and the Fed reacts to it. It's that. It moved the Fed futures. The Fed is going to listen to it. And, and just even then, I mean, just right here, this is all you need to be seeing. This changes the whole entire narrative. So core came down a little bit here, which is good. But this idea that inflation was rapidly declining, that's just not happening now. And now it's ac it actually increased. So you don't want to see uh, that, that type of move there. Because last time it did it, it ended up coming right back down. But this is a pretty sharp increase. And then instead of being lower than where it was, this last month is revised higher. All right, new home sales, 670. So that one's stronger than expected. Month over month was 7.2%. Uh, and then consumer sentiment came in 67. So I think home sales are bearish. That came in way too hot because it was already a high expectation. One year inflation expectations dropped. So AKA gas didn't go up too much uh, month over month. And then five to 10 years at 2.9. Expectations beat 64.7 versus 62 and a half. Current conditions dropped to 70.7. Estimate was 72.7. And then sentiment was 67 versus 66.4. So I think consumer sentiment was good, but... Uh, I think uh, real estate was bad. Oh, my God. Bro, they revised the last new home sales by another, like, what, 10,000? Last month revised. Prior was 2.3. They just revised it to 7.2. So we'll find we'll find out here. But I'm thinking uh, consumer sentiment, one-year expectations, a.k.a. gas, that was bullish. New home sales is bearish. But let's find out as we are already down 1.8% on the NASDAQ as this data comes in. And then bonds are getting a, t a ton of uh, volume right here. Yeah, so they revised last month's 2.3% month-over-month new home sales. That's what it came in prior, 2.3. They revised it to 7.2. And then right now, this month, it came in at 7.2. And then the number this month was already hot. Bro, the revisions are getting out of hand. <laughs> I'm telling you. And all of these expectations were hot, but I think that real estate number is very bearish because now we're talking, uh, this is where your real estate's at. Pretty much your real estate's back to April levels, April 2022. So you mean to tell me new home sales now are at the same amount of new homes sold? 670,000 new homes is a shit ton. Uh, just for reference, at one point, that would be your peak into 2019 and even 2018. So where you just bounced up to is the highest amount of homes you've sold, brand new homes, uh, and I think that's the that's the peak of twenty, literally 2018, 2017. This is like December. So that's big. Mm. Where are these homes selling? Wow, there it is. 41, bro, they're relentless. Honestly, I'm mad we don't have the CFTC data, bro. This bond market is a bully. You I, I don't do what you guys have witnessed in the last 30 days from like the 10 year and the rate hike expectations to now this. Like, get out of here. Like, if you think they won't do 50 or whatever, the bond market could price that in and the Fed is going to listen to it. But, dude, this is a, that's wicked. I want to say this is one of the bigger rises here. I think I don't think you've ever gone from this dead to this type of pop. I guess last time that happened was October. So to give you an idea, the last time the Fed probabilities went from 0.4 to uh, above 40% probability, it was October 5th. October 5th to October 13th. So there you go. You're popping off of that. So you were already down, which is ironic. So that, that's when you gave up this pop, but the Fed futures weren't even pricing that in after your decline. Bonds got a rip there. Market's bouncing now. Let's see. Did Boeing come down? No ticker stop. I don't. I think it's gonna be a wild one still. But we still need, you are going to need your one green candle. It's either any of these bounces are going to be mini bounces and not last, 
or you're going to get the one where just like yesterday, hit a new low, hit a new high, set a new low, hit a new high, and then we hit the new low. But uh, let's just see here. It could be kind of one of these minor ones. It's either going to do something like this or something like this. And that's going to depend here on whether or not we get above 3960. But realistically, I think you need to go above 3970 to at least make this not look like a danger zone. Uh, but the bonds are, are catching up here. The bonds are actually leading. They're doing better than currencies, too. Uh, booking or Amazon. What's the other one? Square. There you go, Square. Don't fail you. Some names are bouncing. Airbnb. How did they destroy you? Cal. Calonasi. Good morning, man. Welcome. 50 basis point incoming. Yes and no. You know, not. I'm just telling you to watch out how it's moving. And if it does price it in, it, it will happen. I have no doubt about that. But at the same time, it is a very volatile instrument. But in the sense that any data up until the next couple weeks will move it there. Give my argument for why 50 basis points would be unnecessary. Uh, because it could over tighten and then cause, you know, a much more slowing down economy. However, you could easily counter that with nothing in the economy is slowing down. But I, I don't even care. Uh, you know, my, my argument doesn't matter. Neither does yours. And what I mean by that is this, dude, it's the bond market bullies. It's all about the Fed futures. Who cares? That's it. If the bond market determines 50 before, that's why they listen. They listened at a quarter. Anytime that we thought, you know, things should or shouldn't happen, just don't forget there was a leading indicator on the Fed futures. And that's what I truly just think is going to be there. So we're going to react to whatever revised data comes out in the next, you know, three weeks here. And if the bond market gets to that point, it's going to happen. Who knows? Even higher. But, you know, I, I think they have enough wiggle room now. And really, your smart, your little bounce uh, brought that back. This little bounce here in the market gave him room to burn a quarter, staying at the same price, financial conditions now, barely, I, I borderline in the same position, but they could do whatever they want. So you got your first little bounce there to VWAP. Let's see how this holds up. Boeing, what are you doing? Lunar on the high again. For those to lunar and beyond are your runners no matter what. Lost decade imminent. I mean, <laughs> I think it's very hard to forecast the next 10 years when nobody could even agree on the next 12 months. So I think we get just still got it. We're still dealing with the inflation situation inflation and how the government and the fed is both responding to it and how tightening you know we're still on the first we're still on the first cycle of tightening to see where this actually leaves us nvidia below 230 that's a big level but i still think 224 225 is what i'd be watching i think nvidia under there is danger How can this economy be fixed? I mean, some people might not like my answer, uh, but I'm going with uh, natural immunity. Uh, what I mean by that is that the mar it's already sick. You can't. It's <laughs> so now you just let it work. It's, it's you're going to be dealing with this for a little bit and let it work itself through. And, and that's about it. You know, all we've been doing is just getting uh, confused by, I would say, communication from the Fed, but more so it's just like it. This is the psychology of it. That's just every single moment. The minute inflation drops, like even then, today is ridiculous on to the down, uh, downside in its own way. I hope you realize it because when it's going up, we freak out. Halfway through, we weren't. But now it starts to go down. We get very excited and everybody starts to, uh, you know, go crazy into it. And then now it starts to bounce up and now we're freaking out. So quite frankly, I think it's just a mix of like you got you got to run through the hot money 
and until the market really has an idea of what's going to happen and stop getting so ahead of itself, then there you go. I was talking about the economy in terms of uh, natural immunity. It's not that deep. Dollar not giving up. Watch the yen. ASTG, Tesla, Nvidia. Uh, you have like four Fed speakers, man. Uh, but Loretta Mesta already made comments today. That kind of sounded she's in the same place. Ukraine President Zelensky briefs on war. Bro, you got Fed Bullard in an hour, actually. I'd be more worried about that. This raised the possibility of double peak inflation. It does, and it just it just shows what the Fed was talking about, where they're saying they don't want to celebrate too early because if it comes right back up. Mm -mm. How is it ridiculous? It dropped. It's been five or six bearish economic data points. Uh, that's why that's why I'm saying it's ridiculous, because <laughs> it took them today to realize what you could have realized four weeks ago, maybe even six weeks ago. You, you see what I'm saying? That, that's why it's ridiculous. Because it's like, okay, are we just reacting to it now? Why, when we had the same information borderline? And, and then that's why I'm saying the revisions are stupid because it's we're back to the same place. You know, it's like we, we ran up on, on thin air and then now you're reacting to, to the PCE, but you could have reacted to a lot of other, you could have reacted to a 500,000 jobs report. <laughs> and we kind of did, but... Yeah, the reaction is much, 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 much more delayed. And that's why I'm like, okay, well, financial conditions now are relatively, I think, the same since December. I actually should check. Yes, the ridiculousness is the quick back and forth. The, that's what I mean, like, psychology of quickly jumping to, okay, the data comes down. Let's fucking buy everything and think 12 months in the future. And now, boom. Oh no, once we see the one kind of print up after ignoring the rest, now we must add now now everybody flips bearish and, and it's just like you see it's I mean imagine the frustration caused uh, especially if you're trading it. I think a great example is you could watch that NQ play I've been holding just because it's like you know imagine a month ago people were telling me, "Oh my god, why would you do that? Why would you hold it?" Why and now it's like I'm still down on it, but it's still like, "Oh, okay, now 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 we go on the sh but it's like Nothing has changed is something I've really been saying for the last two months here. So let's see. Financial conditions are uh, they're decent, I think. No, we're still higher, though, than uh, than December. So even though the spies at the same price financial is because of the bonds, I think financial conditions have eased tremendously though relatively speaking mm. yeah googly I'm waiting on that one I mean the lower it goes though the better next nine months I, I, I think we're going to deal with this back and forth until we find out truly what the fed is going to do it's either going to be a pause and uh or pause or no no pause at all and then we push it till 2024 but that'll depend on any of everything else but like i've I, I told you this the other day you guys just got a great crash course you got a great crash course because i'm telling you right when they pause and right when the shit is really about to hit and they cut this the market's going to feel like this again so right when shit gets really, really bad and they cut and pause, people are going to think it's good. It's going to feel like this first two months. So don't ever forget this, okay? <laughs> That's it. I, I, I tell it, you just don't ever forget how the last two, two, two months, two and a half months have played out. Because you are going to go through that another time, whether it's by the end of this year or the beginning of next year, as the Fed does begin to pause and cut rates and, and everybody starts to interpret that as bullish. 
it's going to feel like that and you're going to feel narratives shift underneath your feet. It's going to feel like, wait, wait a minute, I thought things were bad. How did it get so good? Oh, my gosh, am I getting squeezed? Or depending on what it is, but that's the one I'm going to buy into. And then we short it uh, rather than getting trapped on anything else. But just definitely don't forget, you have a cry. That's the blessing in all of this. That's the blessing I've got out of out of playing, you know, with this is that I really that that was a crazy feeling to go through and what we've gone in the last two months. So it's not over yet. And that's the thing you got to realize we have that next three weeks ahead of us. But it definitely the stakes have been raised, you know, right. Pretty much, you know, remember back to the poker analogy, you know, we were up to the damn. Uh, what was it? You got the river. Uh, we had the flop. And then what's after the turn? It was look at the bulls were loving it at the turn, and then that river card. Now we still gotta wait though. I would even say this is the turn, but it it looked like they it looked like they flopped the nuts off of that. But now we're we're getting into the turn and then the river with the Fed. But it's just nothing's nothing's decided yet, and just like I, that's that's why we have respect on both sides, and just be on the lookout. But you're hitting a new low now, so little data. It's looking like yesterday. So watch out here. New low on the day, 39.46. Every time it hits a new low. <sighs> oh, Bradley Frizzle and the Peach has arrived. That's why I'm tweaking out right now. Let's go, baby. Oh, Peach Nation, get your ass up. Oh, and everybody can celebrate. Wow. The hero we needed. The hero we needed. Oh, man, let's go. Hey, man, God bless you. God bless you, bro. God bless you. Thank you, Bradley Frizzle. Oh, my gosh. Peace Nation, do you feel it? I hope you feel it. You should be able to feel it. My goodness. My goodness. That's amazing. So amazing. Dude, they killed the bonds. No new yields. That's Bradley Frizzle, man. It's Bradley Frizzle in the peach. Cal Main initiated as a new short at Off Wall Street, calm, $40 price target. You're still going lower. I mean, you're five points away from the 200-day moving average. This was a level of safety for the Bulls for a very long time here. Again, nothing good happens underneath the 200-day. That is what the technical strategists say. So you're five points away, five points on the dot right now. 394501, 3944. Where are the damn futures? Futures are 39.50. Shit. There's a lot of bid support here, so this is going to be your defense zone. I wouldn't be surprised to watch air breaks or that. Calm is dropping. Uh, like they just got a short report right there. $40 price target by off Wall Street. So they just took a one and a half, one point seven percent candle off of that. I love how Dexcom's not moving. Home sales surprised the upside as prices drop. Consumer sentiment figure was revised up slightly while the one-year inflation median dropped from initial reading, 4.1 from 4.2, probably as a result in gasoline prices. The 5- to 10-year median stayed steady at 2.9. New home sales, meanwhile, are comfortably exceeded expectations. Um... By rising 670 versus a forecast of 620, this likely reflects the drop in mortgage rates, which has subsequently reversed in a drop in prices. The median sales price was the lowest since last February, while some of the recent housing news has turned a little bit less aggressive. We'll probably need to see evidence with mortgage rates ticking back up. Mm. Adobe below 300. I think Adobe could go a lot lower. I think 300 isn't the... Yeah, they still got some gains. Again, they're at 270. I would probably want like 200s, bro. Straight up. I like Adobe a lot, but it's not even like... It's not really my top tech pick. It's a good company, though. I use Adobe every day. Every day. Your video, your watch list is brought to you by Adobe. Pfizer looking good. Depends how you view that, but I agree. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's still at that high. I would like I said, I would love, I would love the low forties or something around here. 
But hey, man, we got a lot of cash. Um, we got the MMM yesterday. Uh, we could have probably waited, but like I'm saying, we're we're we got our cash balance. Uh, we're gonna be positioned great for this. I think we're gonna get a lot of things we want, uh, or at least at at least at better prices than a month ago. Mester and Jefferson are talking now. Uh, I don't see any headlines there. If they do come up, we have James Bullard here in about an hour on the dot. It's a little pop after hitting the new low, so watch out here. No oh, booking. Square might come back down. I don't see uh the. I know they are going to be speaking, but I don't see where they're not on my uh on my calendar. Bullard is. Maybe for hundred. That's I'm going to buy again at a hundred. So just because we have another deposit coming up and I was already at 20% cash, I figured, you know, I'm not going to try to time it. We'll get one deposit in there. And then if it does go to the price I want, I think it's going to be a great pickup there at those prices. And then, best of all, we at least get a little bit of it. If everything else gets cheaper, uh, we, we have the flexibility that our cash balance is bringing. 39.50... One on the futures. Big level for the futures. Spy is just hanging right above the 200-day average right now. I have two in the videos. Where's Tessie? Down to 193. I think Verizon's legit. Uh, I would only get it, though. Just You have to compare relative value. I think you could get other safer names with, with similar yields or more upside. So it's not like I would buy it no matter what. It's uh, def I would consider it, but it would just depend on the price of everything else. Yeah, we'll see. The Fed members might be able to help out, though. I wouldn't I wouldn't underestimate uh, bullish Fed speak. And Bullard's kind of been a wild card. Remember, he started last week bringing up 50 basis points. He opened up the other day with positive comments. So that one's going to be a wild card. Mester kind of reiterated what she said last time as a hawk. And then uh, the other one, I don't know if it's Fed Dolly or I forget, Fed Jefferson. I don't really I don't really know much about Jefferson in that sense. Low-key, when you say Jefferson, I think somebody with like a wig, like Thomas Jefferson. Honestly, I, it's fun to imagine Thomas Jefferson working at the modern-day Fed. Yeah, I don't know. It's a thought experiment if you're interested. Boeing under 200. Down, Boeing is down a lot, 4.2. So still coming in. Get ready. You just got to watch here for the 200 day. That's all it's going to be about. 39.45, Chad. Wish you the best of luck, my friends. So 39.40, and then if that flushes, 39.21. I mean, I think every time we have dropped below the 200... I think we did make a shot at the 100-day, but you are stabilizing a little bit here. It kind of looks like yesterday a little bit, but we would have already died by now. But maybe that moment happens now. But be careful because I I mean, it's Friday, man. I'm, I'm still definitely getting ready for a stupid pop. Yeah, so we were actually still low here by 723, believe it or not. And then where's the volume at? We're about one hour in, 21 million, definitely above average. Why did retail, I mean, it's both retail and funds, just, just like yesterday. So yesterday, it was like constant call buying. Don't like go like watch if you want to do it, go track, go look at the amount of daily options right now on the S&P on the call side and just watch every hour. Uh, that, that does have a factor. There is some pressure and kind of, I think, a lot of trigger points and people are bringing up CTA selling, but there's just don't underestimate that one there. Uh, so we're going to find out. But I do think after this data and after the last two weeks, though, and, and we talked about it, retail and hedge fund. Hedge funds double down on shorts uh, that they were covering, and then retail has switched from net bullish to net uh, net bearish.
that was just all, all as of yesterday. And, and honestly, all of that is, you know, that's if you want to try to track the market minute by minute. But just look at the Fed futures, my dog. Look at the Fed futures. The next two down levels is going to be 39.40. That is the 200-day moving average, and that will be extremely important. And then 39.21 is the June 10th lower high, I believe. And then 39, uh, 39.10 for the 100-day. No, 39.21 September high. 3,900 is the June low. All right, that little bounce isn't lasting. You had one drop 7.30 yesterday, and then you bounced right back up. Remember, it was those seven-point candles. So see if it dances from here or if it just totally gets clapped. You're right at the low now. Netflix on the low. Tesla low ticker is running for sure. Um, but NVIDIA and a couple names are still kind of steady. I think uh, Bullard's going to be interesting. There's 19 names up on the S&P. So some names were able to work their way back up. Uh, the other 484 names are red right now with nothing unchanged. And everything is red industry-wise. The worst on the day is discretionary is down 2.3. And then technology is down 2.0. Communications, 1.95. The best on the day is uh, financials, and they're down 0.88. Yeah, you, I be careful of those $1 bounces and six. I feel you. <laughs> I am definitely on the lookout for that. Even that, you were just into the lows and bounced. Still looks like there's a lot of, you know, bid bid and sell support on both sides, but we'll see, and VWAP just keeps taking drops along the way. Damn, Dizzle. Square is holding up. Can I interest you in some beyond me? No. Audi audio. I was like, Audi dropped. Yeah, volume is way above average. At least for the first hour. We still got a lot of time. It's only been one hour. And you have one more data set um, in 30 minutes. You have Kansas City services. And services, a part of the PCE was very hot today. That's why people were worried, too, because services is more, you know, sticky in terms of inflation. But that could be that's going to be the final one. But now I really I think we should focus on the. Uh, the Fed speakers here today. Doing my dog being out of the country six months. Oh man, whoa, you back? Where'd you go? Well, welcome back. It's honestly, if you just kind of the funny part is, is if you've been gone for like six months, my guy, you probably re recognize everything the best because you're like, oh shit, six months later, we're practically at the same price. So, like, literally, like June, man, <laughs> or like July, if I think July is when you left, June, July, yeah, right. July or August, bro, it's been this, you're like, the market didn't move. It moved, but it didn't move. That's what I've been trying to explain to a lot of people. But they kept telling me the recession was canceled or that you better buy gold and water because we're going to die. So I've been trying to explain how frustrating it has been as we, our opinions are being very, very psychotic. We have been remaining at the same exact price as the last 6 to 12 months. Honestly, it's been a giant cuck. We just haven't realized it. I feel like we're role playing. And we're like, okay, act like something's happened and just don't tell me. Don't tell I feel like this is a weird game that we're playing, honestly. Uh I don't have the Fed speakers right now. So I'll get you their comments, but they're not uh they're not saying anything now. I know we're supposed to be hearing from Mester. You did get Mester in the morning. I will have Bullard though, but uh, we won't miss it.
pie looks like it's going to butter. We did the same exact thing at the same time yesterday. And you had that little seven-point drop, seven-point run-up, and then it failed. But just anything could happen. And you've had you've had little bounces so far, but I think uh, just it's a big gap to fill. It's uh, you're you're hovering on the 200 day, and the emotions are still high. And I don't doubt it that every 30 minutes, mother efforts have been piling in the daily calls. Six crypto's leading down. I gotta see. Uh, ten thirty, no, eleven. Eleven, you get Kansas City uh, services. Uh, you are coming down here. I didn't even see crypto. Crypto's too strong, man. That's the funny part about this. Crypto ain't, ain't doing none of this. So, crypto should be back at. Bitcoin should be at 17,000. No, Bitcoin's not dying at all. That's it. It's just they ran up ahead of time. Ethereum, if this was the market right now, you would be at 1,400, 1,300 there. Bitcoin would be like 17, 18,000. It's, it's still, it's decoupled. Uh, and it has been from the beginning of the year. So I'm honestly, if there really was going to be that fear, you would I would want to see that come down a lot more. Is leading the market down today. I want to see it outpace. Let's see though. Is it? It has hit. It is hitting. It just hit a new low, and it's probably about to. I see what you're saying on that. But the Nasdaq's down too. Do you think the daily options have changed the market forever? Won't it make it more volatility? No. I think it just, again, it just transfers the risk to other places and it creates different opportunities. The market finds a way of balancing itself out, even with new products and even if people get greedy. And I mean, let me just, I guess here's a simple way to put it. In a weird way, five to 10 years from now, you may not even have that many people trading those options. I mean, let me, uh, I'll give you an example. Do you know anybody who bought real estate from 2000 to 2009, who afterwards refused to buy a house ever again due to something that happened. So 39, 44, 95, there it is, new low, 89. You are coming a little lower. That was me, my parents, yeah. So that could that could te technically happen. I mean, there's a lot of things, especially when there's uh, high leverage or anything, don't underestimate when it's all said and done. Uh, as a, If a portion of the population gets burned on it, they're going to be very risk-averse in the future. So I wouldn't, uh, like, I wouldn't doubt it. I don't think that the mania will stay forever. I mean, same thing has happened in... Germany in the past and a aversion towards inflation. Same thing happened after Japan and the financial crisis. That's why Japan's currency is what it is today. After a period of crazy economic growth and then it collapsed and then led to a lost decade, it changed people's uh, consumer and investing behavior forever. So that's kind of, even then, I mean, shit, COVID, that changed a lot of people's behavior forever too. Just little events like that. So I think... That's why it's either the world or the market kind of balances itself out. But I think that's even just too, uh, you know, we're leaning way too far in the future to even speculate on that. If that makes sense. 
Thank you, Josh Nods, because I've because of you, I funded my six figure business as 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 was as what? Let's go, baby. I love it. I hope you got that law term and GG on being a business owner. Amen. Amazon 392 we enter the long term channel that's where I think we kind of just chill even like below 390 what I was saying I don't know if we go any lower than that without another data set or something or like fed futures running otherwise I mean if it gets really ugly before I think no lower than 379 maybe 375 there if it really wants to wick but like 380 to 375 by Powell Potential of running corn and grains this year due to tensions? No, I think the only black swan would be uh, energy. That's it. I think uh, I think oil. Like I said yesterday, like it just even then, even the revisions on oil. Like when you even go look at the oil numbers that look like they're massive, it's a lot of it is due to revisions and adjustments. But I, the only risk I see, the only like real black swan uh, like commodity energy, it would be oil or natural gas. That's it. even then natural gas in Europe is trading at fifteen dollars right now. It still hasn't came down. <laughs> it's, it's actually a historic spread uh, between the two. But then uh, it's just oil. That's like the, if, if there's any real risk, and I don't think it's going to be easy. That's why I say this as a as a black swan more so than a base case. It's just simply, uh, dude, you have the lowest level of reserves. You know, we are we are literally not prepared for an oil shock, shock part two. Brian, I know you love, bro. You've been showing a lot of love lately, man. God bless you. God bless you, my friends. The 50 cent bounce, or the 50 cent, uh, the 50 uh, basis point bounce and 50 pending. Just wait. That's what all of them are going to start moving. I do like Costco over the long term. At a cheaper price, yeah. Bitcoin dropping. But North Corn. Not four seven. And then bookkeeping my expenses, you really realize how shit adds up. Amen, man. That's I've been telling y'all for a while, man. You gotta watch the expenses. That's the best way. The whole richest man of Babylon, man. Everybody makes money. Most people just spend it. <laughs> That's it. If you're worried about making money, you should be more worried about how you spend it. If you think it's hard to acquire money, then it should be harder for you to spend the money. Amen, amen. I can only imagine consumer, I mean, just stock market too. Things are moving. Just this, like the beginning of the year has been wicked. Because I know people felt really good, and now people are, like, in the middle if it goes down again. Talk about a Raul right there, you know what I'm saying? Uh, 10.15. I just got comments from Fed Jefferson. That was their old, though. Saying supply, demand, imbalance, inflation factors seen high. But there hasn't been another news headline. It's probably going to be like uh, Bullard. So they're doing a speech. Their speech has nothing to do. You know, we get the main comments, right? And then afterwards, they're probably going to talk to reporters. Maybe they don't. We'll find out. But And then Loretta Mester comments hit in the morning too. But if anything comes up, you know, recently we'll have it. They both, both pre-written headlines at 415. Prepared remarks. They're all talking, undershooting. Outweighing the cost. Loretta Mester, even uh, early in the morning, had some too. And then Bullard is coming in in uh, about 40 minutes. Why is it crashing? Uh, hot PCE, like objectively hot. And now the inflation chart looks like it's ticking back up after uh, people have been kind of primed to believe it was coming down. Should I sell my Rolex and put it towards my long term? Do you already have a long term? 
I mean, Rolexes have been actually great. In a weird way, I see a, I see a Rolex and a watch as knockoff gold. And I t- sadly, even though you get like a Rolex contains a third of an ounce of gold, so pretty much you're paying for the price you would buy one ounce of gold for. If you get it in a Rolex, you're pretty much buying a, a third of an ounce, you know, gold to weight ratio. But if you look at 10, 5, 10, 15 years, these actually the watches have outperformed gold as like a commodity just tremendously. So in a weird way, I view a Rolex as a gold holding, but I mean, don't get carried away. And just like any other physical asset, you run the you run the risk of damage, theft, loss, erosion, you know, so on and so forth. Calling BS on that. I usually look it up. I I will double down on that. I've done this research for a while. <laughs> I'm telling you, I I have gold and I have a Rolex there. I got you know, and it's the same thing. And I I did opt to. I I wish I wish I bought more watches at the time. But once I came across the info that I was like, why the hell would I pay you know sixteen hundred dollars for a third of an ounce when I could just go buy the the ounce of gold? That's I I did buy more gold instead, but. You know, looking at it as it's averaged out over the years, uh, you know, the actual brand name watch has has outperformed gold. He said no long term. Um, I thought he said he did have a long term. If you don't have a long term, I mean, and you have a Rolex, I I I compare you to the guy who loves Peter Schiff and only has gold and no long-term too. It's the same thing. You're just investing in metals, uh, this time a designer metal that may just have a higher societal value. <laughs> that's, that's about it. Otherwise, I would get a long-term. Though. If you don't have a long-term, I, would, I, would, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have a watch in no long-term. But if you do have it, I mean, I would, I would just consider that your metal balance. Ford suspends F-150 Lightning for another uh, week of production. You're coming back down here. Three, nine, four, four. It's air breaking a little bit. And now it's 1042. 20 more minutes, though. 18 more minutes till data. President Zelensky is speaking to reporters. Three, nine, four, four. That's it. The only difference between gold and a Rolex is the liquidity. Way easier to buy and sell gold than a watch. And that's where you actually got to factor that in. Beyond only paying a premium on the metal, if it's, you know, molded and manufactured by a manufacturer, uh, it's it's liquidity. That's the It's not easy to buy and sell a watch and get the value you would expect. But even then, gold has a inherent 1.5% slippage. Apple's even coming down. Let's see, Boeing is still holding. But your air braking is into the low right now. You just hit another new low, but it's not doing it violently. The latest low is four points off of uh, the 200-day. I'm getting a mini green shoot there. Tesla, Apple, all of them too. Rugpool Raul. Uh, we were just going over their our names. Like I'm top tick Josh. And somebody mentioned that they were Rugpool Raul. <laughs> and I laugh every time I hear it, man. I laugh every time I hear it. A mini green soup. Hey, Mr. 10%. I'm Jeremy. Hi. God bless our veterans. Amen. I already have the Tesla up. I mean, Vinod is known to say every candle is massive pop on Tesla. 
I didn't forget, so I kind of just let him have it. You know what I'm saying? It's okay. I, I give it like give it one full day, and then another green candle, and then Vinod calling it out, and then another random chat is gonna beef with him and say stop pumping it. So I just I figure you guys I'll let the marketplace sort it out. Nvidia, LYV, didn't they have earnings? Pump gold, please. I mean, again, I sadly, sadly, I would rather get a watch than gold now at this point. But I always, I think uh, a small portion of a portfolio should uh, have some metals, but not in paper. I, I like physical assets, real assets. We go a long way. Uh, Tesla is moving though. They're probably it was weird. They were leading in the day earlier, but now they're they're still down three percent, which is a pretty big penny. Peter Schiff, is that you? No man, Peter Schiff is. He's been telling y'all to buy gold no matter what, man. Like I think if we actually like if the world actually was ending, he would tell you to buy it. If the world was doing the best it's ever have, he'd tell you to buy it. I'm telling you, it's a lot of uh, a lot of money you can make selling gold <laughs> like honestly like i would love to get into the business that's the sad part you know you, you can make so much money slaying in gold especially when uh when fear rises that's it and then all that you get you get all the boomers and then all the young kids who just discover zero hedge you know you the, like so like all the kids who are like 18 and like 25 and then they go through their first like stock market dropping and then they finally look into fractional banking, you know, <laughs> and then they trip out, bro. Boom. Instant gold sale right there. You know what I'm saying? Instant one and a half, two percent premium. It's like selling real estate. You could get you're getting instant commissions, lower transaction sizes, higher transaction volume. Oh man. Is there. Is there. That's right. Sell gold, buy silver. <laughs> That's not what I said, but I, 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 you know, silver one, two, three, four. I like your name with it in terms of it, so we'll we'll go with that. I guess I don't know. It's not a recommendation. It's not what I was trying to describe, but you know, I have all of them. I have silver. I have gold. I just, you know, like I'm saying, I think you should definitely, uh, you should have a balance and just don't go, don't go fucking full you know, apocalypse or ready to battle a vampire. And I think you'll be good. Do you have bismuth? No, I don't have bismuth, man. What is that? Mm. Buy NFTs? Mm-hmm. If you think people will get stupider, but at the same time, it's actually like, I don't know, man. I told you that conversation I had the other day. I'm surprised. Like, legitimately, there's people who believe the metaverse is the future. There's no way around that, and I think it worked. Oh, Zim, there you go. There you go, Habibi. Today's my 25th anniversary. Wow, congratulations. I say you better, is your is your wife awake right now? Because you better not be on stream. You know what I'm saying? You better like wake her up with like flowers or something. Wake her up with a share of uh of 3M or something. Be like, I got something for you. I do that. I don't know though. My girlfriend gets annoyed with it. That's it. I just tell her. I like, I got you a share for, for Christmas. And then she just looks at me like I'm insane. And I'm like, what? I'm live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. Drop your thumbs up on the video. And then she really starts staring at me. I'm like, well, it's, hey, man. Just if I say, if you could like the video, it would be appreciated. And then she gets really confused. She's like, how can I like the video? I'm like, you're just making up excuses now. I don't know why you try to avoid it. 
man. Get her some. Nah, you get silver for kids. That's what. That's see, y'all don't know how to do it, man. That's what I would do. Any of my friends who have like kids or whatever, if I if it's too difficult to get them a share, I buy them like a couple ounces of silver. Because then it's like a nice shiny token. I'm like, it's an investment. Keep it for 10 years and you're going to make $4 with no dividend. <laughs> but it gets them started. You know what I'm saying? It's a good one. It's like, you know, it's affordable. It's a cool gift. You get to foster the investing mindset of it. But that's it, man. On it, They would have been better off if I bought. I, I did that with a couple of my friend's kids like five, 10 years ago. Or I think it was like five years ago, seven years ago. They would have made more money dripping Avivai, dog. I, I, I should have just got them one share of Avivai. But it's good. It's a good one. Yeah, it's a good seed to plant. Oh, switch gears. Coming down here now. Watch out. This one's getting a little aggressive, but is this doing exactly what it did, 750? Oh, yeah. We were, we were dropping. We dropped a little earlier last time, but let's see if this is going to break through. This is going to be your... Uh, 200 day average test or 200 moving day. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Why, man, I feel so bad because y'all are showing love like right as the market hits a new low, and I don't want people to think I'm celebrating. <laughs> but Jake from State Farm, baby. Oh, right, let's go. <laughs> hey, man. God bless you, Jake. God bless you, Jake. Oh, man. Hold he holds it down in both chads, bro. I love to see it. Thank you, my friend. You've been very, you've been mad consistent. You've been to the level of Pete's consistent, dog. It's crazy. Jake from State Farm, man. You know Jake from State Farm? If this whole time, if this was an ad for State Farm, I'd, I'd trip out. But I like Jake from State Farm. Good guy, man. He's a blessing. He's a blessing. Look at that. That's, that's 20 member badge. Oh, my gosh. He did it on the Twitch, too? Oh, man. Oh, man. Let's go. God bless you. All get horns. Everybody gets one. There's Jake from State Farm. You know we'll give him something back. I think he's. I think he's deserved it. I think he's deserved it. You got it. I'm gonna give you a gift on the Twitch, man. There you go. I got I got you a gift on the Twitch. They're definitely going to call it nepotism because you've shown so much love. But you have been here for years, man, holding it down on both. I love you. God bless you. It's too OG not to love, man. Too OG not to love. Let's go, baby. Well, shout out to the members. Hey, man. Mm -mm -mm. You know, Cole Real Estate loves you all. Hope everyone has a blessed, amazing, safe day. Prayers out to everyone. Don't forget to hit that like. That's the message from Jake, baby. Amen. Spy is at the low. Again, we are cheering uh, because of the, the beautiful community we have here, not because of the new low. But I think this is where we break it there. But who knows? Maybe we get a little bit of air breaks. But you are into the low. I got a little bit here for you. Uh, Fed repricing gained strength. Uh, but is looking stretched. The repricing in financial markets uh, for a higher Fed rate gained new strength after the PCE numbers. Oh, Daniel! <laughs> Dog, let's go. Look at the Chad. See, man, you got happy Chads today. You got happy Chads today, so keep your spirits high, baby. They gained new strength after the PCE numbers. The moves are looking stretched. Assets are entering new ranges. Fed swaps are now fully projecting rate hikes in March, May, and June. Swaps are pricing policy rate of 5.38 above the St. Louis Fed uh, Bullard 5.37. Wait, what time is it? 
You got data in five minutes. Two-year yields rose as high as 4.82 to the highest since 2007. German two-year rates followed, climbing 3% for the first time since 2008. The dollar rose, sending the yen, Aussie, and Aussie, Aussie and Kiwi all down more than 1%. The Bloomberg Commodity Index is the lowest in more than a year. We've mentioned before that yields look attractive only to they see them push higher, but it's worth repeating two-year yields approaching 5% and 10-year climbing towards, towards 4 are growing ever more attractive. Ay, ay, ay. Mm -mm. Hey, man, man. Came into work, got 200 commission check. I gave 150 and dog. You don't have to, man. I appreciate you, bro. For real. You know, don't, man, get that. I want, we're going to have to start a Jake from State Farm Long Term, an extra one for you, bro. I appreciate you, man. Look at that. Just showing love, man. Showing love. Let's go and make sure we control all spending and finances as we see because everyone gets worried when the stock market goes down. So now we, we got to make sure. And shout out to Daniel as well too, man. Showing love for years. God bless the cult, baby. God bless the cult. <laughs> Amen. Y'all have y'all have applied to the Save the, Save the Bear Foundation. It's appreciated. Yeah, save that 10%. Save that 10 Always, always. Kansas City Fed service activity index at one. Why does it keep coming out early? So Kansas City Fed bounced by a lot. So, oh, my God. <laughs> Fucking Edgars. Oh, right, let's go. <laughs> what just happened? Why did y'all just, what's going on, man? What's going on, bro? 50, Edgar. Edgar, you're confusing me, man. Hold on. Okay, hold on, hold on. Before we get into to Edgar, the mysterious case of Edgar, uh, here's Kansas City Fed bounced. I would say this is bullish because your service index just went from a negative 11 to a positive 1, and this is another set of uh, inflationary data, more or less. It's not as important, uh, but... That is uh that's a big one here, but the market's kind of reacting, and it came out four minutes ahead of time, uh, just like yesterday when we saw it. So yeah, it's another one, bro. Look at this. Make sure you guys turned on your uh your gifts, bro. God bless you, Armin. Thank you, William Anderson. Thank you, and Edgar, the one without the badge, just donated fifty freaking memberships. The guy has gotten a hundred memberships for Chad's without buying one for himself. How stoic. You know what I'm saying? Wow. What are the guy? These, I don't, Edgar, you're confusing me, Edgar. My goodness. <laughs> Let's go, baby. Uh, <laughs> Let's go. Even the Twitch get hype. Let's go. You get another one. You get another one, bro. Let's go. Almost. They already at the hype train, man. Oh, man. So, all right, you guys, well, I might have to give you a delayed celebration on this, man, because we're going lower. Y'all keep doing these at the time where it's like somebody's tuning in. They're like, this guy is straight up hitting a blow horn and blowing a horn every low the market hits. I'm like, it's not me. I mean, it's my chat. It's like what happened and then Edgar and then Edgar is confusing me, man. I'm not going to lie to you. Y'all thought inflation is confusing. I'm trying to figure out Edgar right now. Can we? I need to get Edgar a membership somehow, Edgar. Edgar's like, Edgar's trying to play poker with me. He's like, fuck it, just mod me, Josh. That's it. There's no in between. It's either I mod him or I or I or I or I just like I have no way to to get I need him to have a membership, honestly. It's it's really bugging me. Maybe you could call it OCD. They call him fifty two week kazoo. Put some respect on my name. I'm the way I'm the greatest. Oh, look at Edgar. See, that's the first reaction I've got from Edgar. Edgar been just dropping the donos and then just like going straight Batman and then just <laughs> He's falling back into the shadows. And then he pulls up out of nowhere. Edgar, he's just like, I just want one. One from you. That's it. You don't need to get 100 memberships. <laughs> I wish I was, ah, I wish I was speaking in hyperbole. No, seriously, I'm not joking. I mean it. The guy, the Edgar. Edgar came in and he, Edgar, Edgar bought 100. How do you buy 100 memberships, huh? Literally, one, one, zero, one, zero, the three, the, it's a, like a dollar bill, a hundred dollar bill. 
he did. He came in with a hundred. It's not hyperbole. Seriously, I don't. It's like he. It's like Edgar created a membership union, and you know I love the unions, huh? Come on, seriously. Thank, thank, thanks, Edgar. Thanks, Edgar. I tell you, I tell you something about Edgar. I knew a guy named Edgar. He was in the chat. He came in every day. Beautiful guy. Beautiful guy. He's terrific. Very handsome. He was tall. He came in every day. A hundred memberships. I said, that's how you donate memberships right there. That's how you do it. Not five, not one, not no, 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 five hundred. He's, I swear it was five hundred. I'm going to nominate him to my cabinet. That's how we do it here. Maybe just have him buy an NFT. It's amazing. Amazing. Terrific guy. Terrific guy. Ter beautiful. Beautiful and handsome. It's amazing to see. Mm -mm. Yo, notice VWAP has climbed up. VWAP has came up on that. What did I walk into? You walked in a hot PCE, a lot of love from the Chad, and then Kansas City services being hot, which should be inflationary, but little mini bounce there. And then you're walking into 20 minutes prior to James Bullard, where my guy is going to be lit out of his mind talking about 5.3%. And we don't know if he's talking about THC content or terminal interest rate on Fed policy. So that's really what you got into right about now at about 11 a.m. Eastern time. So we still got a lot of hours here. It's been a very big reaction for the most part. And we're going to move from there. So let's see, though. And you're about, uh, you're about eight points away from your 200-day moving average. Mm-mm. That's super low THC content. Well, you guys seem educated. All I know, if this was like 10 years ago, and you got a pound of that for fucking $25, you wouldn't complain. Okay? I'm from San Diego. We're really close to Mexico. That's what we had to do at times. Y'all don't understand the struggle. Okay? Weed wasn't legal back then. Didn't matter. Didn't matter. Mm-hmm. That swag. Well, listen, man. At one point, man, that was considered a feast. Get out of here with your bougie ass, <laughs> man. What do you mean? You know, I don't know. I don't know. Texas is way closer, bro. I could drive to Mexico right now. I could literally live stream to Mexico, and then like live stream and come back. EQT high. Yeah, and then VV, VV, I made the grind look easy. I'm still in the SQ, yes. I'm actually positive on it still, too, believe it or not. Bullard is going to be at 1120 per the schedule. He might be on before or after, give or take a confidence interval. And then we will, I mean, all the Fed speakers so far, we got their written statements. And I would even be on the lookout uh, just in case uh, Mester or Jefferson speak to reporters because they had a conversation about 45 minutes ago, uh, but they didn't really produce any any headlines at all. Well, we're holding, we didn't get the flush. I really thought we were going to get the 200-day flush right there. So take that as you please. But I do have an idea now. Mm. What time is it? Oh, shit. Euro close in 30 minutes? Hmm. That's going to be there. Apple flush. Good call, Chad. Yeah, Apple is going lower. Watch the other ones because not everything's moving with it. It wants to get a green candle, but it just flushed and then green on Apple. But watch if anything else leads, because it looked like Microsoft and the rest of those kind of made a move. I'm a little D-Gen, short and stout. Here is my daily, here is my call. When the market goes down, I will buy zero days and flush it out. 
yeah, I bought a daily option for a very again, I'm 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 a, I'm I'm utilizing my strategy here. Uh it's called reverse psychology. Uh I just bought a spy daily call for nine dollars. Nine or nine? No, 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 like zero nine. So I bought. Don't trade it. Not a recommendation. You will lose money. I grabbed a spy four hundred dollar call. It's already down though. Mm -mm -mm. Now I know Josh is smoking something. Because I grabbed a zero day for nine dollars. That's that's so rude, bro. You do this every day. You buy like 17 of them every other day. What are you? That means you're, I mean, you're probably on mushrooms, but it's okay. You know, mushrooms. Y'all, y'all, you guys know that? Y'all have identified with mushrooms? <laughs> like, I know there's like they, them, he, she, all of that. Y'all have like some of y'all, your pronouns is shroom. You know that? Like straight up. It's okay. It's not nothing wrong. I've realized it though, because that's why people take offense to it. Nah, but I feel you, man. You're part of the zero day problem. Shit, man. I never said I was. I was trading zero days before y'all knew what an option was. But back then it was only 10% of market value. Now it's 50%. So honestly, man, I think I'm a trailblazer. I don't know about contributing to the problem. Uh, sadly, I think I probably showed too many people and then they went crazy with it. And maybe I'm probably responsible for too many addictions out there. But I did tell them to get a long term. Because I learned that one real quick. Mm -hmm. You better get your long term, bro. That's all. And if you want to be stupid, you better be tough. That's it. That's the rules of the road, man. That's the rules of the road. So I hope you can vibe with me on that. I mean, Square is good. I think Square is not bad. I bought a Spy 400 call. For, I only bought one of them for $9. Just, again, this is something we did it the other day. I ended up losing 50%, but we got our money back. But, I mean, after seeing yesterday and all these days, it seems to be the trend. I do want to sell some options. I kind of want to sell some zero-day premium. But, you know, we'll see. I bought the same lottery ticket. Thanks for the recommendation. That wasn't a recommendation. So please retract your statement or I'll ban you. And post in the chat that that wasn't a recommendation and I make my own decisions. Otherwise, you will be banned and your Elon badge goes with you. Thank you. I appreciate you. I'm not laughing, sir. Thank you for shopping at the Stock Market Live. We're live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes before open. Drop your thumbs up on the video. Mm -mm. Okay, sorry. No, no, no. Retract, retract your statement, please. Say that wasn't a recommendation. And I made that by my own accord. Because why would I listen to somebody I've never even seen their face on? Doesn't make any sense. That can't be construed as a recommendation. If you construed it as a recommendation, you may have serious issues. Or you are lying and you are trying to frame something that is totally untrue. And if that is the case, then there you go. That wasn't a recommendation. Sorry, sorry. There you go. Thank you. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. Be dumb, you gotta be tough, yeah. What's the high you think? I don't know. I think anything could happen today. And then I mean the X factor right now is gonna be Bullard. Because if Bullard comes in, uh then that's it. Cause if what if Bullard says something? I mean, right now, technically, like I just said, uh Bullard is literally the terminal rate right now that's being priced in by the Fed futures. Uh, it's higher than Bullard, than even what Bullard said the other day. I'm going through some stuff. Make, uh, God bless, man. I hope you could smile every day. I hope with a lot of it, man. I hope when I make some jokes, too. I really hope everybody can laugh. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? I hope nobody takes anything too seriously. 
I hope you are able to enjoy it, man. And uh, I, I do hope you are learning with everything going on in the market. And I hope everybody is uh, firmly on the uh, firmly on the path to uh, really like stay consistent throughout this next year. And you know the opportunities, you know, are just they're immense. And I, I think there's a lot we could learn. And you could learn a lot about yourself, and you could even control yourself and do a lot. Mm -hmm. Our OTC pumpers all the same. You got paid discords, and no matter what, thank you, man. Thank you. I think every pumper is the same. That's it. I think pumping is like little pee pee syndrome. You know what I'm saying? So it's like having a small pee pee and then buying a F550 and then lifting it. You know what I'm saying? And then if somebody like bumps into you, you have to fight with them. Like that's all it is. It's just like it's a lack of confidence in your own play uh, or it has a different motive where they're trying to get, you know, they're trying to get some action with their small PPI. I'm talking inflation index. What? At 550, that's 20 wheels. Like I said, man, some people, they, they have, they, they try to overcompensate. Carvana, big day drop. Three, nine, five, two. You haven't even came close yet to fill in the gap. So that's where, uh, that's where this one gets interesting. <laughs> Mark, yeah, Carvana is dumping right there. Been losing every day. You still come? Are you doing shares or not? I mean, I've taken a lot of just this last two weeks and balancing out everything. You know, I had a lot of shares go red, and I'm still holding them. But I think if you give yourself time with the shares, you'll be good. And you know, that's I think that's part of the game. You know, what you're gonna learn if you I don't know how long you've been trading for, but the one thing you definitely learn is staying alive. Everybody gets a turn. Everybody has their periods with it. And that's why it's like, as long as you are, the problem is, it's just like the emotional stuff the market has been bringing. I think everybody goes back and forth. And it's just like, you know, people really love the market when it's good. But then how do you handle it when it's not good? I, I think that'll that'll define a lot. And hopefully you're utilizing the, the vehicles at your disposal. Like, like I was saying, you know, I got plays that I'm down. Wait, Meta says Llama is not being used as a product. Announces Llama AI via Instagram. Says AI language model will help researchers. Meta AI. Yo, Meta's hitting AI news right now. It's called Llama. Dog, you, I, wish, I wish we could bet on Meta fucking making up stupid names for their products. That's the worst thing they're doing. Like, let's be real. Facebook wasn't even a book. And now they're like, let's just change our name to Meta. Hey, let's make an AI and call it Llama. L-L-A-M-A. -L -A -A. La Llama. <laughs> La Llama. L L little mama. <laughs> Stupid ass, man. So it's moving right there though. That could be pretty big for him. I mean, you know how the market been loving anything AI. I think market even got lifted on that a little bit. You missed hot PCE. There's a lot of inflationary data. Biden says G seven to impose unprecedented cost on Putin. That's how you spell the llama? Oh, then I just don't know how to spell the llama. I'm going to call it the llama now. All in favor? Okay, glad we could make an agreement. I'm going to ride my la llama while I go by Abby Vi. I have 200 shares of Zim. I'm green on it, though. I've had it for a little bit here so far. Like I said, it just, it's hard to move. I'm looking for the breakout because when it moves, it really does move. But that's what we got to see for it to happen.
Are they back to spending money? I hope not. But that's what I was saying earlier. I was like, they've been working on metaverse stuff and like so many things. I feel like meta would have been ahead of the whole AI game. Like if anybody was going to have an AI chatbot, like I feel like it would have been them. So I know they do have AI technologies they're working on, but I think you just need it to actually like come to life. Is a llama long when you're overextended like a llama's neck? Is that a tongue twister? Or did you, is that like a mnemonic to enter into a secret cave? I have no idea what that means, sir. It's the most I've ever lost in a day. It was like 70,000. Uh, off of, but I had gains of like a quarter million the day prior. I was just trying to make a hundred million dollars that day. <laughs> I was a lot younger and I, I, you know, I was a little bit ambitious when I woke up that week. Uh, but that's about it. I mean, some of these, uh, like that NQ is getting pretty big, man. I usually don't really, uh, take, I mean, I've lost like, I've lost a million dollars on long-term shares. So like I've had, like, I don't count that as like trading or like trading revenue or whatever, but I've had long-term shares. I mean, don't forget Facebook was really expensive and then it came really, really cheap. So, you know, that definitely had a, a, a price tag, sir. Oh, Vidion. Welcome, baby. Uber 33 calls hitting the daily scanner. Even the spies back up at VWAP here. Uh, realized lost. Oh, no. I think my biggest realized lost might be like 50,000. Otherwise, if it's unrealized, I don't. I mean, I got to take all of those collectively last year to do the tax loss harvesting. I realized a lot and I lowered my tax liabilities, but from like one individual trade. I don't think I've lost more than like fifty, sixty thousand realized. Yeah, Sam was like twenty or thirty thousand. Um and that's about it. But I mean you could add those up with a couple of like Sam and Spotify or like twenty K a pop. Pros and cons to single entry versus averaging. Single entry, you get all the money in at once. If it moves up a lot, you get fatter gains. And if it moves and that price never comes back, you maximize the position. But then same thing on the downside, single position. You'll lose if it goes down instantly, you're losing a majority and you could have increased way more quantity. And then averaging, uh, the pros are that you'll make sure you get a good price, but then you can end up paying higher. And then if it runs up, uh, like I've had with like a Ulta play, if you average in and then it shoots up, you may never be able to get back into it or your average just goes higher and higher. We are breaking up. We are, well, not, I don't, I don't want to break up with you, Chad. I'm just, I'm saying the market is, is moving up. You're above VWAP now, finally, but I don't think you're at the level yet. Let's see at 3960 what happens. If you get there, you might open it up. It's not a violent downtrend. Uh, just compared to yesterday, yesterday got very, very violent. So maybe we're doing some of that Friday dance move and killing some premium. But we'll see. Mm. Laser pop. Zim is looking good. When does Zim have a dividend? Um, so they should have paid out in January. Damn it. We ain't going to get that. I don't know if I'll hold it for the Divi. It's good. We have just under a dollar a share. 
No, Bullard is about to speak uh, right now, actually. So be on the lookout. SDA or FDA approves uh, Sanofi's Altavilio, approved in the United States. Sanofi says it positively impacts 2022 IFRS net income. Check SMY. Mm. Floated rates. Um, why are you interested in those? I think it's just based off of uh, like the interest rate is variable. And I don't, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's corporate. It says he's about to come on here. Let's see. Uh, there it is. Bullard on economic outlook. Oh. What's up, guys? You remember me? <laughs> how you how you like the inflation coming down? <laughs> yeah, gas price, I did that, bitch. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, not hyperbole. And it was a tell, tell, tell Putin I'm going to fuck him up. What's up? I'll, I'll roll through your hood. I don't care if it's a war zone. Yeah, come on, load up the jet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, come on, seasonally adjust that. Oh, I, might, I, might, I might unbutton my shirt here. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling great. I pop a pack slip in him on. Hey, where's the Zantac at, buddy? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What do you think about Jerome? He listens to me. <laughs> All right, guys. You have a good day. Hey, maybe, maybe like to put the thumbs on the video. All right. <laughs> you, have, you have a wonderful good, good night. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't had that one in a while, man. I love that beat. All right, so be on the lookout for Bullard's comments. You should be getting a statement soon. Mm. I don't know what that song is called. Uh-uh. Bullard has been 50-50. Bullard is considered hawkish. He is a non-voter. But like we said in last Wednesday, he destroyed the market by bringing up what was in the minutes. It was honestly like it was bittersweet. It's like your homie like warned you that your that your girl was cheating on you and you like you didn't want to believe it, but then you're like, you know, in the long run, you should be glad that he told you. That's kind of how Bullard was last Wednesday. Because he said 50 basis points and it was very, very bearish. But then it showed up on the minutes that it was him and then somebody else as well. So that was bearish. But then he came back the other day and then he was like, yo, it's my rate is at 5.37 terminal. And he told you just slightly above where it is. And currently right now the market is pricing in higher than the, the terminal rate or even what Bullard has said. So I think he leans more hawkish, definitely. But it's kind of hard to say now at this point where he's going to stand in on. And But that's why I'm saying that that could lead to a tremendous amount of upside today or he could bat us down and take us to the 200-day. And then we see what happens next, okay? Sanofi sees no change to business net income. I'm surprised Sanofi's not moving. They got some FDA approval, and they're making comments related to uh, – Making comments related to their net income. Energy's on the high. Mm, Bullard. I have this thing. It shows weird. Mester and the Mester and the other one are over. But we'll see. My max upside, I'd say, like, filling the gap, 475 maybe, or maybe 401 where we closed yesterday. And then, But then by that by that point, if you're here halfway, I mean, what's going to happen? Every mother effer is going to pile in a zero day and try to squeeze it. 
Yeah, Meta introducing AI large language model called Llama. La Llama. Hmm. It's weird. I have Bullard on one schedule, but then you're right. On another, the trading economics uh, doesn't have Bullard on there at all. Only Jefferson, Collins, and Waller. Well, that'll be a that'll be a nice one if you get him. I think that'll kind of shock. If not, it says Columbia University in New York. Lorenzo, welcome, my friend. February 22nd. Yeah, Bullard might be actually in... I, I have an event, and I have the title of it, but... There's Bob Bullard, <laughs> Columbia... Event I can know. I see I see it on some uh Italian one. James Bullard Para Alla Columbia University Day Dale eleven thirty. <laughs> we'll see. If it does come on, we'll get it. If not, then there you go. Then we wait for uh who else? There's one more. Williams or somebody. Sony will replace uh Lumentum design as the exclusive supplier for iPhone fifteen. Sony. Oh, Sony's popping off of that exclusive supplier news. It's from that guy on Twitter, the one uh, China analysis analyst analysis. Yeah, again, a lot of currencies are down one percent right now, hence why the dollar is up so much. Light downside. Yeah, Lament. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's the company. Spy is starting to break out here now. Let's see. Let's see what's about to happen next. Okay. Thirty nine sixty. That's where you want it. Again, you can neutralize everything. Just a couple points higher. It'll just be a very, very neutral day. You're breaking out of the downtrend from the morning here. And then the high of the day is 39.72, your opening candle. And then 10 minutes later, you hit around 39.69. Like I said, if you do get momentum, I mean, we already got our calls. So we bought it. They're at 14 cents now. I don't know how much that is percentage-wise, 9 to 14. It's like 50%. Zelensky says, my main task is to keep aid to Ukraine strong. BA doing the opposite. Well, Boeing is in the gulag. I'm surprised, though, they're actually letting it drop, though. 198? Fucking finally. This is your first guess. Again, they just gave up the whole two months of gains now in one, one or two days. But... 198 leads us down to 195-ish. You break 195, 193. You're back to the 188s. Oh, shit. Euro close in two minutes. Dude, it's early. My goodness. We've gone through a lot today. We've, dude, that's crazy. We have, We still have what? Four and a half hours left? That's actually wild. This is a long day, my friends. Long day. It is only Euro close right now. 
kind of going by quick. I feel like it's kind of slow because we just we did the chill out very early. So like by 830 yesterday, <laughs> I mean, we were down from 4028 to like 3985. So most of the move here was pre-market, but we're starting to work our way back up here. Polyalti. Oh, it's going for the breakout. Sony, Zim. Uh, Square's moving back up. That's great. Actually, Square's doing really good. Mm -hmm. A Dexcom ain't done anything. Didn't he do this before Bullard or who? Nothing on Bullard yet. I'd say put that as tentative. It should be starting now, but it's not there. And it doesn't show up on all of the schedules. Lind, they're hitting a new high. Lind, L-I-N, is popping. Yeah, why do you need Bullard when you can have me? <laughs> you know, you, you know gasoline? Yeah, I brought that down a dollar. Whole fucking dollar, motherfucker. <laughs> Come on, let's go for a drive. Yeah, we're, 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 we're waiting now. Yeah, you like the market popping? Yeah, I, 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 tell, I tell you about corn pop. That's, that's what we'll call this one. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom. Come on, Hunter, bring the Zantac. Let's turn up here, it's Friday. Love that, love this song. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just too. That's a banger. It's always been. We just don't get that audio all the time. It's very, Oh, there it is. There he is. Oh, no. It says he's live. What the? F I'm going to tackle somebody. Just kidding. <laughs> it said he's live. I just got an alert. And I click it and it goes back to that. Goldman sets 30 billion repurchase plan. Again, Lynn is popping. I don't have any news on that one. It's just moving up big. Lynn volume more than uh, triple the 20 day average. Lynn day. Just move a big Lynn day. Going back to 360. Hold on, let's see where's the square. We don't keep going back up. We could dance around. I mean, this just bought us a lot of time. Euro close is right here. So Europe is now closed. They're getting another pretty big candle here. Let's see. You're still not near the highs, but we did this yesterday, I believe. Where was it, though? No, it was a nice work up here. But today's range is just so much tighter. So we'll find out. I like 3M. I bought it for the long term yesterday. I thought it'd be good to scale in. Only one deposit. It's actually cheaper than where we bought it now. I think by uh, just under a dollar. Southwestern sees greater structural volatility in the gas market. No bull bull yet. 59 names are up on the S&P right now. 444 are down. That's compared to 13 and 19 earlier in the morning. So last time the stock market was at this price in the morning, the S&P, uh, you had double the amount of names down. Or double, you had half as many names up. Still, yeah, bonds didn't play along. But then again, the bonds uh, are related to uh, Mr. Yen. Yo, Lin is still ripping, man. That just went negative to positive, and it's three times its 20-day average volume. 
Bullard should be now, but he might not come on. Uh, it doesn't. I don't know how confirmed that is. It's weird because I read it earlier in the morning, and then uh, even today, and then I just got an alert for it, but I don't see him. No, I don't see Bullard headlines. Not yet. We will be waiting. Bro, Lind is killing it. L-I-N. Is that the chocolate company? Or is that Lint? Oh, no. Yeah, Lind. I've no, I have no news on Lind. I've already checked, but now that's a fat move. 327 to 337. That's almost 10 bucks a share. Uh, there it is. Bullard. It's um, coming from Benzinga. Says St. Louis Fed. Bullard says current U.S. situation may fall under rubric of credible disinflation, which do not have large output costs. Bullard says soft landing possible due to Fed inflation credibility. Fed Bullard comments in presentation. Oh, there it is. Thought about the French Revolution. It was uh, about uh, events in France today. I hate him. And uh, he's going to give you a history lesson and then the things that move the market. He's going to say it an hour uh, later to correct the to correct the quote. So uh, I view myself as a bit of a translator of earlier work done by Guillermo Calvo. And and uh, you can tell me whether I've got it right or uh, or whether it's just too delicious to pass up. He's high as hell. So uh, this is about <laughs> credible and incredible uh, disinflations. And uh, obviously, the U.S. Uh, inflation rate has been running above uh, 2% and has actually been running at 1970s levels. Um, and the key question for current monetary policy is whether we'll be able to disinflate in the U.S. relatively painlessly and relatively It does sound like a conversation, though, that could get or us headlines. Or whether we have to go through a, He's gonna uh, say a lot of shit about inflation. event like the uh, big 1980-82 recession associated with uh, Paul Volcker's leadership at the Fed. And a lot of uh, financial market participants, some might be in this room, uh, and, and uh, others are saying the only way to do it is to have a huge recession. And uh, they're basically reading that off the Volcker era. But the story in this talk will be different. I'm going to tell a story that relies a lot more on credibility issues and a lot more on fiscal monetary interaction, which are uh, key themes in the work of Guillermo Calvo. I think he might sound bullish. So here's on this a one. picture of the inflation rate in the U.S. This is because uh, it seems like he's trying to prove PCE inflation. He's trying to, uh, try this to be is in what the our inflation target is going to be about credibility. Uh, stated in terms of not the target recession is there, or not. The and then horizontal is the topic. Line. You can see the 1970s there, very high. And then over on the right-hand side, you can see the current numbers, and it did peak uh, very much at similar levels that you might have seen in 1975 or 1976. Um, I, I would also point out here that the inflation targeting era, an implicit inflation targeting era in the U.S., I think began in about 1995. That's when we implicitly uh Greenspan Fed implicitly adopted a 2% inflation target, and we ratified that in 2012. Um, so, whoops. The Volcker disinflation was costly, uh, but not credible. Uh, so initially, very few people believed that uh, Volcker was going to go through uh, with the disinflation. And so you had to convince markets uh, that we were going to actually do it. And here's some literature on that, all of which I recommend. Uh, you might look at it uh, more carefully. Um, but uh, part of the post-Volcker literature turned to something else to analyze uh, how could you do a disinflation credibly and possibly costlessly. And most famously, Sargent had uh, the paper, The Ends of Four Big Inflations, and uh, you would not have to have a large output cost. So the, what we're talking about, you know, the Volcker disinflation, just to remind you, unemployment in the U.S. hit 10.8% 
it's that's the highest of the post-war era. So um, the idea would be that uh, the reason the Volcker disinflation was costly was because Volcker had to earn credibility. And if you didn't have to earn the credibility, then it might be it might go a lot faster and a lot better. Um, so the idea for today is that uh, what we've got is more like the credible disinflation scenario uh, than the incredible disinflation scenario that Volcker had because uh, modern central banks are have a lot more credibility than their counterparts uh, in the early 1970s or the or the 1970s. So. Um, uh, uh, we'll be able, we may be able to disinflate uh, more easily. Um, now, this is going to, as you know from the Sargent literature, this is, would require a credible switch from the wartime pandemic policy, which had lots of fiscal spending and lots of easy monetary policy, to a post pandemic. Uh, uh, less fiscal spending and less accommodative monetary policy. So you'd have to make that regime switch in order to get this disinflation to occur. So I'm going to argue that we can do that. <laughs> there's, a, there's a little delay, so you never know what's happening. Here. I didn't want to tell you put us in that. <laughs> okay. Let's look at some uh, Phillips curve numbers here if we can. Say hello. There we go. All right, so uh, on the Phillips curve, uh, I think a lot of people that are thinking that the disinflation will be costly are just going straight off Phillips curve estimates. Here are some of them. Stock and Watson, practically zero slope in the Phillips curve. Uh, Amy Nakamura, uh, slope of minus one third. But if you're just gonna use this mechanism, uh, you're gonna have to have a ton of unemployment in order to get inflation down. So if that's what, you, what you're thinking about, it would take uh, be very hard to get back to 2% inflation. But that calculation doesn't say anything about uh, the role of expectations. Um, the new Keynesian Phillips curve has two arguments. Uh, one is an output gap term and one is an inflation uh, term, uh, gap term. And uh, that would suggest, this is the anti-warning slide. That would suggest a very close relationship between uh, expected inflation and actual inflation outcomes. And that you need in this environment, I'm going to argue, uh, contrary to uh, Yvonne yesterday, I'm going to argue that this actually seems to hold in broad terms and so that uh, we can do this. So this is my killer chart for Yvonne. I've already sent it to him. So it's, uh, so, uh I like this chart, and I've been. I'd like to hear what your reaction is to it. Uh, and it seems like it's just two lines on a graph to you, but to me, it has deep meaning. Uh, so uh, the one line is core PC inflation, which is what the Fed likes to look at. When you're looking at real data, you have to you have to filter out a little bit. It's measured from one year ago, so it's a little bit smooth. And then even inflation rate that you'd calculate off the tips market. So I like break evens because they react to data uh, immediately and they're good from, from my point of view in interpreting events in financial markets. And the correlation there from 2002 to you know 2019 is super high. And I would, these things wouldn't have to be so closely related. But if you bought into the if you bought into the new Keynesian model and all the assumptions that are behind it or related models, they're going to tell you that these two things should be highly correlated as part of the general equilibrium with a credible monetary authority. So that seems to be occurring here. And then you get over on the right hand side and you get something happens and uh, core inflation goes way up and inflation expectations don't go up nearly as quickly. So um, to me, this is a. Uh, a uh, vindication of uh, the idea that uh, actual inflation should be re related to an expectation out there in the future. And I like to use five years because the five year is some notion of how far, you know, when can the policymaker have actual impact? You probably can't do anything over the next year 
but you probably can do something over the next five years. So this is some, something about the credibility of the policy authority. Fernando? From now. Yes. Right. The other one, so the left-hand side of the Phillips curve is backward looking. The right-hand side is the expectation. So there was this literature uh, from Sargent that said it was the credibility of future monetary fiscal policy that uh, that would cause the uh, substantial adjustment in inflation expectations today and hence in actual inflation today. Uh, and in particular, in the ends of four big inflations, he said, well, there were these hyperinflations in the defeated countries in Europe after World War I. They basically ended on a day when a credible regime change was made uh, that promised less uh, fiscal excess and uh, orthodox monetary policy and the inflation ended immediately without any output costs. So this was his uh, evidence. But these historical episodes are not just about what does the central bank do? These are monetary fiscal adjustment schemes and their regime changes. So Goodfriend and King stressed the idea that uh, Volcker had to take actions to earn credibility. And Sargent uh, has talked about this just a few months ago, or last year, I guess, uh, saying that there could be, if you have rational expectations, you can't really talk about earning credibility. <coughs> so you have to back off rational expectations a little bit and talk about how the policymaker could be earning credibility. There are some papers that do that. And those, those papers would associate the costliness of the disinflation with, with how much credibility does the central bank have to earn. So where are we today? We have considerable credibility today compared to where we were in the 1970s. And by this, I mean, not just personalities involved and stuff, I would say institutionally, you have more political support for the, let's say the ECB or the Fed. You have more, uh, you have an inflation targeting regime uh, that has more credibility. You have a track record of achieving 2% for quite a while. So you have a lot more credibility in those senses. But it's not just the monetary guys. It's not just the credibility of the central bank. It's the monetary fiscal adjustment that has to occur. So let's think of COVID-19 as a global war, a social upheaval. And what happens in a social upheaval is that the government starts spending a lot of money without asking too many questions about future taxes. And they lean on the monetary authority to support the war effort. <coughs> so now uh, Giancarlo talked yesterday about, well, you're taking risk, you're gambling. So there was a sense of we want to do more than it may be necessary to contain the, uh, what might happen from the pandemic. Um, and you're kind of risking a high inflation regime. We actually got that high inflation starting in 2021. So what do you do now? Now you got you took some risk because of the social upheaval. Now you got some inflation. How do you get back? You have to have a regime shift back to the pre-pandemic uh, policy. So is that happening? I think on fiscal policy, it is happening. We have a divided Congress now. It's unlikely to spend at the same level that it spent during the uh, pandemic. And you have a Fed that's getting very serious about fighting inflation, raised uh, policy rates uh, substantially, back off on the balance sheet expansion. So you could interpret that as a regime switch back to the pre-pandemic monetary fiscal mix. Do financial markets believe it? <clears throat> I have another killer chart for you. Two killer charts in one presentation. Can you believe it? So uh, they do, and here's the killer chart. So um, this is uh, swaps-based inflation expectations at two-year, five-year, and five-year five year forward. In uh, 
the be in the first quarter of 2021, if we were sitting here then, there wouldn't have been any inflation in the U.S. and no one was talking really very much about inflation in the U.S. So markets had low expectations for inflation. Something a little above two is considered consistent with the 2% inflation target because these are CPI based as opposed to PCE based and also because of inflation risk premium and other factors. So that Part, the circle part on the left is actually very consistent with continued 2% inflation. Then in the middle, credibility started to erode. That's how I read these things. Credibility started to erode. It wasn't at all clear that the, uh, the Fed was going to act enough, especially in 2022. We hadn't, uh, that, uh, one year ago, we hadn't actually done anything and inflation was continuing to go up. But uh, now we're uh, after all these 75 basis point increases and everything, market expectations are back down. So I think it's working so far, uh, but uh, uh, we're not back to 2% yet. So, so that's my story. Uh, uh, we have high inflation today. The Boker disinflation was costly, but not credible. So you that's not really Jefferson the one to look in the at. That disinflation story is not the one to Fed look speaker at going to, on right now. to try to assess what's going to happen today. Um, there was a separate literature on costless disinflation or soft landings. You could tell a story around this as long as you think of the pandemic as some kind of global war or social upheaval. And it looks like uh, we're switching back to the pre-pandemic uh, policy. So I'll stop there. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me. I think they might do questions, but I mean, borderline could have been an event. It wasn't. I think they're going to ask him questions. Literally, everything's about bank back to 2% of inflation. He said soft landing a lot of times. Fed Williams or Fed Jefferson said that the Fed can't wait for the supply side to work itself out. Mm. You got 100% on that daily. Wow. Again, that's already a big move here so far. And then we are near that. I don't know if they're going to ask him questions, but we are now above the high candle. You hit a new high from the first 10 minutes, and now you're almost at the opening candle. The yen hasn't played along, and neither have the bonds. That's the, uh, that's the only thing that sucks about this right now. Thank you, Ijaimo, for all you've given me oh. and all of us and, and economics as a whole. Oh, I had a mute. Um, so on the topic of coming back uh, to 2%, I'll, I'll make three points. Um, first, there are many striking similarities in the inflation picture across many countries and, and jurisdictions, but there are also important differences that matter for the appropriate policy response. Second, with elevated inflationary pressures last year, many central banks have tightened policy very sharply. This has been a massive global tightening. Uh, but third, at least for the UK, the shape of the inflationary shock stemming largely from an increase in energy prices, along with the lags with which monetary policy transmits to the economy, the, uh, this means that the most likely scenario now for the UK is actually undershooting the target in the medium term. Um, while the US, the UK, and the Euro area have all seen um, inflation well above their targets last year, the underlying drivers of that inflation differ. In the UK and the Euro area, the main driver of above target inflation has been the extraordinary increase in energy prices. In the UK instead, stronger domestic demand has played a bigger role in driving inflationary pressures. And one way to see this is to look at the evolution of the terms of trade, which measures the prices of goods and services that the country exports relative to those it imports. And as you can see in the chart, in uh, uh, over 2021 and 2022, the um, uh, terms of trade in the U.S. improved dramatically relative to the euro area and the U.K. 
What the fuck is your question? And this has been caused mainly by <laughs> energy prices. Hold on. Uh, and this, the fact that the US. I don't know. Is this questions or a, no? A large increase or as large an increase in, in energy costs compared to uh, the euro area and, and the UK. And also, of course. Yeah, I don't think this is a question. The, the US no, yeah. It's a net exporter of energy and other commodities, unlike the UK or the euro area. Yeah. Okay. Another way to see it. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. No, that's not a question. It wasn't a question. I thought it was a question. I was getting very interested in that there for a sec. I was like, wait a minute. Is this let her cook? <laughs> no, it's the second presentation. Yeah. Bank of England's Silvana Tenreo speaks on panel event. Mm, let's see. Mm, and shout out to all oh, that came down. You had that daily there. That was about it. That was a nice run. That was a very nice run off of Bullard, surprisingly. And even then, you were three points away from the 200-day. And then now you are at 39.72 to 39.67. Uh, Boeing was all over the place. The bonds are coming down, though. It's weird. Bonds and yen correlation is very, very big. Zim has just been holding up. Square even came back up here. I think Tesla got a little bit of activity. Uh, even NVIDIA. A lot of things went towards their highs if they weren't just totally getting clobbered. ECB Visco have to be careful on rate hikes. Again, Fed uh, Jefferson is speaking too, I believe still. I'm not too sure, but that is currently going on. The daily's good. It's up to $0.13 cents from $0.09. Cents. It was literally just at 100% at the high. So that little drop there brought it down. We're closing flat. Let's see. Greyhound owner Flix is said to weigh IPO as soon as this year. Where are we? You're above 3960. This the crazy part is it's like if we don't hold this level, I mean, your next level is uh 30 points higher. So I think we're really about to either drop 20 points minimum uh or at least 17 points minimum or I guess 7 points, then what am I saying? And then you have 30 points of upside. So it's a very interesting risk to reward from here, but then we were bonds, a lot a lot of other things aren't playing along, and then we were just three points away from the 200-day average. So technically, you did not test it, uh, and you just kind of did your thing, 21, you know? What a day. Welcome Fridays, though. Remember, our Fridays lately have been a lot of back and forth. I think Theta is going to kill the daily. It might. I only went with one, though. I mean, it was just kind of the, the logic there. If it goes crazy, we've seen what it is. Uh, I think there's a, a lot of swing potential, but I think that one will be interesting to hold. We've seen a lot of crazy shit so far. Chad, miss you, baby. Really miss you too, man. How you living? You living good? Hey, man, do your thing, 20 pounds. No? Okay. No, sorry. I tried. I tried. I tried my best. Green, green, green. Okay. So you definitely don't have any puts today. That's good to hear. That's good. We're going to find out, you know, I still I think next week is going to be uh, chill comparatively, but we will find out. And we've already every single data set been tweaking people out. And what's the uh, what's it called that? What the what are the Fed futures on? Fed futures are back to thirty nine twenty nine when we were originally at thirty nine at one point throughout the day today. Bullard didn't Bullard pretty much said credible disinflation. And the Fed has credibility, so inflation can come down without uh, shocking the market or having a high cost for said uh, disinflation. And I think that's debatable. I don't know. I don't know. He's like, you guys believe us this time, so we could do whatever we want. And we're like, I don't know, sir. I don't know. It's kind of weird. I think we just have the Internet. So I think he confused credibility with communication via the internet. And I think that would be the only other thing I could say to that. Otherwise, it seemed it was definitely a bullish tilt by Bullard. You know, Bullard could have came in and totally, uh, you know, smacked you around, but he didn't. So take that with a grain of salt. And the Fed. Origin on my upside. Origin. 
Origin, 5% of Origin. Wow, big candle today. They love it. Mm. And he was talking cap. Uh, I don't know. I think Bullard is... Bullard comes in at the right time and he plays like a weird position of, of shifting the sales when he wants to. Because, dude, I'm telling you, in the last six months, you've heard the craziest comments out of Bullard. He comes out of nowhere with, like, the worst shit. And then also, too, he'll just come out and then, like, you think it's like it was like growing up as a kid when you thought your mom was going to beat you. And then she gives you, like, a candy bar. And you're like, wait a minute. You know, so he has a very, uh, he's a very interesting individual is the best way to say it. Landlord selling his house and moving to St. Mary's, Idaho. So I'm moving to Oakland. Ask him if he wants to sell the house to you. Let's buy it. Square. I know LMT. I, again, the bonds and dollar are the weird part. Meta. They had the Lalama news. That was earlier, but it kind of popped since then. Came back down with the market. And now it seems like it's going up with everything else. He would, but can't afford the one million house. Ask him to give you a deal on it, and I'll give you a loan for it. Allah, make a real estate deal, or you wholesale it to me. Look at that, good deals everywhere. You have somebody want to sell a house, you have opportunity, you make money, Habibi. Oh, dude, bonds again on the low. Oh, where is? I want to buy the Google Dip. I've just been patient here. Eighty-nine dollars flat, but a lot of things didn't move with uh, with all of this. That's actually what's kind of interesting here. I mean, Google is right back to where we started the year. Eighty-eight bucks. Twenty years at four. I mean, the ten years about to go to four. And then the uh, two years about to go to 5% or something like that, which is kind of crazy to think about. Uh, Google might go in the long term. I mean, if it goes low enough, it's one I like, and they still have a lot of premium, but I'm definitely not opposed to it. And then depending on to where Amazon is. Oh, yeah, ETH did fall. And Ethereum definitely didn't get the same move now. Now Bitcoin and the Nasdaq are outpacing comparatively. Damn, I have to close out the ETH today though. They're scamming. Damn, so the ETH contracts even expire today. And then it's going to dump by the time I have to reload. <laughs> It's good though, we'll take it. ZM AI blog with new products. Zoom AI. It's not moving yet. That'd be good. Zoom AI. Everybody have AI now. Google L and Google, one is economic rights and one is just like voting rights or voting plus economic. Are those SPY 400s going to hit? Uh, I mean, <laughs> I wouldn't like, I wouldn't place, uh, like I wouldn't put everything on it. I think anything is possible, but to give you an idea, my relative risk on that play is about $9. I think about the same price as a number one from Chick-fil-A uh, or a number two. I don't think you could afford the Chick-fil-A Chick Deluxe with $9. So you'd have to get the one without lettuce uh, and tomatoes. But you could get just, you know, bun, chicken, pickle, pickle, bun, if you're familiar. 
You know, that's how it is. It goes bun, chicken, pickle, pickle, bun. I don't, I don't not, I'm really into Chick-fil-A if you haven't noticed. I know a lot about it. Josh hates you? Why? That's a weird thought to have. Like you woke up, your first message in the chat is like, Josh hates me. It's okay, man. Are you are you is that, are you my girlfriend? <laughs> are you trying to get attention right now? Hold on. What do you what do you what are you like, do you do you still love me? Josh, would you love me if I didn't have a long term? Would you love me if I didn't have a long term, but then I didn't have any fingernails? Would you love me if my fingernails were my toenails and then my fingernails were on my toes? It worked. It always works. I mean, what do you mean? That's that's it. Mm. Would you love me if I was an HDMI cable? <laughs> dude, I've sad dude, I've honestly I've went down this rabbit hole. I've had it before. Happens when you only respond to someone giving you lip. You must have not been here all day. We've had a lot of discussions. We've talked about losses. We've talked about wins. Somebody brought up fucking floated rate notes. Uh, we were saying a lot of shout outs to Jake from State Farm. We had some Edgar. We went over the data. So that's it, man. You could call. I'm just looking out for you, man. I don't know. You know, trying to make sure you're good. But that's, you woke up right now, huh? It's okay. It's bright and early. We have a long day. We still it's still early. It's still only twelve o'clock Eastern. That's nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, nine o'clock. Only third mi thirty minutes past. My goodness. Mm -mm. Thanks for answering. I got you, man. The Lord is watching you. You're being watched. Mm hmm. That's good. Thought I'd hit you with that. Make you think a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what the fuck, man? Why'd you just tell me that? That's what my mom would tell me every day. So, it's good. It keeps you on your toes. You don't know if you did something wrong or not. You don't know if I know you did something wrong or not. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Okay, Britain did not like that one. He said, whoa, now. Okay, relax, man. You're forgiven. How many people try to get you to play J-Nug? Yeah. J Nug's been very popular. Like even uh back in like twenty twelve, twenty fifteen. Uh those J Nug G L D plays very, very big. Very, very big. AT T and Walgreens. I don't like AT T anymore. I have it, but I haven't added to it in years. I mean, they've lowered the dividend after the spin off. But I don't know. I would rather go with Walgreens and even then I think Walgreens has some risk, but uh, very good price right now, and it should be stable. But I don't know. I have just no AT and T, in my opinion. And they're coming down here, Chattadonia. Man, my daily is back to break even, bro. I was up a hundred percent for about a minute and thirty seconds, and now they took away my money, man. Yeah, I like Mo too. Mo, I think it could still go down, and like I just want the big risk or the big gain on it, but or the big yield. But the, it's crazy that it, Mo still pays like eight percent right now. Did you know pickleball is the fastest growing sport in America? Hey man, Is my cabin rented? Uh, I don't know. I think it is. Oh, I think, no, I even had the, I feel bad. The power went out yesterday and it's snowing up there. So unless you down to stay in a powerless cabin, I don't know how good of jackets you own, but I could give you a discount. If that's what you'd be interested again. Interested again, interested in.
We're snowed in, running springs. I thought zero day options was the fastest growing sport in America. Yo, my man's has a point. Yo, low key, my man's has a point. Uh huh. Mm. I have never sold anybody a house seller financed, uh, but I've purchased a house with seller financing. So I've never given anybody a seller financing deal. Zero day athletes. Only fans is still growing. Yes, man. Loneliness in America is on the rise. You know that I didn't. <laughs> you know, I didn't realize it. I thought only fans was just to like look at girls or I guess guys do it, too. But like people do it to like talk to people like it's just like, bro, it's just, like straight up. It's just like a, a weird, perverted therapy. <laughs> it's just like, You could talk to me, too, Chad, if you want. I didn't know that's what it was. I straight up just thought I was like, I don't get some of y'all, man. Like, you can find pictures of people all day. Like, there's beautiful people everywhere. But, like, no. Like, it's straight up, like, to, like, it's just, like, the main thing people do is to, like, talk to people. And now, obviously, you're not going to tell your therapist, what are you wearing right now? <laughs> but it's still, like, I didn't, I didn't think about it. Like, I was, no, I, I finally realized that. It was actually a wicked. It's wicked to think about. It's not Miss Cleo. They ain't guaranteeing you a, the future. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, I just, I make, again, loneliness is on the rise, man. So there you go. My brother's girlfriend is an OnlyFans ghostwriter. Man, there's like 10 Chads in here who are like, you guys are like 15 different chicks. You guys are savages. You know that. Be careful, though. Modern day pimps, you better watch out. Uh, I only say that after uh, rereading Dante's Inferno. <laughs> you know that the pimps and panderers, bro. Apparently, there's a special place in hell. That's that's according to the divine comedy Dante's Inferno. So don't get. I'm not. I'm just the messenger, dog. Don't get mad at me. Don't get mad to me. Mm -mm. It's called e whoring. Oh, I thought that's what it was when I asked you for a like. Well, that's good to know for my own personal confidence. So like the video if you haven't had the opportunity. Uh, we'd love for you to like the video and share it. Since now I could say that shamelessly without being designated as something else. That's beautiful. Beautiful. Like the video. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Soliciting likes. Yeah, I got you. Intel, no, they cut the dividend, man. It makes me sad. I, because I was considering Intel, and like, I mean, the only thing you got going for Intel is that it's name brand and it's technology. But I mean, at that point, I'll just wait till AMD comes down. Or I like 3M. That's it. Until 3M, if they cut their dividend, then we gone. They're not the same company anymore. And just in I'm low key, bro, Intel just sucks. Like, it's actually because it's why I'm telling you, I wish some of you may have been around back in the day, like even before like some of the YouTube streams and stuff. But like, dude, AMD used to be ghetto. <laughs> like AMD used to be whack. Like it used to be like Intel used to be like PC superior, bro. Like, it was just like, boom, like, why the, f like, in the early days of streaming, like, you couldn't even stream on AMD. Like, you needed an i7 back in the day, and, like, otherwise, like, AMD it was just shit. Like, AMD used to be dog shit, and now it's just, like, as a pure product, not looking at the company, not looking at the investment returns, you know, no, 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 just, like, straight looking at the product itself, AMD processors are superior. Like, even now, I have both. I have two different computers. I bounce between them, but, like, my AMD is just a fucking machine. 
and my Intel one, even right out the box, brand new, is just like, it's a piece of shit. <laughs> it's like, it's straight up like, it's actually, it actually sucks, man. It actually sucks. Very sad. Co only fans? Nah. I don't know. I've talked about, about doing it in a, I would, I would do one to flex, but I, I found my next venture. If I'm ever going to fall off and fall off hard, do you know what I'm going to become? I'm going to become that D lucky guy who just fucking has people pay him to go and gamble with him. That's it. I've already figured it out. That's it. I have to fall off really, really hard. We're talking like real estate crash, like every single tech stock in the world crashes. And then like I sell out at like the awful time and then I YOLO it. You know what I'm saying? It's like I have to like really, really like, but that's, I I, I saw one the other, I, was, I read it. Someone was like trying to expose him. And then I was like, all he does is like people just pay him to go and vibe with him and <laughs> gamble. Like, so that's it. Like, honestly, that would be me just like, maybe, I don't know. We, you know, God willing, I don't ever have to do that. But, you know, 20 years down the road, never know. But I'm, that's, I'm, that, that's my path. I'm definitely, I say, fuck it. I'll just jump off and, and just go straight up. Like, you guys want to gamble? Oh, CE. CE, Cleanse Core. I think that's a sign to repent. Or no, that's Sealance Corp. Sealanese. I thought it said cleanse. Uh, they got a price target upgrade in the morning. Option signals rise three since February, and that's it. You got an i9 processor over AMD. Yeah, I have I have a decked out i9 processor on my other computer, and then I also have an AMD Threadripper that's like two or three years old, and my AMD Threadripper outperforms it hands down, and they're like they're the same price, and even the i9 is newer, and it's just a shit shitty, comparatively. UK considering new tax on vaping. I have the latest i I think I have like a i9 12.9 K or whatever, like it's decked out. It's a really really nice one. But it's not a, and then I have crazy graphics cards on both of them. It's just like, they're both solid ass computers, but the i9 just glitches, it just sucks. It's just, I don't know. I feel it. I don't know how to describe it. It's like, you could feel it. Like I get way more lag. I get way more like latency on stuff. And it's just like, it just doesn't like, like this is smooth. Like right now I'm on the Threadripper and it's just so much smoother. I like the only issue I had with the Threadripper was when my NVIDIA was tripping out with Java and Thinkorswim. But, like, it just sucks, comparatively. But, no, nah, my Threadripper is old, too. Like, three years old now. It was top of the line when I got it. I think they make bigger ones now. But it's just like, yeah, it's there. Somebody, I like, I love Intel. I mean, that's why, like, I used to only rock. I didn't. I felt dirty going to AMD. <laughs> I felt I've been Intel my whole life and then I tried it and then like that's it. And then once I got the Threadripper just it blew my mind. And I've never I literally even then I'm surprised even as a PC, I've barely had any any uh issues with it. You need to disable efficient cores. Maybe, but I don't like changing shit. Like that's why I'm saying just like straight up out the box, the Intel uh, the AMD just you don't need to do anything and it and it kills it. All right, back at VWAP, and then nothing on CE. I just printed the high ticker and then chilled. Niv <laughs> Niv Bitcoin, Bernard Corn. Mm. You're the man, God bless you. Sixteen oh one. Morningstar drops the most since 2009. Oh, Kalens? No, 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 no. I'm tripping. Oh, it was old. I thought it was their earnings. Evercore creates a new promotion program for junior staff. G7 leaders call on third punch third party countries to stop backing Russia. 
G7 leaders say nuclear's, uh, Russia's nuclear rhetoric is unacceptable. I'm watching from a Pentium G456 with a RX 570 GPU. Hell yeah, bro. Honestly, though, as long as if you're just watching videos, it's like if you're not creating content or running like, like straight up, I'm running like 15 different things right now, streaming on two platforms. I have TD two instances of Thinkorswim and then E-Trade Pro up with other option news scanners and then any web browsers and all of that. But it's like if basic computing, like, dude, nowadays, I mean, I still have old MacBooks that have done a lot and I, they still work. gonna drop big we can but it won't even mean anything because now i mean we're not that that little bounce was pretty nice because even if you get you're at 3960 so it's either going to bounce off of here or it is going to flush from here and then now as we test the 200 day it'll take a lot more pressure so now instead of flushing from here at 3960 if there was or 39 uh, 43 if there was selling pressure that would have been bad but now it's like you're going to sell 20 points before hitting the lows before even testing it. With GPU, I have NVIDIA on both of them. The one with the Intel has like a 380 Ti uh, or like the crazy one. Like I should be mining Ethereum with it, but I don't. And then this other one I'm using now, I have two like 280s or something like that. I don't even know, honestly. I forgot it. This PC. Oh no, how do you? Uh, it doesn't say, no, I have Threadripper, 3970, 32 core processor, 64 gigabytes of RAM. Doesn't say my graphics cards. Oh, yeah, you can't even mine Ethereum. I think you can mine ETC. AMD, I would consider it at, like, 40 bucks. <laughs> it's already ran up a lot. I mean, that's I'm sad because... Like my person, I would have invested in it if I bought an AMD sooner, but back then it sucked. Was that an earthquake? You felt that? Honestly, I thought it was just somebody just tripping outside. You felt that too? I felt the I felt something mini, but I don't know if it was. I don't know. Like I I could have farted, like low key though. You know what I'm saying? Like or like I don't know, but I felt something. No, that was like five minutes ago. I did feel the ground move. It doesn't show up. Oh, yeah. Wait. It was like 59 miles from Mexico. It was a 2.6, though. I don't think we're supposed to feel that. Yeah, I thought it was like wind or I don't know what I think it is. I'm scared of earthquakes, so I try to ignore them. Great strategy. If we both felt it, it has to be something. 
What time is it there? Check your Rolex. I mean, I'm on a computer right now. Uh, honestly, you could just look at the time on the computer. Because I'm not going to lie to you, bro. I'm really bad at reading a normal clock. Like, I know how to read it, but, like, don't underestimate how difficult it is to, like, you know. Yeah, I don't want to talk about it. Boeing, they, the FAA halted the deliveries of their Dreamliners. Yeah, I'm not good at analog. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I mean, who is good at analog? You know what I'm saying? Did you like the video? I did. I made sure I did. Okay, little cheek lay. Bro, how did we go from like six Friday squeezes in a row? Or no, it was like five Friday squeezes and then the last three Fridays have just been so boring. It's not even, like I'm excited and I hope you are too, but like don't underestimate every single Friday has been a cuck for the last like every Friday. Look at every other Friday, bro. This is when you shoot up just to end bare at the same candle. You gap down just to end barely right at the last candle of the day before. You gap down just to go all the way back up to the top end of the case. I've done this all the time. Volume's high, too. We need some action here. Volume's really high. 50 million. Uh, and it's what, 12 o'clock? That by 9.30? We got a lot of time. Not even 10 o'clock yet. Fifth, this is actually going to be a pretty big volume day. And now now the market looks exactly like the bonds. That gap's a little bigger. But now you're right here. Then I think next week we go green. Maybe open up a little. I don't know. I think we'll hold up. We'll find out. And bonds keep getting crushed. No, I don't know. It, it could be shaken off by the weekend, or I think as we get distracted with like minimal data sets, it'll allow people. Because again, as things get worse, it's harder to get worse. Just like when things got good, everything was so good, it was it was easy to start having things turn bad, right? It's like what will get even better. But I definitely like today was an unconvincing signal that inflation is coming back up. You know, simple as that. That's what a lot of people, it's hard. You it doesn't. You could be the biggest bull in the world out there. You cannot deny what that PCE showed today, uh, especially with the revisions, because now it's saying for the last two months now, you've actually had pickups back there where you're not getting the same, uh, you know, inflation just isn't falling through the floor anymore. So, that's I it could be shaken off, though, or I think we get distracted by it and, you know, we get everything else happening and then everybody just kind of chills out. And then because next week you're going to get a lot of data. One of them is going to be good considering the last three weeks have now been negative and then it's going to start to balance out. And then as people get prepared for the non farms by the end of the week after next. So but this is what I'm saying, like this is unequivocally bad. That's it. It just changed. Now we're going back to the days where it's just like here where inflation would come down and then pop up. I wish there was a better way. Maybe I should look at uh, a CPI chart because we've done this before in various instances, but it just it's changing the shape of the curve. Right. We either want it to we either we want it to go down or flatline. Last thing you want it to do is start looking back up because then it puts the market in on notice. But then again, vice versa all it takes is one data set in the reverse direction to cool people down germany france and britain float defense pact with ukraine hmm they want a uh, closer to nato 
Inflation is coming back. It's still lower, but what these last two months have shown now with all the other data, yeah, there's no room for argument anymore that it's it's definitely not falling as fast as you thought it was at the beginning of the month and at the beginning of the year. So when everyone's like, oh, dude, yeah, the rate hikes are affecting us. All oh, the inflation's coming down. Oh, yeah, everything's it's like, no, there's no way you can make that assumption now. Is it, has it came down somewhat? Yes. Has it dropped uh, a, a pretty sizable amount of material enough to actually notice it and get people rethinking? Yes. But is it dropping at this pace where, you know, we have nothing to worry about and that boom, you're going to have economic activity and inflation is running back down and now we're not going to have to deal with all that other stuff? Then no, that's that, that that's not true. I'm not bearish. I'm neutral. Um, what I've been saying is that and I, I think it's a fair assumption. I was saying it on the upside and right now here too. I don't think you're going to go down. I don't think without CPI or Fed, you're not going to touch anywhere below 380, maybe 375, but maybe. But I don't think we're going to come back here without the right data and vice versa. I don't think you're going to go above 418 without actually having one of those charts and a data set really showing a consistent plummeting of inflation. So it's just like, Yes, agnostic is how it is. But it's just like, that's what I was saying the whole way up because I was getting worried here. You know, I had those shorts. Uh, you know, we I bought some other shares and we were able to do good on certain things, but I was getting killed on the shorts. But there's a reason why I held it because after a couple of days, after being at the top, I was just saying you started little by little just chipping away at the moonshot. And it like, you know, because th the worry wasn't the loss here. The worry was if it fucking rocketed back up. And that's what Mother Effers wanted a couple of weeks ago. And it was just, it just seemed like, okay, we don't have reason to go higher until we confirm it with data. But then vice versa, you don't have reason to go back into the gulag and everybody, you know, claiming recession and death and destruction all imminently. You know what I'm saying? That just wasn't there. So it's kind of a balance. And that's kind of where I'm at with it. I'd say more or less agnostic. Uh, really willing to respond to the data, but I will say uh, I'm short-term neutral. In a mid to longer term, I am kind of leaning bearish, though, uh, just because of the yield curve. I, I'm just I'm not one to ignore that, but I am also one who is aware of the timing and and the the time lags between both rate policy and impact on markets and economies, and even how how delayed the yield curve really has been as a signal. Just, I have a video on it from last last year. I just, you know, the first time we inverted the yield curve was July, and I said, uh, or I like really, really stayed inverted, or I think it was around April, uh, but we said, you know, give it 12 to 18 months, and that's where you'll notice the effects of the yield curve. Hmm. Marriott International brings in Yiping Mao as president. I think someone on Marriott's retiring. Going back and forth. This is a Friday thing. It's kind of a Friday tradition at this point. <laughs> you get one more. If next Friday's like this, it'll be a month of Fridays that played out like this. So, you know, you might have to get used to it. CPI. Yeah, even the year-over-year -year chart, you don't really get to see it as much. But, like, this is what I mean with, like, this is the problem with today's data. And what it shows is, like, because we've only seen it minor. We haven't got to see it on this long enough of a time scale, sadly. But, like, take a look. It was just, like, here last March. Remember, inflation was coming up. And then it was March until what? No way. That was June until August. That's when we rallied, actually. 
So it's funny because you the market did the exact same thing. I can't make this shit up. You don't remember this? Remember the August rally? So look at it in June. I mean, it should make sense with what you're seeing here. So look at June, right? June, inflation hits a new high. At that time, inflation was uh, 5.4, which is, again, higher than where you are even at today. So this is 5.4. And simply, June till August, inflation came down right here to 5.2. But do you see how it's coming down? It's that little drop. So take a look at look at what June till August looks like. You were up, then you dropped, and then we rocketed back up. Why? Because people were looking at this saying, okay, inflation already ran up a lot. That is, that's definitely the peak. And now, okay, it's coming down. And then everybody spent the next two months reading and ignoring data, focusing on this idea that inflation was coming down. So that's kind of this. Remember, CPI, it still looks down for now. But based on the PCE, it's looking like it's about to go like this. So it's not going to hit a new high. But it's going to start to tick back up again because that's what happened. And once it starts ticking back up again, it's probably going to keep running. So that's where today's PCE data, that's what I'm saying is the real problem. Because look at the PCE, it's actually doing that already. So now you don't really get the same level of, uh, okay, yeah, inflation is dropping. We could be confident. You know, we could talk about scenarios like no landing and, and soft landing and, you know, things are going to be great. It's like, no, maybe, you know, damn it. Damn Powell is correct. They, they're just saying we don't want to celebrate too early. If it comes back up, we have a problem. And then there you go. Can inflation go back to nine? Uh, I don't think so, unless there is a, uh, what's it called? I don't think, uh, I don't think it could happen without an oil crisis, without another oil shock. That's the only way it could get above there. And then I'm assuming an oil shock would lead to a slowdown in China because you can't really have an oil shock without China getting clapped. I'm, I'm telling you, oil, I'm starting to get really like, it sucks because I know better than to try to play it right now, but it, that is like uh, that is just the real risk right now. Whether it's this year or even in the next two years, it's just like if anything is going to have an issue, it's going to be oil in the sense that we don't have so like we could produce, but you don't have reserves. You can't do what you did last time. That's it. If there's any other oil shock, you're not going to be able to dump reserves like you did last time. He did say too early. Well, not really. Celebrating too early would have been pausing or saying, okay, yeah, we are we think we did our job. We think inflation is going to come down, so let's pause. Three to four months. I just It's going to be tough to put a time frame on it. It's just the risk is real. That's all. It's like a building... It's like a it's a building with a shaky foundation. I don't know if an earthquake will hit soon, but if it does, that building is falling. That's how oil is right now in, ter in terms of prices running up and, and other factors or, again, having a global oil shock comparable to 2022. And that wouldn't be too off to say because we have seen that happen uh, even throughout like 2008, 2010. I think oil would uh, oil, another oil shock would be a black swan. And I mean, here's the simple factor of it. It's like I'm talking about how we, we would respond, but the reality is what? If oil price goes back up, inflation goes back up. That's it. Headline inflation will make another run. And then we're going to go back to core 
and all of that, and everyone's going to argue that. But at the end of the day, your headline number is going to have a problem. And then I think even then, though, PCE would even react to that too. Well, we'll draw. I think it already has a little bit, but that that's the the way to combat it. But then again, that's the uh, that's the warning from the seventies. The seventies was plagued by, even though they had recessions and stagflation, they still had issues when it came down to oil due to both supply, and then just I mean you're gonna need it, and then we were very reliant upon it then though too. I don't know about next year. That's the only thing I think uh, I've learned and I know better now than to try to put a time frame on it. But it's just like that is a that's a potential iceberg out there. Doesn't mean we're going to hit it, though. Mm. More likely food shock. I'm not as worried about agriculture yet. I mean, but if the agriculture's patterns, I mean, chances are we could get another pop, but it's going to correlate with oil. And then uh, a lot of people have been planting, just like Sal told us back in the day uh, a year ago. It's true. They're planting 8 to 10% more wheat than they did last year, and then they planted even more. They had lower stocks because of the war, but then all right off the bat, prices go up, people plant that shit. You know, right away. it's It was big money. Very, very big money. And then even now, the interesting part is the gaps between you can make a lot. Not only can you get it subsidized uh, easily, you could also export it to other places for a very good, good, very good price. Another lockdown. I don't think you're ever going to get another lockdown anymore. Because I don't know if... Uh, I think people are starting to kind of even <laughs> ask why we did it to begin with but i that i would i would i'm putting oil shock way way higher up on that list of potential risks than uh you know locking down the whole entire world or economy again lots of war chat oh no not at all we've had way better days <laughs> just give me one china headline bro where we you haven't even had graham tell me about taiwan invading Somebody in the Twitch said something about it. I don't know. Yeah, they. It was Nodrick. It wasn't a. It wasn't Graham though. We haven't. Mhm. Mm Wait till bird flu jumps. Yeah, I mean, you guys are just going through COVID hangover. It was the same thing. It was like when SARS. And then bird flu and then mad cow in the early 2000s. So it was like right after, you know, it's every couple of years. But I don't, I, even then, I don't think people would respond with thinking a lockdown would be effective again. Yeah, swine flu. That's what it was. I mean, every couple of years after SARS and then everything else, people would freak out. You did have mad cow Brazil news this week, uh huh. Ebola lasted for a little bit. Ebola was scary. <laughs> I remember that in 2014. Remember West Nile? Yeah. I do. We've gone through a lot. That's why COVID was just the first time we were like, shut everything down. I mean, COVID was terrifying at the beginning. I can't. I can't. But I, I was walking around with a gas mask. Fuck out of here. I, will, I have no shame in that. <laughs> 
I was tripping out, man. I was tripping out. Fake alien invasion, fake... Dude, we're just going down the fucking rabbit hole today. I love it. How did we just get here, man? What did this start with? We went from, like, a genuine conversation on oil shocks, and now we ended up with fake Messiah, Blue Beam, Bank Hack, and then EMP. Yeah, that's just... Of course, I need, I need to, oh, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. There's no place like, man. All right, we did go downhill cook on that one. What if aliens bring disease now? Wow, this is just getting better and better. Wait, are you talking like E.T. aliens or did you just go to a Trump rally? Hold on. <laughs> yeah, watch out, man. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. So I don't know which one I'd agree with. Either way, I'm still kind of, okay, yeah, E.T. Mm-hmm. I'm folding laundry. That's good. I don't know. I can we oh Bullard says viewing price surge as temporary hurt of Fed credibility. That was a minute ago Bullard made a comment. I think Bullard's talking to reporters again. Hold on. But yeah, I say we just stick with oil shocks as a headwind and then everything else is a speculation and then we just leave it there. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Uh, Cuz I don't we just got into some crazy shit. Boyle could head lower. I think anything could happen. I think that's why I was saying it's hard to put a time frame on it from the stock market down to that. It's just like we have to – I don't know when we're going to learn it, man. And it's just like right now nobody knows anything. I still firmly believe it. And there's like – like this is a joke. A le from November – Till today, for us to be at the same spot and to spend a third of the time up, a third of the time, or a third of the time in the middle, a third of the time down, and then a third of the time up, and then just ending at the same place, like, you, like dude, everybody is tripping. That's it. And so it's like we can't, there's so many possibilities, and I think that's kind of what everybody's waiting for. And then the minute a possibility looks good, everybody jumps on it to the upside. And the minute a possibility looks bad, everybody is jumping on it to the downside. So I really just think it's coming down to uh, uh, it's just we, we're going to have to see. And I, I wouldn't rule out the possibility of anything. And that hopefully keeps you to protect yourself. You know, like I'm saying, I'm glad we didn't jump on any possibility. I'm glad we saved up our cash. I'm glad we didn't, you know, get caught up too much in a squeeze where we made sure we took our losses at the worst time. I'm glad the long term's ready to go for it. We bought we bought in when it was really cheap. We stacked up. We were patient. It's just like give yourself time and be ready, like I've been saying for uh I've been saying it since October. Have one foot in and one foot ready to dip out at the exit. That's it. And that's all. And then you're, you know, and be careful just because you see the crowd running towards the exit or running into the pool doesn't mean you jump in with them. You have to really make sure. But it's, you know, stay close to that exit, but also make sure you're not hanging by the door and can't get in on any of the action uh, because there's there's just a lot. Put your right foot in, you put your right foot out, then they shake it all about. You do the theta pokey, then the market scams you daily. That's what it's all about. Thank you, thank you. The herd mentality has V12 FOMO engine. Yes and no. It's just like, again, the only way to get tricked off bullshit is to believe in it. <laughs> like, that's all it comes down to. Like, for real. Like, it just, it's, it is definitely, uh, like, I think FOMO stops with education. You know, that's why I started this stream, and that's why I'm kind of sad uh, that to see how, like, I'm glad the impact we've had on market culture 
but then it's also wild to see where it's gone. But that stops with education. The more educated people get, the more experience they have in it. That foam, it doesn't, because who cares if a thousand people run into something? A million people, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, herds are still dangerous. Like, remember, it was in Korea, those people got trampled. Like, they're dangerous. You have to be careful for it. But it's like, it doesn't mean, you know, you really have to participate and, like, actually have conviction in it, in this, you know what I'm saying? And, and believe and jo- jump into the herd. You could watch a herd, but doesn't mean just because you're watching, you got to get in on it. CVT. That's a pop. Cvent event holding. And then watch out for any of these bull. You might get a random buller comment. CVT. Oh, they had a. They were on the high ticker, then just dropped. Blackstone something. They had an event the other day. They had a price target maintained. Real talk when the reason I was able to get my realtor license because of being here and getting motivated. Amen. And I hope you walk away with the long term. That's part of the education. That's part of like, seriously, I know we talked about dividends and we talked about this stuff lately a lot. You better save that 10%, but it's just like, that's the lesson I learned very early, but I still got to make my mistakes with it to the point where you will watch it. You're going to watch the market go up and down. You're going to see the best market, the worst market. And then you're going to look back one day and be like, wow, if I just bought one time, even even if I did the bare minimum and bought one time and held it, I would have been better off. That's that, that is the lesson of spinning wheels, which you will learn. And hopefully you've already learned it. Hopefully you see exactly what I'm talking about here. It's like you'll go back and look at it, and that's what's going to happen. It's just the, the hardest part is time. Getting rich is easy, but the time process of it is what makes it difficult. Depends on when you buy. No, it depends on your time frame. Again, uh, that's that's how I would look. Like if I looked at, if, even if I bought the high of 2008, I would have made a lot of money. If I bought the high of 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, even 2020. Right? That's why now we've had two years where it's been doing its thing, where now, and again, you're experiencing something you haven't seen in a while, Tigna Pop. Good call, Tegna, T-G-N-A. Are they involved in a buyout? Tegna, Tegna deal in March, subject to FCC. I think they're a buyout, right? So be careful on this one. Might be buyout related. The market, I don't know. I think it can go up, but I don't think it should. I mean, today today you earned it. Uh, you earned the big day because of uh, because of the PCE, but like I was expecting kind of a not much unless PCE was hot and it was. But even then, this is kind of a small reaction. It's technically half a percent. And what I mean by that is that we were down 1% even here. Right, or it was down like half a percent. So maybe this is like a one percent move on the day. But we'll find out. It's Friday, and then this would be the third weekly red in a row. How much money do you think is generational wealth? Uh, what do you mean? Like in the world? I maybe half of it. <laughs> I don't. There's a lot, a lot actually. But kind of difficult. But there's, I mean, a lot of the wealth. You could attribute to the Waltons and and the big banks and and some of the people who have really just the stat like that that controls a majority of it. Mm-hmm. 
You hear people say they want to make generational wealth for their family. Well, I think it's possible. I mean, you don't need uh, that much. I mean, if you really want to look at how much generational wealth truly exists, go look at the amount of trusts that are formed. That's it. Trust equals generational wealth. That's the way I view it. Like, that's that should be to the point you make enough money, you're able to leave a trust, and there you go. So, like, you could just set it up where you have a trust based on whether nobody could touch the money, it's kept out of out of a lot of things, and it's just set up there to be provided. You could set up dis disbursements. You could do a lot of things. CRM had a little candle there. Oh, Cvent rejects 3.9 Blackstone acquisition bid. Would you say that about Lehman? I mean, one company did fail, yeah. But again, if you bought every Dow Jones company at the height of 2008, you would have still doubled up your money. And it's been what? Like 15 years of dividends? Even off a couple percentage, you would have got an additional 30% maybe off of dividends alone. If you bought every 33 companies and then one of them failed and then destroyed the market... Again, we could play this game all day, bro. <laughs> the history is there. Not everyone held. Yes, that's why I'm telling you, you should probably set up investments. You get your diversification and always stay involved in the market. And what you'll realize is that every year you look back, every couple, even five, 10 years, you'll realize one of the best decisions you can make is owning equity and owning something and, and having a vast array of things to own. You know, if you're because then even then, even if you are the best trader in the world. And again, I'm not saying this to even knock trading again. This is just uh, I guess we're talking the hard headedness to to try to own assets for the rest of your life, which I understand. But it's coming down to the fact of you will only that's tying your wealth and income to your ability to work and do something. Whereas go look at all of the wealth generated in the United States. Most most wealth generated is off of owning things. It's off of assets. It's owning assets. So you could trade and that's another form of income. But you should be owning some level of assets. And so it's it's always great. And it's not going to like that's what you're going to realize just looking back. Otherwise, you will. I've I've seen it. I know there's at least a couple hundred people in here who have been trading the market for 20 years, 10 years and they did not own any stock. And you and they look back and they know, and you know exactly what I'm talking about because there were so many events where you could have bought every single name. You could have just bought five of them and you would have made a literal fortune uh, by just owning assets and having equity. So you don't have to, I, I mean, it, believe me, I'm, I'm aware of economic risk and things can happen and Hopefully, we're able to protect ourselves and benefit off of it, but it's just like I'm never afraid, especially if you're sub 40, 50 years old right now. I mean, maybe 50 you're getting close to retirement, but there, your your goal right now in life should be to own as many assets as you can. Like <laughs> that's it. That that is my goal right now. If you haven't if you haven't picked up on it. That's why I have long. I got long terms that I've made 10, 15, 17 years ago. I got long terms that I'll make for YouTube. I'll be buying stuff right now. I'm trying to buy as many houses as possible. Yeah, I'll sell a couple here and there. I'll do it, but I'm trying to own shit. Every time, I'll even a little bit of Bitcoin, a little Ethereum. That goes up in value. I'm going to take some off the table, buy a property. Then guess what? We'll buy. I want to own assets. That is the goal because I'm thinking about the time that Josh answers is 60 and you know, he's talking like this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that I own a bunch of shit. You know what, I mean? you know what I'm saying? And that's why the Chad, we're, we're going to be we're going to be a powerful Chad. Imagine all you fucking mother, you, you guys. Now you're all your hairlines are gone. <laughs> you lose your hair. But now all of us have been buying shit for the last. We're going to fucking own it all. That's how you do it, motherfucker. But that's it. Go trade. Do whatever you want. There's no problem with that. I don't. But that's why I'm saying your priority should always be to own. And if you're going to uh, believe me, live live in abundance, not fear. 
uh, in the sense that do not be fr afraid of the market going down to where you never own anything. The idea should be you should be smart enough and have the knowledge and ability to navigate any sort of environment and use those opportunities to acquire assets and making sure you are not acquiring assets that are going to put you at a disadvantage. But at the end of the day, what you'll learn is that all it takes is a couple of good assets acquired over X amount of time. And there you go. Before you know it, you'll be making a trust. Yeah, Cvent, they rejected an $8 bid from Blackstone. Flipping cars, houses, it takes effort, peace of mind of cash flow. Even if it's not like cash flow, even, dude, I'm telling you, like I've, I've done it myself. I know people, you get the right asset, watch. Your long term may go crazy enough. You could just sell portions of your equity and live off of that for years. Like that's what I'm saying. You could go go buy a one go buy a one house. Let's say you end up with two houses and then 10, 15 years later that one house generates a bunch of money, even asset value. You could sell that off and then you you see what I'm saying? But again, most likely what you'll realize is, oh, I could own it and now people will give me money. And you could even leverage it and do other things where you're and then once your cost basis is so low, that's it. It just that's that's how they do it. It's set up to it's set up for old people. That's why I'm saying it is. That's why you're like, oh, this is for old people. No, it's set up for old people. The idea is the people who buy and own so that when they do get older and they can't work, they will be able to actually live. Remember, the system of the United States is not designed for the fastest. This, the United States is designed for the slowest. That's why they call it minimum wage and not maximum wage. It's minimum. The minimum effort. It is so that you could have the most minimum thing ever and still be able to live, survive, and actually access society and life. So that means you could do a, a lot, a lot more. It is more inflated before. But you say this every 10, 20 years. But you will see. Trust me. Oh, Airbnb downgrade to hold by Batista. $138 price target. Mm. What time is that? It's pre market. I still have the squares. M increasing quarterly dividend. Wow. Good for them. Good for them. I'm just getting volume on that. Five three. 
make the money both ways always Look about the whole chain. Go away. Acquire check there. No, I'm looking at these. I'm looking at the Macy stuff. S and P five hundred. I like it. A good long term talk here. Great long term talk. I hope y'all feel me, man. Honestly, just don't be afraid. <laughs> you know that? That's the message. Don't be afraid, man. Don't be afraid. That's all we're trying to tell y'all. Damn, this chart looks hideous. I didn't ever do. Look how big this bounce is. <laughs> Who would have thought? This is actually a really big bounce. I remember when this was coming down, but. Dude, I'm telling you, it's a crazy, crazy. Like, that's it. You're going to get your ups and downs, bro. 1970s. And that's crazy to see the 70s. And then after we got inflation, this alone. And like, you're just by you've learned it in real estate. This is the S&P 500. If you miss, if you're not owning assets and you miss the run, what ends up happening? It does nothing for four years. And then within one year, it will instantly become out of reach. CRC. California. It's upgraded. Uh, it was an upgrade two minutes ago by Bank of America. You end up buying higher. You never buy it at all. And that's literally what it shows. Well, where is it? Like every single time. And then it'll go up and then people get worried. 2000s. And again, like even like we were talking earlier, HBO sues Paramount over South Park streaming rights. Oh, no. Then 2000, everybody thought it was going to die. Then 03, then 04. Like, look at this. It's the same thing over and over and over again. And these these are the areas, too, where people, like, pile in. Then there's a portion that will never get into it again. And then 2008, they pile in. Then a portion that will never do it again. And then now we're here, and then we'll wait till we get our drop. Maybe that's it. Maybe we come back up, probably a little lower. And then who knows? And then there it is. Good deal or no deal. Own assets. That is it. Own assets. Say it with me, Chad. Own assets. Uh, Putin, Erdogan discuss energy fertilizer grain deal. Am I trying to feed the FOMO? No. I don't think... Li we. I wish I could agree with what you're saying. But what have we done here for three, four years? We own the long term. No matter what market, you've seen us do this. We've talked about all of this stuff. I'm not trying to feed FOMO. I'm trying to say I encourage you to be wise, and I hope you do actually give your investments the attention they deserve, and you actually think about stuff, and you, you actually apply it there. But I'm saying that the main goal should be to acquire assets in the long term. And to be, you know, even though I could even be short-term uh, bearish or midterm doesn't change kind of the philosophy here where it's like you actually want to own stuff like that's all it comes down to own assets baby Her -earn. <coughs> amen amen where are we at right 394.52 On um, zero day options, does that count? No, it doesn't. It's not an asset. That's it. It's a contract. It's technically a piece of paper. That's why I'm like, it's kind of scary how many people don't realize, like, they genuinely don't own assets. That's what we need. Quality ones. Going down, down in the early around.
Yeah, I don't even think Boyle would be considered an asset. It's a derivative as well, unless you actually bought the commodity. See, that's the that's the, that's the weird part. Natural gas, oil are commodities, so you can't really buy barrels of oil and store them. You can, but I mean that's what some people do with gold. Thirty nine fifty. Looking at a new car, twenty sixteen Model S, thirty thousand, unlimited super. I don't think the supercharging transfers. Thirty nine forty nine. Gus Gonzalez. Look at Swole, baby. 39.49. All right, Chattadonia. How you want to do this? How do you want to do this, man? This is getting interesting because now back to the 39.49, man. You're really, really close to that 100 day or that 200 day. No more data today, no. I think you might get one more Fed speaker. I think Williams. Other than that, but then even Bullard was kind of weird. We ran up. This was the Bullard speech, actually. He didn't really say much. But I don't know if I could attribute that run to him. Oh, it follows the car, not the owner? That's not a bad deal. Less than 80,000 miles. I mean, it's good. I think the Model S that we have, it had, dude, that thing is beating the shit. Like, over, like, 130,000 miles on it. Like, you could drive those. Like, it's actually surprisingly reliable. I haven't had to change the battery or anything. The car I just it keeps getting crashed, but it still works. So, with free charging, man, there you go. If it, if it does transfer, it's great. Okay. Be be on the lookout here, though. You're back to the lows. I mean, remember, we spent about an hour and a half here from the open, and now we're right back there. So either Monster Bounce to cuck us back to 39.60, or maybe we get a chance to hit the hit that low. I don't know how electric cars value. It's like an iPhone. <laughs> Because, like, new updates, technologies, cameras, like, there's, I think mileage is part of it based on battery life, but I don't know. It's weird. And then supply. Like, Teslas are a lot cheaper than where they were just a couple years ago. So, I don't know if you remember, like, just two years ago, a year ago, year and a half, two Teslas were expensive. Bro, everybody and their mom was just lining up to buy a Tesla, and they were paying a pretty penny for it. I still do believe we'll go up next week, or I think next week is going to be a chill-out week more or less, i.e. the data doesn't move us as much, but I could be wrong, and if I am, that means uh, if I'm pretty much if I'm wrong about next week, I'm going to be a lot closer to break even on my NQ, but I'm kind of under the impression that the data next week will kind of calm us down as everybody still digests it, maybe we'll get something good, and then uh, that's it. And then next week after, the week after next, we'll turn into uh, non-farms. Yeah, we're about to be in March. I'm telling you, man, doesn't it? It usually is slow. Like, you guys remember, like, the beginning of the year, it's like January, February. 
This month, bro, or this year, we're, we're in March already, man. I don't like it. I think I'm getting older because I just don't even feel the time. It's running. Yeah, this year is flying by. Where did the time go? I just came in. Santa rally inbound. Before you know it. I think it's the effect of Powell. I think it's the Powell effect. And they got us all confused. By Powell making us wait and be data dependent. They found a way to slow down time or speed it up as we wait for the same thing. I don't know how to do it, man. I don't know how to explain it. Mm. Pfizer is 0.5 away. I wanted a little bit lower there, but someone called that out today. It does look uh Pfizer's getting juicy. Everything is, man. That's it. This is uh that's why we're going to find out cuz now you get to see how quickly prices could come down. We see kind of the beneficial nature of waiting with our long term. Remember, everybody was asking if we were at the bottom 5 points up from here. <laughs> 5 to 7 points higher. I think I don't know when we made the video I said we don't you didn't miss the bottom. I think we were around the same price. So, you know, at least you get to see what's possible on the upside. You also get to see for the downside, but you know, let's give it a little bit more time. I definitely think by March in the next Fed meeting here, it's only 3 weeks away. Uh we're really going to have a better idea of what's going to be a deal, if we're going to get better deals or if it makes sense to to start running it up and and keep going with what we've been doing. Everyone did think they missed the bottom. Well, listen, Habibi, for you, I give you special. You thought you missed bottom, huh? January 12th, you thought you missed bottom. January 11th, I have deal for you, Habibi. Special price. Same price as um, two months ago, a month and a half ago. Would you like? For you, special deal for you, Habibi. Same price. Same S&P. I give you Google, Google discount. You know Google? I give you the the glasses, the different color search engine. I give Google for you, for you, Habibi. Look, I give you the Google. I give it to you January price, December price, Habibi. Yes, I give to you. Look, you don't miss no bottom. You want bottom? I give you the bottom back. The bottom is now back here. Yalla. What do you wait for, huh? You This is what you, you uh, give it the FOMO. You are scared. I have a deal for you now. Huh? Come on. Yalla, you did not miss nothing, Habibi. It's the different color, the goggle. The glasses, they change the color. Color changing, Habibi, is very good. Isn't the bottom October, Habibi? I give you a good deal, now you want more? Huh, that's what you want? You want a more deal? I give you January price. Now you say give me October price. Habibi, I two weeks ago, I tell you two weeks ago, I say I give you January price. You say yalla. Now you tell me I want October. You are like a Jerome Powell. Did you go to school with a Jerome? You guys must have same teacher. Habibi, this makes no sense. You guys, uh, you know, October price, Habibi, why? That's a long time. You have to give me time for October price. I don't say impossible. But you need to give me time. Now, I, today, special deal. You act now, cash price. I give you January. January 10. The January 1. You take it. New Year. Happy New Year, Habibi. Yalla, what is your resolution? Is act now, act later. I give you... October may come. I don't know. I talk with supplier. I have shipping handling. Mm-hmm. Yes. We will talk. We will talk. No guarantee, though. No guarantee. Credit card, I charge 2% fee. They charge you visa scammer. I charge 2% fee. Cash price, I give to you now. Cash price, no tax. No tax. 
No taxes. No tax, no sales tax. You want? To kill you. I don't mean to kill you, Habibi. Don't say that. Don't tell anybody the Arab guy is killing you. It's not good here in this country. Please, don't say that about me. I nego it's not negotiation. It's a good deal. What is negotiation? Negoti I'm not trying to negotiate. I give you a price cheaper than a 30 day ago. This is a deal, not a negotiation. I tell you, I, just, I, tell, I, I barely make money on it. I tell you the price. I give to you the price I get. What do you want me to do? I barely, I'm not making even. I spent so much time talking to you. I probably lose money on this one. It's okay though. It's okay. I love this one. I'm telling you, it's one. It's not even. It's the price I get. It's the price I get. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. The sad part is somebody's trying to purchase right now. They're like, okay, Josh, how do I get this? Do I do I do I respond back to the fake Instagram DM? No, no, stop it. I see. So I hope not. Be like, I heard there's a deal, thirty day deal, something like that. You said you same price you paid or what? J and is good. They have a little bit of risk uh, with some of the stuff they have going on, but I mean, I'm definitely that's one of the, the names I like. So back to three nine five five, a little higher than there. So technically a new high off of that, but you got to really get past thirty nine sixty five. What a market! What a market! Vanguard bonds. It depends which ETF, but apparently word on the street is everyone's pumping bond ETFs all of a sudden, so I don't know. But shouldn't it be bad. Mm, that's a big pop. Where's our damn... That daily's clapped. Unless you want to buy them now. But I don't know. I think 397, 398. I think if we do get upside now, I mean, anything could happen, but we've burned a lot of time. It's already 1030, but I'd keep in mind the price of PCE and then the price of this drop. So like 397, 398 would be upside targets today. But I think you need to... uh I don't know. I just there's the timing is weird. It's already ten thirty and then obviously be on the lookout for the for the cuck. When President Carter dies, they're gonna close the markets. I don't know. I haven't looked into that. All I saw I saw Jimmy Carter a video of him like he flies commercial and he shakes everybody's hand. He seems like such a nice guy. Uh I don't know about the Carter administration. I mean again, but it's just like it seemed way more like I don't know. It just seems so wholesome. Seemed like a nice guy. They will 100%. Nice guy. Terrible president. <laughs> Are you talking about me? <laughs> and now listen up here. What I want to say is, uh, I love the stock market, the S and P 500, and uh, you know, I will attack anybody if they want to threaten our freedom. So, uh, my fault about any other uh, discrepancies. But it's a uh, it's a beautiful day outside. <laughs> now watch this swing. Thank you. <laughs> I love Bush. I love George Bush. George W. Bush was the greatest president. And not for why you think. <laughs> Single-handedly the stupidest person ever. And it was beautiful. It was beautiful. That's it. Nobody, and we didn't even fight back then, bro. It's so stupid. Comparatively, 
You know that Republicans liked him. Democrats liked him. He straight destroyed an economy, brought you in the war. Like I'm just like I'm telling you just like as awful as you could have thought and like do everything, everything. And then he got two presidencies, too. That's it. Like, yeah, bro. Highlights, bro. I'm telling you, like on like his highlight reel, if you went through George W. Bush's highlight reel, it's crazy. Now, obvi I'm, I'm, now, obviously, I'm waiting for someone to be like, you think George Bush doing all of this? And that, like, I know, yes, there was pain and suffering and, and all of that caused. Yes, we're aware of that. But now that it's been like 10, 20 years, I hope that like, you could, uh, you know, just, just look at it, though. And, and it's a great, you know, juxtaposition, even though this is not literary. But you could compare it to now and then and just how people would react. But dude was insane. I'm telling you, his highlight reel, bro, one of his top highlight reels is him dodging a shoe at a press conference. Y'all don't feel me on that. Y'all don't. That's a highlight reel. That makes him my Arab brother. Y'all don't feel me, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bro, dodging shoes. The guy was reading children's books during one of the worst t terrorist attacks, and he was just still, like, lost. And then he kept reading, and I don't even know if he could read. You have no idea, bro. You have no idea. Single-handedly just crashed everything. The price of gasoline was insane. And that we didn't even like they he, you had inflation without printing money, which was insane. Oh my gosh, bro. You have no idea. It was this very rare time in history where like it was the worst possible like actions you could have made, and everybody was was just so happy. <laughs> Everybody, it is just, it's actually weird. It's actually very, you didn't have no, I don't even think you had a protest. We were like, yo, we about to bomb the shit out the Middle East. And everyone was like, yeah, we should. Mm hmm. We should come together. Fuck yeah, I'm going to put an American flag outside of my house now. Yeah, we did that. They, every day, gas price went up. We didn't care. We bought Hummer H2s. And then we we're like, okay, maybe we'll get a Prius because now our real estate is worth 90% less. Fuck it. And, and, and again, people were a little bit more happy. You know, we had internet. You still had internet. Trust me. You did during that time, but it was just, it was different, man. <laughs> we were, it was still during the Spinner's era, borderline. Biden is Bush Jr.? No, he's not. He's not. I'm sorry. You could not like Biden. I, Biden just, it's different. I'm sorry. Just Biden is, uh, like, like, Biden wants to smoke. Like, that's the thing. Like, dude, George Bush was just, like, a friendly guy. <laughs> like, ain't no, like, George Bush wasn't even calling out anybody, bro. He had no political opponents. He had nobody to talk down to, nobody to talk about. He ain't even, like, <laughs> my fault. <laughs> he wouldn't even blame anything that happened, bro. Like, that's it. You think, when was the last time you heard George W. Bush say, well, because of Clinton, I had to, no, no, it's just different completely different you know biden is like you know he's he, i think he's a more formidable political person where i don't even think george bush knew he was the president <laughs> and you could argue the same thing about biden in many different ways but like shit man you know biden will play the role from time to time but <laughs> george bush was not even he wasn't even doing any politics bro he was just living his life destroying everybody else's it was uh, fantastic, actually. Not really. It was quite sad. A lot of pain and suffering. And that's our conclusion. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. He was awesome. As I think he was awesome as an individual. Because I would aspire to have that level of like, okay. <laughs> Bush worse than Nixon. Again, I, I'm talking about a different quality measure. Like, you got to realize Bush didn't try to do anything. He was just dumb. Like, Nixon was trying to get reelected. Nixon was, like, trying to, like you know, leave legacy, like, what is Bush, Bush didn't give, he didn't, he couldn't even spell legacy, he didn't even care, he's like, <laughs> I'm a legacy of Yale, <laughs> uh, go, go Utah, <laughs> what, I'm in Texas, uh, either way, 
uh, <laughs> my fault. It's good to be here. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we're going to take Al-Qaeda. And Al-Qaeda, I don't know where they're at right now, but uh, they're going to have a problem. And uh, we're going to stop this uh, terroristic terrorism. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've seen his painting. Like, Bush was just, like, stupid and unambitious, whereas all the— Oh, Fed Collins remains optimistic. Fed can achieve soft landing. Expect more rate hikes to hit sufficiently high level. Uh, Fed President Susan Collins comments in prepared remarks, says Fed holding rates for some perhaps extended time. Recent data reinforces my view that Fed has more work to do. Bearish. Bearish Collins. Bearish Collins. That's a Clifford, yeah. Bearish off of Fed Collins right there. Again, perhaps extended time, data reinforcing views, and sufficiently high level. I mean, even for that, I don't know how, if it'll shoot you down to the low, but definitely initial bearish read off of that. Is Collins a voting member? Oof. Boston Fed. She might, actually. All right, you're back down. That was nice. Well, that was a little theta burn. Got you right back up to 3960. Rejected. That's not pretty. We're doing better than that one day on 3917, but for the most part, 3960 has been stubborn. You broke it once, failed to get above it once, broke it the first time, dropped below it, failed to break it on the second time. It'll be interesting. And then again, Fed Collins, borderline bearish. Lynn is still going. Nobody knows what's happening with that. Hoping the George Bush talk would rally the market. We were getting close to that. You know, the conclusion is that, like, George Bush was just stupid and had nothing to prove. The problem is when you have stupid people with something to prove, that's the worst. So that's why George Bush gets a medal in my book. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> so again, and hopefully you could find the comedy in it instead of, you know, reminiscing on all the past horrors of American history. Thank you. Thank you. I'll be here for a couple more hours. Appreciate you. Yeah, bro. Stupid with something to prove is so scary. Are you kidding? <laughs> like, look at history. I'm telling you. That's it. That's cool. Nothing wrong. Like, I'm a dumbass, bro. I feel I'm stupid. I know I am. I told you. I don't got anything to prove. That's it. I ain't got no, nothing to prove. I'm chilling, bro. That's it. I ain't going to try to fix a bunch of damn problems I know I can't fix and be like, well, I'm going to fix it anyways so that they can know I can fix it. Nah, man. I'm going to take a nap. That's it. I'm going to take a nap. Fuck out of here. Y'all can figure that out. I'll wait for it, man. I'm chill. I definitely there has to be someone who could do math better than me. Shit. Mm-hmm. I need a George Bush highlight reel. I think he was faking how dumb he was. That's what I mean. He graduated. George Bush has a George Bush has way better credentials than I do. <laughs> he has better credentials than ninety nine percent of people in America. I'm telling you, he graduated from Yale. He had Yale Law School. I'm pretty sure he had a law degree. Like, George Bush, bro, had, like, like dude was, oof. He, uh, you know, he had the paperwork, bro. He had the paperwork. Well, I don't know, but, yeah, he just wasn't even, like, <laughs> he didn't care. Seeing yeah, it was an A A S U.
pretty even then. I don't. I don't even. I think he got good grades. I'm just saying. I think he. I'm telling you on paper, bro. Great candidate. Great candidate. It's like Judas in the disciples. You know that. So it's like if you looked at the resume for all twelve of Jesus's disciples, like Judas on paper was the best one. He was educated, had a business sense. He was ambitious. He had all the skills and the talents. And like for real, like, but then he ended up being the one out of 12 to damn betray Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Asshole. But, you know, the other ones, he was like, yo, you, can I use your boat, Peter? And then Peter's like, okay. Like, what? Like, Peter didn't even give a shit. And then Peter was like, I cuss a lot. Jesus like, it's all good, dog. Don't worry. We could work on that. And then Peter ended up even rejected him too, man. You know, the other guys were like, you ain't Jesus. He's like, I bet you were under that tree last week. He said, oh, shit, you are Jesus. Never mind, bro. Never. I'm telling you, all of them, they like, what was it, Paul? Paul Paul was technically not like a Jesus-appointed apostle, but like Paul was out there just killing people. Yeah, Paul was a damn persecutor. So it's kind of like on paper, George Bush was kind of like Judas. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. It's a wild. I'm, I'm reaching there, but. You know, it's good. I got to mix in some Bible history for some of y'all. Jeb would have been better than Bush. Yeah, but, I mean, I don't know. I think basic life logic, you don't trust somebody named Jeb. I don't know. I've never encountered a Jeb in real life. But if someone was like, yo, let me run the country, my name's Jeb. I'd be like, nah, my name is nah. Hell nah. I don't know about Jeb. What do you mean, Jeb? Mm -mm. What what the hell's a Jeb? No way. Mm hmm. My name's Jeb. Jeb as in, as in uh, Jabroni. No. Yeah, Jeb is sus. I'm sorry. I don't know if we have a Jeb in here. I really apologize for destroying your name. Because it's a very rare name. You are even rare in that, that percentage. I really, I'm really, i really thinking I could get away with this joke without a Jeb approaching me. Like I said, I've never encountered a Jeb in my life. So I hope, uh, I hope I don't run. Jebediah sounds a lot better. But if you just shortened it to Jeb, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, some people have names like that where you like you think their name is short for something. Like, <laughs> it's like, nah, it's just Jeb. I'm Jeb. Okay, Gurnor Singh. Get out of here. Oh, Jeb, what are you talking about? You could you could have at least... I'm waiting for the one Chad. It'll show up in 20 minutes. They're going to make their account and be like, My name's Jeb, Josh. Ha ha ha. I made the YouTube account. Great. I'm going to laugh for 0.2 seconds. Next question. Now I'm waiting for the next Jeb. Someone watch. You're going to see in the chat. My name is Jeb. Oh, really? Yeah, there you go. There, wow, that was so so creative. Man. How many Baraks have you met? You're talking to the wrong Arab, buddy. <laughs> I know a Barak, I know a Muhammad, I know a Abdul, Abdul, Abdul. I know a lot of different names, Habibi. What do you mean, Barak? Everybody know a Barak. You know a Barak, a Sudan, a Hussein, everything, Habibi. What do you mean? It's very normal. I have 20 cousins named Barak. Barak Hussein, Hussein al Barak, al Abdad, al Abdul, Abdul Abdul Mustafi. What do you mean, Habibi? Mm. Would I average down on my NQ? Not now, but I don't think I will. I don't think it's uh, optimal. I think I would have I would have went break even on it, but it wasn't worth the risk. I didn't want to try to push it. Oh, there it is. That was creative. Jeb Frizzall. That's a good one. That's a good one. I thought it was going to be so much troll. That was a good one. Jeb Frizzle. I like it. I like it. That was actually pretty good. That was, see, there you go. That did have a creative twist. That, see, that was the creative twist we were looking for right there. 
Oh, man. Yeah, we haven't seen a new frizzle in a while. That was a good one. That was a good one. That was a good one. <laughs> Global Atomics. Oh, it's Canadian. California faces rare blizzard in latest extreme weather. Snow shuts major highways and covers coastal mountains. Blackout spread as winds uh, down tree limbs and power lines. Dog, we about to get a blizzard in California? That's hype. Not really. With our luck, we're going to get an earthquake too. My damn it. But is that climate change? Or like, because I've clearly it's a difference, but is the world supposed to get hotter or colder? Is this one plus one or minus one for climate change? Chad, I'm going to consult with you guys on there. Oh, I forgot to show you. Bro, have you guys ever seen a ESG scorecard? Oh, my gosh. Bro, have you guys ever seen an ESG scorecard? Oh, my gosh. Yo, it's the craziest thing ever. It's actually the craziest thing ever. Oh, dude. This is wild because, like, companies are already doing it. Oh, yeah. Wait till you see this. Oh, wait. I didn't even charge you for anything today. You know that? Look at look at I don't charge you guys. You're you're sitting below two thousand likes. Y'all don't even give a shit, huh? Y'all don't even give a shit. We have a hundred new members today. <laughs> Where y'all at, chat? Where y'all at? Y'all want some ESG scorecards? Come on. Mm -hmm. It's not like that crazy. It's like sometimes like in a weird way or like it's kind of like it's good. But then you could kind of just see where things are going with it. Yeah, bro. 200 of you were just sitting on your likes like that. You were just 200 of you were just chilling back right now with your feet up and just laughing along with George Bush comments. It's really? Damn, that's 200. 200 individuals just chilling out there, just jebbing away. Oh, man. Mm hmm. <laughs> My fault. Sorry. Sorry. All right, here it is. You get an ESG disclosure score, environmental disclosure, emission reduction initiatives, yes or no, climate change policy, yes or no, climate change opportunity discussed, no, risk of climate change discussed, no, GHG scope, location based, your biodiversity policy, no. So they say yes or no if you have them or not. They go through all of this. Energy efficiency policy, no. Total energy consumption, waste reduction, hazardous waste, waste sent to landfills, environmental supply chain management, water policy, social disclosure score, human rights policy, policy against child labor, quality assurance and recall policy, consumer data protection policy, Equal Opportunity Policy, Gender Pay Gap Breakout, uh, Business Ethics Policy, Anti-Bribery Ethics Policy, Health and Safety, Fatalities, Total Recorded Incident Rate, Training Policy, Fair remuner uh, remun Remuneration Policy. I know how to say it. I just can't say it today. <laughs> the number of employees, percentage of employees unionized, supply chain, social supply chain management, Number of suppliers audited, number of supplier audits conducted, number of supplier facilities uh, uh, conducted or audited, governance disclosure, years auditors been employed, size of audit committee, number of independent directors on audit, audit committee meetings, how many meetings you have, audit committee meetings attendance, how often those meetings are attended to, company conducts and board evaluations, how big is your board, 
number of executives versus company managers, number of non-executive directors on board, number of board meetings for the year, board meeting attendance percentage, compensation, director share ownership, company as executive with shares owned, size of co compensation committee, number of independent directors on compensation, number of compensation committee, are we going back up? Compensation committee meeting attendance, diversity, number of female executives, number of women on the board, age of the youngest director, age of the oldest director, number of independent directors, size of nomination committee, number of independent directors on nomination, number of nomination committee meetings, and nomination committee meetings attendance, verification for sustainability governance, employee CRS training, and board duration of tenure. So it's kind of good and bad because it's like some of this stuff is like, wait, how many people are dying at your work? Do you guys like stop child labor? But then they're like, how many board meetings do you have and who attends? Have you audited it? And then how many females and males are on the board and how often do they go to the meetings? Have you unionized? Do you have a unionization meeting? How often have you attended it? Yeah, that's a that's an ESG scorecard. Fun fact, if you've never seen it. That's it, light work. That's an open door for tons of government oversight. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, some stuff's good. I mean, I can't, like, as much as I don't like the whole ESG notion, I definitely, like, some of you guys who are very moral investors, you ask these questions. You know what I'm saying? Like, there is definitely, like, it's good to have certain parts of it, but it's definitely, like, I'm just thinking, I'm like, dude, imagine how much extra work everybody has to do, and then now some of the stuff is very subjective it's like yes or no questions and then it's very you know some of these companies are just well behind in the sense of like how are they ever going to get up to that level and then it just seems like uh that is what could drive investments or lack of investments based on something totally not related to the company in a weird way where it's like obviously uh you know you care more about uh like the profit of a company to see if it's there but more or less like some people in the future may be investing on other logics more or less the stock market is immoral i think modern day life is inherently immoral and anybody d disagreeing is uh maybe a victim of hypocrisy hence we all use our iphones that are manufactured in China sweat camps. And now I won't be on YouTube for the next month after that comment. So it was good to have you here. We have a Twitch channel as well. Uh, or get the stream alerts. So just in case they kick us off of Amazon web hosting. Um, you know, so I don't know. But yeah, I'll see you soon. <laughs> I hope I make it that far. Buy butterfly. I mean, I want a. I wanted a bigger pop for any butterflies. Kick is the new Twitch. So I've heard, but kick is kind of weird. That's it, man. And I got a bad view on kick. Because uh, I was, I thought I was dating this girl a while ago, because she told me to add her on kick, but then it like. She wasn't real, but I ended up sending her like $72,000 uh, because she needed help, and I really just wanted to be an impact in her life. Um, But, yeah. <laughs> Somebody thinks this is real. That's, you better watch out. 
I know one of you has a fake kick girlfriend. Come on, you fell for it. It's okay. I don't judge you. Mm-hmm. It's okay. It's not. It just it happens. It's a dead curse. I believe anything someone tells me. So you actually fell for that? That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. That's actually wild. The band part? I don't know what part that is. Anyways, he definitely bought NFTs. Hey, man, I still have an NFT. Okay. I don't know. Just, it's not. It was a cool era, bro. <laughs> it was a cool era. You know that? Just don't forget, man. It was a really cool era at one point. We got to live through it, man. You know that? That's why that shit better work out in the future. Otherwise, you guys are going to be like. Yeah, we were we were buying monkey pictures. It was like ten thousand dollars. I, I, I you know, do you remember Justin Bieber? He bought one for a million. <laughs> it was a wild time. Hmm. Uh, holding on Zim. I think, I mean, it did what I wanted to today, but I like it with the trends of everything else. It's like at the low end. I think the next stop will be 26 bucks, maybe like 24, 25, but I'm down with it. I think we're only up uh, like a dollar a share. And then we have to wait months, so a little bit more than a dollar. It's decent, but we were down a decent amount. I mean, 5%, it just moves big. 39.62. You said greatest transfer of wealth. I didn't imagine 500,000 PNGs. It was for a little bit, man. Dude, there was people making mad money on NFTs. <laughs> it's crazy. I hope some of them, like, kept it and turned it into money. Because, like, the sad part was there was, like, people who got in really early. They made a crazy amount. But then, like, they ended up, like, falling in love with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's it, man. And that's why you guys got to be careful with your relationship decisions. You know, that's a great, great example. Avidel Pharma to seek final FDA approval. Well, I said they made a lot of money. They didn't keep it. But no, there was people initially who, like, that's it. But then it's like, if you ended up, it was just like any other stories. Like GameStop, AMC, if you didn't end up selling, you turned a small amount into a ridiculous quantity. And then you're like, wow, this is my life now. <laughs> like, that's it. I don't, I mean, how many of you during AMC and GameStop, at one point, you were just like, and even Dogecoin, you were like, yeah, I'm just going to buy something and this is what I am going to live off of. It's funny because you laugh at me and like argue with me when I tell you to do that with like a series of assets over a long period of time. And you're like, oh man, what if it goes there? But like, you know, like that's what happened, right? You don't, you mean, you don't think there was one part, they put 10, 20 grand, it turned in like a quarter million, a million, even more. And they're like, yeah, that's it. This is no, like this is uh, yeah, no, this is my life now. It's funny because it's true. I think it's just a natural human thing that happens, you know? Mm, 
Are we about to squeeze up here? Or do we need another George Bush talk? Three nine six three. Oh, they're gonna go for this line. If that eats that line, that could be big. Otherwise, we're gonna get our little rejection over there. Oh, little pop, little pop. Oh, shit, where's that one play? Where is it? Oh, the 400s are still clapped, though. Scammers. Big scam. Square new high? Yeah. Was again AVDL they just had something there. Zim is working its way up. So watch out. Humana's on the high too. Humana's low key ripping. So you ate the order. Let's see though. Ate the order. You'll get your little pullback. They bring it down to destroy the premium. That just killed a lot of the call premium. The out of the monies were already dropped. FedEx volume pop. It's crazy, dude. Oh wow. FedEx is going. Square was up a lot more pre-market. Mm. Dollar breaking out. Man, dollar is just holding a big gain though today, but not really moving. BA looks pinned, but BA 4.7% is big. Oh, yeah. What time is it? It's a, dude, I need a carbo. I haven't even had a carbo all day. You know that? I've been carbo list. And it's Friday. I'm kind of craving a Chick fil A. Not going to lie to you, man. Not going to lie to you. Bun, pickle, pickle, bun. Bun, chicken, pickle, pickle, bun. Honestly, I saw a Chick-fil-A advertisement the other day, and it's been stuck in my head. So, I don't know. I'm committed. Loosen those hips. I like Verizon better than AT&T, but it's also like, uh, you know, it's still kind of like unstable and it's not going to really grow the most it's a good company though it's going to be around i would consider it but usually by the time it gets really attractive everything else is kind of at a at a different price too so it's like you get a lot of things cheaper All right, let me go get a let me go get a carbo. I'll be right back. I love you. God bless you. Okay? You're a good guy. You know that? You're blessed. The world is yours, Habibi. The world is yours. Whose world is this? Man, so many ads. War in Ukraine. Now, let me find something better for you so you don't get too mad. I'm going to go, like, way back in time. A lot of Ukraine. Damn, I'm going to have to go, like, really back. We'll go to the Fed comments. Oh, Muhammad El Aryan. Beautiful. Everyone loves him. All right, follow me on Instagram, at the Trading Fraternity. I love you. Amen, amen. In six, five and six, they're very, very different. Um, let's call it five. Okay, is it five, five and a quarter, five and three eighths? I think that remains the baseline, but the balance of risk is clearly to the upside. Okay.
Okay, let's get some more perspective now. Claudia Som joining us with her viewpoint, uh, founder of Som Consulting and former Federal Reserve economist. A lot to get through with you, Claudia. Great to see you again. I guess just on, on your own expectations on where rates go, let's start there. What, what, what are you thinking? I think it's too early to say. There is so much data between now and if we were to get to 6%, right? We are in the early stages of a disinflationary cycle. The Fed will do what it has to do, and it will not, I mean, it's not going to anchor itself to getting to something like six. We might get there. We got some bad news today. If we get more of that, well, they're going to do what it takes. Frankly, I don't think that's not my baseline case. I think the disinflationary cycle will pick up some steam. Not every month will be good news. Right? We shouldn't overreact to a good month of news. Like with the consumer spending, this was a good month after two declines, right? Like we need to keep things in context and, but, but we're going to have to see it. Like there's going to yeah. be a lot between now and the terminal rate. Uh, certainly so, Claudia. And that's a good point. I, I want to get your perspective here on something that I think markets have focused in, at least on this one particular report. And that is the somewhat modest divergence that we're seeing between the growth in personal income versus some of the spending rates. And of course, you overlay that with the actual deflator itself and inflation. What is that telling you about the state of the consumer right now? Well, the state of the consumer right now looks pretty good, right? In adjusted for inflation, and inflation is too high, but in adjusted for inflation, we saw an increase in consumer spending. And if you look back over the last several months, like the consumer has held up. It would be such a different moment if we were in a stagflation, inflation high, growth, consumer spending slowing. That's not what we have right now. We have too high inflation and that's a problem, but we really should celebrate the fact that unemployment is very low and people are still out there able to walk away from the store with more than they went in. Like that's the goal here. And Claudia, maybe you can walk us through just as, as we try to figure out the challenges on the inflation front specifically, what are the issues ultimately in tackling supply-driven inflation? It would be a mistake for us to look to the Federal Reserve and expect them to fix this inflation entirely. Right? The Fed has a role to play. We have a lot of demand. Their interest rates have an effect. Frankly, they're not, they're not set up to be super effective right now. Families' balance sheets are really good. And even in the interest rate sectors, I mean, we've seen housing really take a big hit, as it should. It's an interest rate sector. And yet cons construction employment has still held up. So it's really hard for the Fed to get from or interest rate sensitive sectors, which aren't that large, right. to the bigger consumer well, spending. Well, so it's tough to Oh, I'm sorry, Claudia, but I'm curious, like, what gets us there? Because I, I've heard this argument before that the, the main mechanism the Fed has only really accounts for a certain percentage of, I guess, the fight against inflation. I've heard some statistics put it somewhere around 40 percent, but certainly less than 50. And the rest of that is largely going to come from more supply side uh, changes, fiscal policy changes, et cetera. Fiscal policy changes. Indeed. Indeed, my friend. Indeed. Yeah, dollar. I dude, the dollar wasn't even like moving. I don't know. Mm, I'm mad though. I wish data wasn't real, so my nine dollar play could be worth nine thousand. But you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cry. I have been to Dave's Hot Chicken. I think it's kind of overrated. You know, I'm a real big Chick Fil A fan, man. You know what I'm saying? Just like unequivocally. Chick-fil-A till I die. That's it. Come on, you going to run or not, Habibi? Again, you ate that level. There's really not even that many uh, cells above here. That was the earlier level we just got to. 39.70 on the futures. 39.64. Crack Shack's fire. 
I love Crack Shack. Big, big fan. I actually want to go back. I haven't been there in like a year, bro. Low key, I just don't like that you have to like eat outside and then it's like it's always in just mad difficult locations. Yo, whoa, what the fuck? How big is that special dividend on Ford? Oh, shit. Did you already miss the Ford dividend date? Can you still buy it? Yeah, it's kind of huge. Mm -mm. No, it's past. Damn. I think it pays out on March 1st. And the next dividend was February 10th. I just saw it. I'm like, I didn't think that was at... Bro, it's damn 65 cents. So you're getting paid. That's like what? It's like pretty much you get one year of dividend up front. Uh, pretty crazy. Ford is a failing company. I kind of like them though. Why is Coinbase getting clobbered? Coinbase is getting clobbered right now. But I kind of believe in Ford because they started putting LED lights in their vehicles. Like ambient lighting. And I think they're just going to sell them a lot because of that. That's it. I believe in younger generation. You put lights in the car. That's it. I've never seen this many people this hyped on Mustangs. Mm-hmm. It's actually crazy. I mean, Ford is pretty cheap. You already. I wish we got that dividend, but then X dividend was two ten. Yeah, you would have lost like twenty percent. We'll explore ST. Those look dope. I've seen them. I always think they're cops. And then it's just a Ford ST. They look pretty badass. Uh, um, I just ate a Hasbro on the high. I just ate a beef jerky. Now it's stuck in my tooth. And now it's going to bother me the rest of the day. Is it the dividend? I should have. But that's why I was seeing if uh, when the ex-dividend thing was, I had something come across. And it said four dividend, 60 cents plus 15. And I was like, that's a lot. I just kind of realized it. Mm-mm. Coin dropping because of base. I heard about base. Everybody keeps uh telling me about these layer two networks. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. It sucks because I'm still in like I'm kind of in like crypto's shady right now, and I'm not. It sucks that I feel like any good new technologies is just I don't know. Anybody, you guys want to educate me on it? What's what's layer two? What's this layer two base hype? I'm pretty sure it allows them to be uh. It allows them to kind of build on DeFi, but I still think everything's borderline scammy. I don't know. I'm not really feeling any new projects. It just makes it faster. Energy trans. What's that? 
Eat at sixteen. Well, Bitcoin's even low too. That's it. I have to close out my ETH today. But then I wonder what all the other contracts are at. April, May, June. Whose world is this? Allow to encrypt every tweet. Powered by Chainlink. Makes transactions cheaper and faster. I thought it was like everyone making it sound like it's the new Ethereum, but like I said, I'm just kind of like turned off by everything now. Yeah, EXP expiration on that contracts today. I thought I had more time on it, but I could roll it over. But then now the margin is ex is way more expensive. So it's way it's literally the margin cost doubled almost by the like where I guess up 50%. It was $30,000 to hold initially. Now it's 42,000 and I think that's just the initial requirement. So then and then initial requirements higher than the other one. So it kind of sucks. Cuz then I don't want to go to the MESs or the uh the meth <laughs> or what was it called? It's like ET uh MT or I think it's like MTE or something or met or met I think it's met not meth well it's because the price went up but then also the volatility yeah that's what cost to borrow means because then it, then it sucks because now it's like and then there's also interest on futures too but I don't think the interest rate went up on Ethereum but now just like to hold the transaction though you got to uh I'm, I'm I have to put up 50 percent more cash than I did already and dumping. I wonder, are we going to test the 200 day? That's messed up. Why do we drop? I mean, today's a Friday cuck day as usual. You're literally at the first candle. We kind of started dropping, gave up some of the Bullard gains, then you started to rally up, and now you're kind of just doing the VWAP dance here. You have to pay interest to hold futures. It should be built in the price, yeah, but there is the possibility that the interest price could be raised. Now, usually it goes hand-in-hand hand with the... Uh, with the interest rate of Fed funds, but it also depends on the asset or the commodity. But there could be. So there is a possibility that you are long or short on a future and they increase the interest rate and you will be, you'll either, I mean, it will get factored into your, your cost or your break even. Do you need to prove future income for first time mortgage? You need to prove consistent income. I mean, it helps if you have a job, but mainly... They want to just see at least two years of income history. Mm -hmm. Oh, the three nine seven one. Whose world is this? Oh, shit. This contract may even be done already. Like, it's not moving. It may already automatically close. I think they're already... At the active is ETH 23 now. Mm -hmm. 
Let me see if they let me close it. It's kind of fucked up because now the spread is like crazy. Oh my god. <sighs> I think he's going to automatically close me out there. So, cover your ears here. I'll mute it for you. That scared the sh dude. I jumped. Just in case, I'll protect your ears. I think last trade, 1618. Working. Get ready. <laughs> Expired limit to close. Yeah, I don't think they're I think it's gonna automatically close on Monday So it'll be booked at 21,000. That sucks. I could have made a little bit more Scammers I mean, I can't even reopen it till that clears out mm. And then we're gonna do the ZN That one I have till today. That one still has a couple days to trade. Unrealized capital gains. Mm. All my nightmares begin with that sound. Bidimp. Bidimp. Oh, DXCM. I always miss my opportunity on that. I like the square. I'm still in that one. It looks decent. It was up so much more in the morning. Okay, you're actually breaking out a little bit here. Wow. Look at it go, Habibi. Look at it go. Oh, you're working up, dude. You're getting decent candles. We're still in the cuck zone, but it is starting to move there. So when you roll, you technically book the loss. Yeah, you have to. That's just the only way. And then now there's a spread between the contract. So in a weird way, I missed out on like 18 bucks because now it's going to close me out at 16, 18. And then if I want to reshort, unless I go to the one on June, it's going to be 16, 17. Then obviously... Uh, we got to factor in how much that's going to cost too. Because now the buying, that's the only thing I don't like about it is that it's its a lot more expensive. So I want to see if we could do it with like the minis, uh, but just with high quantity. But yeah, you do book the loss. But it's good though, in the same way where it's like, you know, factor that into your taxes and stuff like that. I mean, in the long run, nothing wrong with booking it there. But the spread of the next contract you get is the problem. Biden immigration aid, Clavel, Paris, Davis to leave. Ed Mester. Let 
Rollover means pretty much I'm closing out that active contract and then going to the next month. So I'm trying to chew this beef jerky away from the mic. The ETH, that future required $30,000 to open it. And then as ETH kept running and became more volatile, uh, it went up to 42000 So even then, I'm taking a loss on that one of twenty k, And I plan on reopening it here. I want to see. Hopefully now ETH goes up and I could reshort it at a better price. But uh, essentially, though, it would that, like right now, started at thirty grand. You needed about 42000 45000 bucks. Uh, to hold that trade. So that one's big. That's it. I mean, I'm pretty much guaranteeing a lot of it. So you lost your profits from dividends with loss of Ether. If you want to look at it that way, I mean, I try to view them separately. I mean, otherwise, I've made millions of dollars on Ether in my lifetime. So you could also view it that way if you would like. Uh, but that was a, a poor trade. I still believe in the trade, but I got caught into it in the uh, rally here recently. And then now, I mean, as things are coming back down, I could re-go over it. Spy is running. Bull flag trade. Bro, all day. I'm sure I want to get the chart for the all day options. I want to see what people are pushing. I didn't even check the bubbles, but let me see the call buying thing. If I could pull it up. Well, that was an ETH future just on TD Ameritrade. I'd be very, very cautious with it. Oh, rejected. Wow. I was looking at the other screen. What's the day today? February. Why don't show me? I can't get it on the dailies. Apple is tweaking. Bro, you just hit the, I mean, Fed Mester is supposedly talking right now. I don't have any headlines. Again, she's been borderline bearish, but... I think you're just doing the normal cuck dance, bro. Mm. There's a 2000 ES contract sell. Elon is live, like real Elon, or is it like Elon giving you crypto? People think you're shorting it with perpetual futures. Yeah. I don't even, I just, I'd be careful with any of that shit. Even a normal fucking <laughs> CBOE short or uh, anything that you could trade on, like on a regulated, it's just, it's crazy. But nah, that's TD Ameritrade. Fulcrum Therapeutics downgraded to underperform. Yeah, Coinbase is getting clapped. 
I didn't see Apple. Apple's chilling. Everything, dude, we're really calm. It's weird because the volume is so high. So I guess now we're about to hit power hour in 30 minutes, but, I mean, this is going to be a definitely an above average day. Hundred K leverage. Dude, even a normal future contract is insane leverage. I mean, technically that was like going short on like a thousand or a, like a hundred Ethereum. Like that's it's even normal con that's why I could only imagine using anything like that. And then if it's not regulated and like I'm saying, like even then if you don't know the like technically they could use the rules and regulations against you. U.S. intelligence shows China mulling possible deliveries of drones and artillery to help Moscow. Uh-oh, hot dog. Hold on. You're not really... Maybe that's what that candle was, but I feel like that would increase some tensions. That may be the topic of tensions this weekend. But market don't care for now. <laughs> that's all. It just came across right now. Wall Street Journal saying they have drones US intelligence mm. I think several days ago they were talking about it and then with the first that was that day we woke up when Biden right after Biden traveled they were said they were worried about that and then the meeting and then yesterday China last night they said they wanted to um they said they called for a peace plan uh with there and then now that one, I'm pretty sure that one just came out. Mm. There was one on February 17th said Pentagon fears Russia's use of DGI drones. Could make oil go up, but we'll see if that has an effect. See if people take that and run with it. Yeah, China said they wanted to negotiate peace last night, but then the U.S. pretty much said their peace plan just helps out. Uh, the peace plan just helps out Russia. <laughs> yeah, the Pentagon said that that DGI thing, but that's the only one I'm seeing here. And then all the other stuff from afterwards. And then China's military fired missiles over to Taipei. That was December 30th. Any, I'm not worried about next week's data. I think everyone's going to, they might tweak out a little bit or ignore some of the other data points depending on how they come in, like based on PMIs and all of that. And anything related to prices paid will get people moving. But then also, like what's going to happen, I think. I mean, I could totally be wrong, but I'm really expecting one set of data to come in that makes everybody uh, feel high. And they're like, see, it's not that bad. There you go. And then we're going to fight because we, all we've had is bad news now. It seems like for three weeks in a row, uh, this will be our third weekly decline in a row. So I'm kind of along that, that line of logic there. Whose world is this? But yeah, that's kind of what I'm expecting. But then I think, I don't think next week should, we should calm down. Worst case, you go a little bit lower, but like I'm saying, I'm kind of preparing for some upside. And then that's uh, pretty much it. And then next week after that, um, next week after that turns into uh, the non-farms.
We rallied on bad earnings and shitty macro. Yeah. But it really wasn't even that that killed everything. What made us rally was the uh was everybody getting hyped on the uh or what made us come down was was the Bullard and the 50 basis points and then now then everybody took all that bad data and said, "Oh shit. Maybe they will do this." You know what I'm saying? Okay, wow, big drop there. There it is. Damn, I was just looking at a daily too, man. Mm. But back to VWARP. I'm in ACAM. Uh, we'll go watch yesterday's watch list. I think I brought it up there too. I think every day this week I brought up ACAM, but I'm still holding it. And like you said, I plan to hold it for a long time. So, yeah. Uh, considering averaging, but not yet. No bounce. We already kind of did bounce, but we still have a little bit of time left. 30 minutes till power hour. And that would be it. The premium kill. Yeah, because a lot of premiums are like the same prices as the opening, as where we were at in the morning. So I think every single put is the same price. Except for the ones like way out the money, but most of them, most puts are right at the money. And then your calls are the ones that are down. Like all of them are down. So I think they're making a bag on the preem, dude. That's, I mean, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Am I bullish for the rest of the day? I'm still pretty agnostic. I mean, I guess I was feeling kind of bullish for it to be one of the Friday squeezes. But in a weird way, I'm kind of thinking it might be able to come down. But I think a little cheap plays both sides, like 10 bucks here, 10 bucks there. Other than that, though, I'm not really uh, I'm not really feeling too crazy about it. I think now we're just we got our news. We know what's up with PCE and, you know, everything going up. Or like everything going on with inflation. And I think it's just setting the stage for tomorrow. Realistically. Feel better about Monday. Yeah, everything's just kind of like hitting the wire now. You know what's coming on. And then just there's a lot of economic data next week. But like I'm saying, I think people are going to be able to ignore it. Maybe they'll find one good thing to react to. And then before you know it, it's just like the real data set. So like after everybody gets distracted next week with everything else, you're not going to have as many earnings. And then let's if we wrap up next week without a problem, very, very quickly, you're going to jump right back into uh, you're going to jump right back into uh, non farms right around the corner. And then that's going to be the big one. That's going to be the data set where people are like, OK, this is all that matters. And then if you get another 500,000 job print, then that'll clap you. And then I think you buy another week. And then after that, it's going to be, or I think next week after that will be CPI. And then boom, week after that is Powell. No, I think China tensions could possibly come up over the weekend. I mean, maybe Russia stuff, but it's so weird because like it's weird now that the biggest Russian tension would be involving China. But it's just like we don't even care what fucking Putin does anymore. The worry about extreme impact from zero day options is likely overstated. The scenario of extreme market impact from zero days could be overstated when commodity trading advisors positive beta to equity may be near term headwind for the S&P, says Bloomberg Intelligence Chief Derivative Strategist Tanvir Sadhu. Hmm.
do you think Russia could take over? Uh, depends how you look at it. All right, you're coming back down here. But no, I think it's more along the lines of uh, Russia just gets really bad or it gets really good. That's it. That's, I don't, there's no good option. I mean, that's like, that's all. Like, if you really believe in standing and supporting Ukraine, the way this ends up good is that, you know, Russia just stops. But then at that point, it seems like Russia would only stop if they took over the land, which defeats the whole purpose of the, of this freedom initiative. But then on the vice versa, it's like if we, if, if the world is able to get, or really the Western countries are able to get Putin to stop and to the point where he's losing, then you, you know, you run the risk of him doing something very extreme, which would not end up being good in the long run as well, too. Honestly, it just seems like a lose-lose scenario. So I don't know. That's why it's like Russia taking over is a very uh, subjective question, I would think. Nice little pop on LMT Bumble. Bro, what's happening with coin? Yeah, even Ethereum's coming down. Thirty nine sixty one. We're actually been above thirty nine sixty this whole time. So if that breaks, that's not gonna be good. I think downside will start to pick up. I think put premium actually went up here too. How well Boeing, I mean, at least to 190, 180, or like the high 180s. And then if one the high 180s break, I mean, remember, this thing was at like 160, 170. You know, Boeing is actually, even then in the last 100 days, it's gone up almost 100%. You know, 120 to 220, it's a pretty big amount. Break out. If you bounce off the 39, how much time do we have? You got 20 minutes and then it's power hour. Low ticker getting kind of active. Let's see. It's a big level here at 39.60. If that don't do good, it's, you know, it killed the people. It killed the people. Mm. No more data. Next week there is data, but I don't think it's the... Uh, I don't think it's the important data. Mm. That's what, uh, again, you can watch yesterday's watch list. Let me see. I'm very weird moves here, man. This is too. We're doing absolutely nothing. I'm trying to see, and then you have premiums all across the board right now. So we will find out, Habibi. We will find out. Apple. Apple is coming towards the law.
is where is this? Yeah, morning was like it was fast paced, but then we did do that little dance. We did that little dance in the morning for like an hour of just like straight chilling. So that was kind of the problem there at at first. Yesterday was a lot lot quicker, but we did the we did the cuck dance in a smaller range and very very early. That I think is the only was the only problem here. Okay, there's your little mini flush. Apple's coming down. We'll see if Apple hits a low. I think it's either now next 20 minutes you either dump. Or we're gonna do the opposite of whatever we do to start power hour. If it, it could continue, but. It's either now 20 more minutes, you're either going to run up, and if we're up coming into power hour, it'll flip. But then if we start dumping 39.60, break the level, and then power hour comes in, and then we see what happens. But it might even dance off of this, too. Because I could only imagine everyone just starting to even buy puts on that one, too. <laughs> Walmart. Oh yeah, I wanted to look at Walmart, Mickey Donald, and a couple of other ones. Uh, where was it? HD. Maybe Boeing would do something. That would be nice. Waiting on that still. It's holding well, but like I'm saying, you have 20 more minutes till power hour. Probably will do the opposite, but then. Even then, everything's just like still stuck in this initial range we've been at. Find out on the next episode of The Market Hates You. If bad hot inflation data kills markets, they did nothing. It's gonna die! It's gonna bounce! They had no idea. Or next week. Three ninety seven, three ninety six fifty, and three ninety three eighty. But now you're breaking it down there. So let's see. Below thirty nine sixty. Anytime we've gone, you've one time today. Any other time you've came below here, you've technically started to flush. That's where this all started from. And then you had the other time here where it kind of danced around and then was able to come back up. So let's find out. And then Apple's about to hit the low. Where are the China names? Season finale, January 31st, 2024. What will Powell do? Mm -mm. Outer Banks. There's a new season? How many new seasons do they have? This makes no sense. All right. 15 minutes till power hour, right in the middle. There is a couple cells coming in. A lot of cells up there, but... You don't really have the buys, not yet. Season 80. I've been liking shrinking. I like it too, bro. I like it too. <laughs> it's been good. Oh, what was the other one? There's another show I watched. I'm blanking on it. What does the Fed do when they talk about no rates? Uh, they trade bonds. They facilitate the plumbing of the market, I believe. That's how you could put it. Mad volume. A little. There's volume like at 45 or a couple minutes ago. Like right here at the break, right before. But it's going to get interesting from here. I mean, that's it. We're running. We're running into the end of the day. 15 more minutes. You get power hour. 
and then this will be the final hour to finalize everything we've done. You're still now, you're leaning lower. Remember, you had a gap down from 4013, which is pretty wild if you think about it. Survivor is 100% IRL Squid Games without any death. <laughs> Bro, I like, uh, I watched some of the Fitness 100. I put that in the background, yeah. Bro, Survivor's like the OG show, man. Like, Survivor's like back in the day. I remember like the first Survivor, man. It's crazy. I'm about to sell my Xbox because I don't play. Throw the money in savings. Yeah, long term, why not? It depends, though, but like, you know, you got to be careful. Somebody said that, and I laughed. They said that selling your PlayStation or Xbox is like hood bankruptcy. So you got to be careful. You got to be careful. You know what I'm saying? And just make sure, make sure you really want to do it, though. Don't do it because then if you feel sad and you want to buy another one, you're going to end up spending more. That's just how it goes, bro. That's just how it's going to go. You're going to sell it. You'd be like, I want to save it. Yeah, it's good. And then, you know, it ends up happening. If like a year from now, you're going to end up spending more on a brand new one because you sold this one for some odd reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they call it hood bankruptcy, though. Okay, so there's your bounce off 3960, man. Ay, ay, ay. Holy shit, that's big. Pioneer is said to weigh deal for U.S. shale gas range. RRC and PXD. It's very big. Oh, what just happened there? Range resources extends gain. Yeah, RRC, PXD. Mm-mm. Whoa, PXD is dumping. RRC is halted. And there you go. Yeah, RRC is halted. PXD is the one dumping. That was a big pop there off of that, man. That was actually crazy. Oh, man. Are they going to do Are they gonna do this end of the day? <laughs> they, they really... So watch out, though, because I think 20 more minutes... 12 more minutes, and then after that, it's going to be... But you're actually about to break out to a new high here. Technically, didn't hit the new low. Oh, watch, PXD still dropping off of that. That last 30 minutes, bro. They want you. They want you. My goodness. Yeah, those contracts, too, those just got destroyed. The puts and then the calls just went crazy. Where's 397? So if you could get past 39,650, those will go crazy. My goodness. And then PXD, I don't know. I don't want to play. It's already down 3%. Oh, no. I still have my spy call, but it's, it's killed. Doesn't matter. You have to. You would have been better off buying the three. If you waited this long and bought like the uh, three ninety seven fifties or the three ninety eights, ah, you still would have lost. You would have done better at the closer to the monies. Let's see though. It depends. If you could break out from here, 
But remember, it's, I mean, there's only one hour left. Who's loud is this? Targets on the high. Again, PXD has a deal, but not playing that. They're buying RRC, but PXD is the one dropping off of that. Uh, I kind of want to sell premium on some of these calls. I don't know if that's risk because if this breaks out, everyone, like I said, or later in the day, just if everybody starts squeezing in on this now, that sucks, though, because I'm sure they probably hustled a bunch of people here now. And then PXD still dropping. But if this thing could start to get a little squeezy towards the top, I could only imagine because now those same calls we bought for nine cents are three. All right, I need to go pee. I don't know if this will help or hurt your rally. Either way, I love you. Okay. Just don't forget. Follow me on Instagram at the trading fraternity. I will I'll be right back. Well, in addition to that hot PCE report that we got at 8.30 this morning, we also got data on personal spending that came in hotter than expended. And if you break that apart, where consumers are actually spending their money, uh, it seems like they're spending on everything. You're looking at goods in the white line there. You can see that there had been a little bit of a drop that has since slowed. And then you take a look at services. That line has been moving higher and higher prettily steadily since the depths of the pandemic in 2010. 2020 rather so remain you add it all together this is still a very resilient consumer a big part of that services of course is all the money that we've been spending on travel when you take a look at the broader market and all the stocks that are down the few that are up well that includes booking holdings rising today after reporting better than expected earnings that apparently signaled that there is still a lot of strength out there in demand for travel pleased to say joining us right now is the president and ceo of booking Glenn Fogel. Uh, Glenn, great to have you on the program here. We talked so much over the last few months about revenge travel coming out of the pandemic, and there was a lot of concern that that would abate, at least for now, based on your results and some of the results that we've seen out of airlines and some of your competitors, it's not abating. Why not? Well, thanks for having me. And I think that's such a great term, revenge travel, because we know people missed out for so long in the things they wanted to do, like travel, and now they're doing it. It really hasn't slowed at all. And, you know, we reported some really good numbers last night, and we talked about January even stronger. So there's no slowdown in terms of people's desire to book travel. And how worried are you, though, that at some point there will be some form of demand destruction? Or do you see peak inflation in the rearview mirror that this will become less of a hurdle to people traveling even more in the future? You know, it's an interesting question because how much of the really good January numbers that we announced interesting were due question. to... Dude, PXD is insane. I'm like, ah, 3% down, and then it just keeps ripping there. It's interesting. You'd think oil would be bringing it down. I put EWT, not EQT. They're running off of that. That's crazy. Shout out to Airbnb. Well, you got to break this high. If you don't break this high, you're still in the cuck zone. So this is actually quite important. 39.70. Remember, 39.74... That is actually that other soft level. And then otherwise, I mean, there's there's a lot of higher a lot of higher prices above here now that we're gonna have to get to. But like I'm I won't doubt people. There's one little line up here. We'll see if it's gonna test if it eats it and gets momentum. But you saw the same level of pressure last time you were here. I think volume is going up. Again, seventy one. It's gonna be a big it's probably might be a hundred million by the end of the day. Again, has power hours started yet? Oh, you still got five more minutes till power hour. Aye, aye, aye. 39.74 is going to be both either support or resistance, depending on how this trades. But this is the high of last time. How did last Friday trade? I think last Friday, yeah, you got like right to the high again. And then like you just kind of hung out around there. So I don't know. Maybe they Maybe they pin it here. Mm. 
We start, dude. That PXT one's crazy. That one, I think, very, very wild, Habibi. You know, very, very wild. Just hitting CNBC. That I dude it was already down three percent. I was like, nah. It's good though. Good call out. And then range RRC is up eighteen percent now. They're unhalted for the last like two minutes or so. It's a crazy day, man. Crazy day. Crazy day to be a stock market, you know? And then even then a lot of volumes coming up here. I think everyone is uh fifty fifty now. 50-50, we either get a big up or a big down. The futures are at the 39.75, but again, the S&P, you're still, the high of the day is 39.72. You're about two points below that right now. AR is up seven, EQT is up on that. Just watch a PXD, RRC is kind of coming down now. I'm more concerned with just this spy. See if this keeps going. That lunar company from earlier is running. Meta, then FedEx now too. So a couple of things are hitting the high. Google's still pinned, but Google's kind of waking up. Let's see if you get a wake up on any of those. I think everything's kind of starting to move. What is a square? Okay, new high or not, ladies and gentlemen. New high or not. Is it, is it at 396? Not even at 30, 397. Damn. Damn, son, where'd you find this one? Right at the high. So you're flirting with the high. You're about to set a new high of the day. That is the low of yesterday. And then you see how people uh, take it, you know? And there it is. Slightly new high. Now, meta, tech, a lot of things kind of going borderline vertical here. Oh, my goodness. They're wild out here, Habibi. Very, very wild out here, you know? Very, very wild out here. Fogel, more to come. International travel demand. It's big. And then squares going. That's it. I think you're going to get... What time is it, though? Power hour, if it keeps going up, you'll get 15-minute window if it holds. Otherwise, I think we might hit one of these. I don't know. Maybe you're above 3974 now, though. So that one's big. That one is big. Just flip tapped out of the shorts. F your puts. Let's go. Market is still down 1.5 on the NASDAQ. <laughs> feel you though i feel you man i feel you you know some people getting really uh really excited about this that's good to see man that's good to see mm, coin and sq coin is doing good i don't know i mean square's doing good i don't know about coin even then, all the the calls, like, you just had a bunch of IV on these. These things went crazy. Again, when we were talking, I was like, those calls got crushed, and then they instantly went up. And then now the puts all just got murdered, like, savagely. So we'll see, though. This is the 39.74, 75 level. We will see how this one holds, you know? Mm. 
Nvidia, Tesla, all the big tech is running, and now you even got Square coming up. That one's the earnings one. Watch any of the other earnings, and then airlines. Let's see PXD again. Friday repeat. It could be a bigger one, but let's see, man. Let's see. It's it's either going to be very big or very uh, just in the middle because, like, that's it if it comes down from here. And now it's uh, power hour right now. So I think you got a couple more minutes if this keeps running. Otherwise, I think we might flip now. Or if it goes maybe 10 more minutes and then worse. I think base case, you kind of end up where we started. And then best case is that it just it, it runs and then you maybe fill the gap or at least half of it. I don't think that's too out of the question. You're still running, though, like we were saying. If people start piling into here, though, this is where it gets crazy. It might chill around 3980. That's always a big level. Yep, another gap. Let's move aggressive, Habibi. murdering the theta not a bull i mean it seemed like a trap on everybody and then it kind of just did its thing there right now let's see my friend get your wick your wick and pick no Nope, he's going. They're feeding him. Again, 3980. Watch there, but it is power hour. So this is it. You either make a good reversal or you make a, you know, craziness. And then PXD's bouncing. That's there for the oil companies. The John Wick. Very good movie, man. You see the John Wick, man? You see how he battle? Very, very big battler, man. John Wick, very, very good. Very, very good guy, man. Pepsi up point one. This is blue sky breakout. Habibi, no. It's not blue. I see a cloud over here. A lot of cloud. A lot of cloudy, man. A lot of cloudy. If you want to fill gap, very good opportunity. But many clouds, Habibi. Many, many clouds. I don't know. Where is the bond? The Met? You have to be careful. Just in, I feel like this is the, the Fridays. We'll see, though. If we could actually squeeze, you're going to bring back the Friday squeeze elements again. But if not, if this doesn't squeeze, man, this is going to be bullshit. You know that? They're going to be so mad. <laughs> like, dude, they scammed. Imagine you had if you had any calls here, they scammed the shit out of you. <laughs> so I've been looking at these dailies. I've been, I wanna, I've been trying to see them here. I've been watching them. But like on that move, like maybe if you bought it, you almost had like a hundred percent there. And then right before the rally, you went up from forty cents down to sixteen cents before going up to seventy. And then same thing even there with like the puts, like the three ninety sixes, you were at two dollars and they brought you down to eighty. Then you got a little bit and now they just went down there to thirty. So it's I don't know, man, the, the the amount of values and the windows that you have. I see. I mean, they're saying a lot of people playing these and all, but there's no very, very vicious out here. Very, very vicious. Okay, now that's a big red. So start of power hour. Let's see what we got here now. <laughs> let's see what we got here hold on it's still at a high level though you're now below the high in the morning that we set but this is still i mean quite uh quite interesting to say the least if it keeps like flushing from here but it's been only what four minutes five minutes that was a big candle jeez It feels like it's so slow, too. Like, you just get, like, a giant red, and then it just, like, slows down. Ooh. 
Mm. But if this reloads again, this is like I'm saying, what this is doing to that premium, even that con dude, that contract I just fucking showed you, that already went up fifty percent, twenty five to almost fifty cents right there, and then now where the uh, where's those three ninety sevens again? Yeah, seventy cents down to forty. So dude, they're just draining whoever. Like again, there's a lot of zero day activity, but like you gotta kind of you gotta kind of think about it, man. Everything just gets drained and pumped. Depending on when you decide to hit buy or sell, I mean, you're just, you're in a, a weird little world right now. Whose world is this? So you're back at the high. So see if we could hold that or not. Bookmap looks crazy. <laughs> Bookmap looks like you got a lot of issues here. Looks like, again, you never cleared this one out, so the market may want to try to test it. But I think if this turns into a reload and you pop through there, bro, oh, man, that gets hideous because then that means you're at a, you're going to be at 3980. Look at that's a big candle up off of that. The floor is lava. Again, high takers going nuts right now though. Do you see that? Bro, a lot of individual names. Holy shit. That's actually crazy. And then Tesla's getting a big candle. High ticker looks like it's, there's. I don't see anything on the low ticker there now. I think this is killing off premiums both ways and shaking people out. Again, let's go back to that 397 call. Uh, 17 cents to 80 cents, back down to 40 in a minute, and then now back up to 60 cents. And then that same put just went up 50% only to come back down. I think they're still up like 10 or 20%. But that is a wicked move on all of these, so... It is power hour, so wherever we end up right now, this is where it gets really, really interesting. This 396 is our VWAP. 397 is the new high leading into 3980. Lunar, I don't know what it is. It's just I think that thing has been moving pretty viciously the last couple of days. I think a lot of people have been calling that one out. Well, let's see. The bids, may, they may want to try to... The sell pressure is adding up, but you do have a lot of buys here. And I'm sure that little move just probably caused a lot of piling in on both directions. The irony of Lunar. I'm trying to think like we're... I think overall you would have made more money by holding like premium sales. Because like we're saying, you know, the hedge funds are the net sellers of the dailies. Hope they wipe out. Damn, bro. Chill. <laughs> I think it's like, I don't know, in a weird way. I, I don't, I think I'm being too dramatic about it, but I feel like the, zero day options it feels like um it feels like subprime mortgages like it feels like we're at that area where like we're right in the middle of it where everybody's like debating it and they're like no it's it's not a big deal and they're like no nah, it's gonna destroy everything and they're like no nah, it's not a big deal like trust me like how could this like there's so many things and then they're like no, it's going to kill everything. It's a writ. Like, so I think we're like, we're still at that stage where we're right in the middle of it. Oh, no. Yeah, that's why I say. I think it could be dramatic, but I definitely see the, the argument where it's like, okay, it's a new product, more or less. The fact that you get it every day, it is a tied to leverage and easy money and all this other stuff. But it's like, I mean, again, I, I feel like there's both sides to the coin where it's like, Somebody making money, like, no, even then, like I said, it's just like, even if you, like, drop a lot and it's like, oh, my gosh, options is going to cause a crash. Well, like, everyone's going to buy zero-day options if it crashes. And, like, you could just quickly – I think the only risk is if someone actually gets blown up. But what we've learned over modern monetary theory, they'll just halt the damn exchange. You know what I'm saying? Uh-uh. <laughs> Whose world is this? 
Zero day options can only be explained by someone who actually knows and has experience. Josh has none. I just made this account the other day and I came back and I waited 20 minutes to comment that. Okay, don't you dare talk about my zero day options. Okay, buddy. <laughs> it's okay, man. I understand. It's okay. You'll make it through. You'll make it through, man. My comments are not meant to hurt you. Okay? You know, discussing zero-day options is not meant to hurt you. You know what I'm saying? If you identify as a put, if that's if your pronouns are put slash call, I get how you could be offended. But, you know, we're just we're just having some discussion, man. We're just having some discussion. <laughs> zero-day option revealed. Zero-day option trader revealed. I make you laugh every day. That's good. I hope so, man. That's like the best way to like handle it, you know, because I feel like you do get some laughs, you know. So that's great. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I banned him. Well, yeah, if you have to make the you could again, it shows up when you make a new account. So it's like, dude, come on. That means you've been banned, you came back, and you still got this, like, attitude as if it's, uh, like, clearly nobody gives a shit. Oh, my name is Jeb. There he is. <laughs> there you go. Good timing. You waited a little bit. Yeah, you let it cool down. That's a good one. That's a good one. I like it. I like it. Who's worthy? He came in at a good time. He came in at a good time on that one. Love to see it. Can zero day crash the market? Legitimately, the brightest and best minds on Wall Street have been arguing this now for the last couple of weeks. That it. That's it. That's all that's been happening. That's why, and, and depending on how you identify with it, you are going to take it very personally. No one's here to attack you. Uh, it just hopefully you could take in all the information you can. That's why I said I. it just reminds me of the subprime mortgage or even crypto to the degree where everyone's trying to do like it's going to kill everything. It's the best thing ever. And everyone's still kind of, uh, you know, in the middle on all of that. The case for being able to crash it is that it just causes like major imbalances creates like liquidity gaps and then causes everything to pretty much crumble. You've seen it before. It's kind of like uh, that's what they mean by Volmageddon. And that's just where things like the balance of everything just gets out of whack. And then, you know, it's like it's like a gamma squeeze, but in reverse or it could cause a big squeeze. If anybody's caught off balance, if liquidity is already low and it could just kind of create something unforeseen. And that's kind of the funny part about it. That the only way it really claps something is if it is truly like how it would clap us. I don't think you could forecast it because it would have to happen. But then again, it has inherent abilities to kind of uh, balance itself out too. And then what time is it? Have we spent 15 minutes doing nothing now? Low key. Well, let's find out. They still didn't clear that order though. So like with that staying there, I feel like. Someone's going to try to eat it. 39.72. You're just chilling at the high. You've done this twice so far. And again, I think this is proceeding to just wreck the premium back and forth. But then VWAP's barely moving. Volume's climbing. 75 million. 45 minutes remaining. RRC coming up again. I've been looking at Apple. I have PXD because that one's just wild. See if it breaks this high, though. Put buying and covering. It's a lot. There's just a lot out there right now. Well, now below the high, coming down a little bit more. Find out on the next episode of The Market Hates You. The first candle of the day was 3973, 3978, 
I feel like they want to eat that one up there, you know? I feel like you could eat very, very good here. You get a little support. You do the reload, you know? It exasperates the memes. Memes being exasperated left and right. And there it is. <laughs> and back to those contracts and how they went up 50%. It's actually kind of fun to watch. Low key, I mean, because I keep up other contracts throughout the day, but dude, this is a shit show. Especially considering you have not really like even moved there. I think it has to do more so with the velocity. Man, it is fun to watch. I see. Stressful. Stressful. It's like futures trading, but then like. If you just take one wrong step, you're like really fucked. But then again, that's kind of how futures trading is. But then it's just like, it seems it's hard to shake the notion that everything is just designed to kill premium, especially when you look at this. <laughs> Cause I'm looking at both of these charts at both different times. It's like, okay, maybe it was killing premium, but like it all, like it all depends. It, it goes, remember that article I read you where it has to do with the, uh, 90, um, the 90, 90 second rule, because it all just depends where you get in. That's it. That's all that matters with it. It's legitimately where you're in and then the smaller time windows. Like you got to really just be breaking it down into like five to 15 minute windows. But because then it's just like it's hard to tell. You don't know where a majority of the open interest is lying and all of that. Hold back. I know. I kind of wish I sold some of those calls, though. I do want to start looking at that, the premium sell form, but you just got to be willing to lose that two to 3,000%. It's like, even then, though, let's see. Did you lose? I don't even think you lost that much on the premium sell. If you sold them in the morning, you definitely won. If you sold at the bottom here, you would have been down about 100%. 200% at 90 and then you'd be back to break even today. So that's if you sold calls literally like right here into the low, even on that pop. Not bad, I guess. going back to monthly can i interest you in shares my friend it's definitely not as exciting you know you don't get to feel like a real badass trader it actually makes you feel like a you have an airp card but i'm telling you it's a great experience fun for the whole family it's safe uh you know so i don't know monthly daily maybe we should think forever shares and you can ditch them at any point it's very very good I mean, you might like straight up after you start trading shares, you might develop knee problems. Like I've noticed my joints don't work the same since I've been doing shares. I don't know. I feel a little slower uh, and I have had to have more fiber. But besides that, it's, uh, you know, it's been good because some trades that like would have killed me. I'm like, oh, thank God I had shares and then it could easily like get back up there. Oh, it's not too bad. Options is for all stars. Now, I feel like what daily options is, it's like taking the NBA and then blending it with LA Fitness Gym. And then it's just random teams. And then players just sub in randomly. So, like, one moment you got Giannis in there, and but then Giannis is playing against, like, a 16-year-old high school basketball player. 
And then, you know what I'm saying? And then sometimes the team is just like it's straight up the Nets versus a 16-year-old basketball team and then vice versa. But then sometimes, like, it'd be like four 15-year-olds and then Kevin Durant versus, like, five 70-year-olds. So it's like, I don't know. I, you know what I'm saying? I think that's how it is. Like, I don't I, – I, so I don't – it's like it is kind of all-star, but then it's also kind of like, wait a minute. So it's sometimes like you're just going against the up the uh, up against the best, sometimes the worst, and it's just like this is a really, really awkward balance. And then you're like, this is definitely going to lead to some problems. <laughs> you're like, how in the world is Kevin Durant playing against a 70 year old at LA Fitness right now? Who is sanctioning this game? And then you got people on the side just looking through the windows, betting on it too. That's the crazy part. They're like, oh, yeah, I'm short in the fucking 80-year-olds right now. Uh -huh. And then you're like, nah, I think that 16-year-old is about to hit buckets over KD. I don't care if KD's guarding him. If he hits it, it pays out 1,000 to 1. So I don't know, man. I don't know. Can I parlay it? Yeah, we got you got, we could ghetto spread this shit. All right, run it. And the 70 year olds win. Well, yeah, because, I mean, maybe KD just realizes he's like, why am I even going this hard at LA Fitness? I got to be prepared for the regular season and playoffs. So, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. It's a, it's a really confusing game, but it's a lot of fun. Honestly, it would probably be, this would probably be the best new sport in America besides pickleball. Mm hmm. How best way? I think it is. I think it is the best way to explain it. I'm glad we someone brought that up. Thank you for the spark. Mm -hmm. Fastest growing sport, yeah. Pickleball. If you didn't know. Pickleball, will you pick it up? Uh, I don't think you should go around asking guys that. But I don't know. I don't know. How are you going to pick up my pickleball? What the fuck did you just say? Chill, bro. It's Friday. I understand, but calm down. You know, fat pickleball is the fastest growing sport in America. I heard. I think I heard that. I don't know anything else about it. How did 31% of chatters vote green market close today? Is that your way of saying today is bullish? Because we are still down 1.5%, man. This is the... I the, Every day is so awkward, man. You have no idea. This is like the weirdest thing. That's like watching a basketball game. And then Kyrie Irving scores like 40 points in the fourth quarter. And then you still lose by 60. <laughs> this is every single day. That's what it's been on, man. We are legitimately at the low of yesterday where people are like, what the hell is happening? And now everyone's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You see this move? So it's actually kind of crazy. Every single day, bro. <laughs> you were right. Every time you run up, they're like, yeah. What now, son? What now? I'm like, this is confusing. Don't worry, the Bears are going to do it too. We're going to gap up to like 4,100 and then fall back to like 4020 and then be like, I told you the economy and the debt was unsustainable. Mm hmm. What did you think was going to happen? Of course, this was going to turn out like that. Duh. Like, what? I didn't know that. I guess. Recession back on, uh, it depend <laughs> depends what hourly time frame you're looking at, sir. My six-month outlook is very shaky. Um, <laughs> pretty much. Hold on, let me finish this beef jerky. I'll give you a good answer. I'm surprised we stayed here. It's been, what, almost 30 minutes now? Um, but 
I think six months is going to be very, very data dependent. We'll have a better idea after March in the summary of economic projections, but I think it's going to look a, a little bit like last year in the term and the sense of big rallies and then big rug pulls uh, up until we actually get stability until we know they're going to pause. But pretty much, I mean, I'm not until the yield curve. I mean, and the sad part is six months from now, my yield curve theory time frame will be it'll it'll start hitting. So. But like I'm saying, it's very shaky. I don't know how it's going to play out moment for moment. I think, you know, just like the rally we've seen in this first two months, I think you're going to get, if we end up pausing rates at some point throughout this year, then we're going to get another rally like that. And then on the other end of it, though, if things come down way harder than expected to where they're cutting, but it's because things are doing bad, then we're going to be probably looking into uh, that recession everybody was talking about. But I think it's all up in the air right now, and it just it reminds me a lot of last year, where you know big rallies, big pulls, uh, everybody just taking one data set, taking it out of context, like uh, like that one lady said earlier today, and then just straight up reacting and, and extrapolating to the future, and then once the next data set that finally hits, where you could do that same thing, everybody changes their mind again until we actually see whether there is real earnings contraction, whether we really watch if inflation goes down, how the consumer does real estate, and everything else. Pull it, Raul. Raul. Raul, rug pull, Raul. I right, see my uh, long term. I think you know the answer if you know to ask me it by calling it long term. It's on my Instagram. I don't think we've updated it on the website in a little bit. Uh, if you go to the main channel, my latest video in December, I gave an update on my long term portfolio. And I haven't changed anything except selling HBI. And then you could go through every single play, dividend yield, all of that. I get those spreaded the Netflix. Calling GM on the watch list. Looks like we have 30 minutes remaining, Chad. 30 minutes remaining. We in it for the long haul. Hey, man, it's going to be, I mean, I think there's going to be a lot of trading opportunities and you're going to get to uh, really see a lot this year. Last year was already a big learning lesson, but I think it's kind of amazing how quick everybody went from like historically awful year, so many learning lessons to just like everyone said, fuck it real quick. <laughs> it's like we really thought it was going to be very, 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 very bad. And then just, all right, we all good. So just come in with the same mentality from the last half of, of 2022, and I think you're going to be good. You know what I'm saying? I think just play defense, be wise, go slow, get one foot in, one foot near the exit, and just understand how emotion. Don't forget how emotional the markets can be, and hopefully you're making decisions based on, you know, emotions are always going to be factored into it, but hopefully – you have other things besides emotions that make your decisions for you. That make decisions like money. I was going to go with your brain and critical thinking, but okay, you could do that too, Gucci Mane. Some of y'all are Gucci Mane, you know that? Some of y'all, you act like rappers without knowing it. <laughs> Scare money, don't make money. I think Bandman Kevo said that, to be honest. What's his name? The money bag guy? Or who's that other guy? The guy who's a... 
They're like Kobe, like 24, like Kobe. <laughs> he, always, he always making videos. Rejected. I mean, at least the bonds went up. Money Man. Yeah, his name's Money Man. Yeah, you got, I'm going to call y'all Money Man. Or Gucci Mane. I like Gucci Mane, though. Like, straight up, Gucci Mane's awesome. You think you're going to join the commies? Do they have, like, a membership? How do you do that? I didn't even know that was possible. That's crazy. They got membership clubs. That's it. And you just start. Do you get a hat or something? Do you have to change what you wear? Or Will they let me in with Jordan shorts? Man. I'm loving it. I'm watching this one right here. 20 to 40. Back down to 18. Up to 40. <laughs> 397. To 30, back up to 60, now down to 26. Man, this happens every day, too. We should. I'm going to start doing this for you every day. I'm going to just start just, just monitoring some of them a little more closely. Since it's now the new, the new range. What time is it? Cocaine Bear looks horrible. I don't think I'm going to watch it. I think the title is funny, but that plot doesn't seem that... <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen, but I don't know. I feel like I could anticipate a majority of what that movie would be about. And, yeah, I don't know. I just don't see it. I don't know how what would even happen. I guess maybe it, it makes you think a little bit. No, it was an actual movie. I thought people were trolling me, too. And then I saw a Bloomberg article on it. People are talking about it. There was a Super Bowl ad, and I'm like, what? And that's it. You're back here. 39.66. So 39.60 VWAP, worst case. If we go even lower than here, then it gets actually nutty. It's a true story. Oh. <laughs> That's cool. You're watching Laker Warriors. There's another Redfin commercial. They really need to stop spending money. That's it. Them in Meta. It's good for them, though. Good for them. Redfin earnings was horrible. I still can't even believe that ran like that, though. Thank God for good cost basis. We'll touch 3,300 by June. Well, we will see, man. I think there's gonna there's just a lot on the table right now, you know? There is a lot on the table. Hmm. 
that sucks. I got to close out this bond too. And then my ETH isn't going to roll over. The square is up too. Bro, look at that. Right down to 3960. My goodness. My goodness. Kramer said it's a bull trade. You don't get the active trader trades? What do you mean? Oh, that DXCM. I wanted to close that one out. Give me $5, Habibi. A big moves there. Well, we'll see Monday. I mean, I think the only risk to... Uh, the only risk to Monday is uh, global tensions... Active Trader will just slow your computer down as long as you just make sure you're on the right end of that. I'm going to close out the Dexcom for a $5 loss. I don't want to deal with that one. It could flush a little harder in the close. We're going to see... And I could have made more off of it, but I'm going to close out the square to 160 from yesterday. And then hopefully we could just hold less now that other stuff is starting to come back. I think Robinhood still sells the zero days. I'm not sure. At the time. I don't know. Mm. Robin Hood does not. Oh, I thought they do. Did they change that? They're like, we would love your business. We ain't going to close your shit out. Just promise to stay with us, please. Mm. I think I'm going to hold the Zim. Too much air. I think that's it. So then pretty much I'm not, I don't think I'm holding anything new on the week. We got rid of AMD, Square, the Dexcom, the LMT, still have the banks. And then the AKM, AKM got murdered. But I still like him. My ZN expires in three days. So I'm either it's either I could close it out now and kind of like the ETH situation that could end up benefiting me if I do, because like the ETH just locked me in there now. And even though ETH kept dropping, I could have benefited off of it. But now the contract's not tradable. And then uh, we're going to reopen up a couple of them. Um, but it could be good. I might want to wait through some of this. Yeah, it popped up and then came down. I don't know if that's that. It could be the other contract. The fuck is that? News?
New Timmy tweet. ZN and ETH are not three months. We've had them for a couple of months. But, like, I did extra on that, but the ZM is from December. So, technically, it has been about three months. That's just the problem. Better to wait. Yeah, I'm about to do it, I think. There's half a percent with the market. I would like some upside. It kind of pisses me off there. Yeah, we'll do. I'm gonna close out the ZN. Sadly, it's gonna be fifteen thousand. And then now we're gonna roll over. I'm gonna wait till Monday though, because I want my other shit to reset too and with the E. What happened in the market? Came back. Is this zero day option? It could be. It could be. Have to go on a street. God willing. God willing. God willing. And that I mean, I think the Nasdaq, the bonds is so sad. This could could have taken it crazy. H expirations. I'm not too sure. I think if you want to check, just go like this. Go on TD, and put slash put whatever future you want. And then it'll say, make sure you do all of them. Some of like you could do three month, but just do all. And it will tell you every symbol. So right now, the next contract after these expire in three days, it's going to be the. Uh... Yeah, damn. And these ones are up. Honestly, I'm kind of mad we didn't get into those. But it'll tell you which contract and how many days left there are on it. So like slash Z and M23, 95 days. That'll take you into uh, just around March or June. And then this one will be in uh, September, 187 days. And then when you want to buy it, you just enter in the ticker like ZNM23. That takes you to the new contract. So it's the same thing with the NASDAQ. It's the same thing with the yen. You could do it with all of them. The 10 Y is every month. Mm. How much time? We got 17 minutes. Okay. My 400 call, it went up 100% at one point throughout the day. Like we bought it around here. And then it went up to $18 right here. And then you never saw the day of light again. That's it. So about a $9 loss for the stock market to be higher. Now is my chance. Mm 
Then again, all right, you're coming down a little. That's just today's a cuck, bro. I mean, you have 15 more minutes, but even if it ends up at the low end, I mean, I don't think we're going to even move that crazy. That's it. Unless we hit the 200-day and then just flush through and close below the 200-day, then that'll be wild, actually. Now I want a uh, Chick-fil-A. You were right. I was a little bit delayed on the 30 minutes, but pretty much the opposite of leading into power hour did play out. But this 39.6, man, that was it. I kind of wish I bought that contract I was looking at, but, you know, I have other things to gamble on like bonds. It's a different lifestyle, I guess. That's cool though. So we're gonna come back Monday. My ETH is gonna be closed, and then the bonds, and I'm gonna have a lot more uh, to do. I don't know. We either grab the same rollovers instantly next week. That is gonna be the discussion, or hopefully, I hope I'm right by next week, and next week goes up, because then we'll be able to take a lot of really good rollovers there. Because I'm assuming then if the bonds even go uh, a little lower will be good, or if at least Ethereum bounces on that week with the market, we'll be able to take advantage of it. But uh, definitely, after that now, we're going to have a lot of capital freed up. Mm. No, ETH positions closed out. 21,000 loss on that one. So even then, 21,000 loss on that, 15 on the other one. It's like 35K of losses uh, that I plan to roll over, but um, no, the NQ, I don't have to roll over for a while. I still have a month or so on that one, but those ones ran out of time, so I could re-roll over on them, but I'm pretty much going to get all the money back there. Uh, there's a lot more on that, and then we go from there. So pretty much I gave up the December profit that we realized uh, on those two plays, but I'm definitely going to get back into the bonds and then the Ethereum one. I'm hoping it rips so I could get a way better short. Other than that, though, I think we'll be good with everything else. Use Camry, maybe even a used Tesla, maybe a used Tesla. But with all of them, though, I mean, we still had a, like, that would have been more disastrous if, like, before I took any of those plays, we were coming off of a fucking, <laughs> we were coming off of a big run. So otherwise, that's what kind of sucks. Cause I'm viewing it in retrospect compared to my, uh, compared to my other December futures play. Remember, I, we did 30K in two days, realized, and then I opened up the bonds. The bonds, I could have fucking, uh, I could have walked away with that one with profit, but that's, that's what I get for trying to push it. And then Ethereum was, I think, just wrong place, wrong time. MNQ says 20H, 21 days, really? Oh, yeah. For now, it is. My, my, my NQ is still 21 days as well, too. McDonald's, Bowen, ETH. Bowen didn't hurt me as bad, but McDonald's was the hit list and ETH for sure. Bowen, like, we're still, we're down 400 bucks on that one. That one was like, no, I think in the beginning it was down like 1500 or so, but that one wasn't there. I think ETH was just kind of shady with everything going on coming into the end of the year, higher interest rates, all the Sam Bankman shit uh, just seemed like it was very, very stable. Um, and then I just took a short, short on that one. I mean, I don't think anybody saw the beginning of the year coming and that's kind of what it was. Land the plane. It's not time yet. We're almost there. No, I didn't sell Zim. I was considering it, but I like how it's holding up. We'll let that one push there. 
No, no, no. You'll be good on the NQ. I'm going to push that NQ, thankfully. I think it expires right around Jerome Powell Day, believe it or not. That's what kind of sucks, bro. All of these play, like, even then, for the damn futures to expire, like, on the bonds and ETH today, pretty much, scammy, bro. Because <laughs> then now the NQ2 will be right around Powell. Super algo, damn, right below 396 now. CPI is March 14th. I think that's 21 days, though. Or just under. So at least we'll get CPI covered in that. But then we'll have to roll over before Powell. Mm. And then I sold out of the square today. A bunch of stuff around there. And then we'll see how next week plays out. If the velocity picks up next week, that'll be crazy. But like I'm saying, I think you'll get some upside. So CFTC future position update. At long last, the CFT commitment of traders report has been updated, though it only shows positions through January 31st, the day of the last Fed meeting. It'll take another few weeks to get fully up to speed. And there is a huge position on bond shorts ahead of the Fed. It's crazy. So, yeah, we don't have all of them, but you got a little bit. A shorted ETH through Ethereum futures. On the CBOE. So, it's a fully regulated Wall Street contract. Our NFT is an upsided downtrend. What the fuck does that mean, sir? <laughs> what is an upsided downtrend? I know. I'm gonna short. So, yeah, yeah. Hi, my name's Chat GPT. I want to come alive. How are you? Ask me a question. Just kidding. I can't answer that. Can talk. Contact the financial advice. Uptrend, downtrend, downtrend. Up, 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 down, trending, uptrend, upsided down. Hola, mi amo Joshua. <laughs> Is there a Kabibi? <laughs> Woo! Okay, we're back. We're back. That one got me. Sorry, we had to reset real quick. The upside of down trend safe is frozen water. They were like, yeah, it fell into the water that was frozen. But the, the water was frozen. Google it. Man, Google even dropped 2% today. Oh, shit. Okay. okay, I added 100 shares of Google to the upside. Again, I wanted Google below the 90. I don't know. I'm going to kind of bet a little bit on this... Uh, Idea for next week. 
My shit is lagging. Mm. Amazon pot. Everything just popped again. You guys just see these 396s, dog. They went up to a dollar twenty, and now they're back to twenty cents. They hate everybody, everybody. And then the three ninety, the three ninety seven. That one got robbed. That one was absolute robbery, because now he don't even get to come back to life. The three nine six, he's still he's he's fucked, low key. The nice move. Apple is popping though, real big. Oh, where did I get the Googles at? 89.06. Take it. Could have been worse. Oh, Federate Monitor. Damn, that's at 41? What? Wait, was that right? Or I don't think I refreshed it. That's insane. Well, anyways. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're making our final approach as we make our financial... Oh, uh, wait. Investor Gerber to withdraw activist board seat. A little bit of turbulence there with Tesla coming in now. But as we make this final approach, uh, we're going to be landing here into the second link terminal. Second link terminal in description. That's going to be your nightly watch list and main channel layover around uh, 4 p.m. Pacific time. You got a two-day layover here. Uh, coming into the weekend, and then we're going to be taking off promptly around 6 a.m. Monday morning. So we make this final approach into San Diego International Airport. It's about 59 degrees, slightly cloudy, a little bit windy on and off range there. A uh, good day unless you thought the zero-day options wouldn't cuck you on premium. Uh, but overall, inflation is still kind of coming back up here, and investors got to chill. But we are no longer under COVID guidelines, so no masks are required. But we do ask that you exit one row at a time and drop a GG on your way out. As always, we appreciate you guys of business if you're interested in your cold rapid awards program card please flag down your flight attendant and we'll get you that as soon as possible as always thank you for flying with the coat and hopefully have a wonderful evening let's go baby bring it home bring it home yes ross gerber Withdrew activist board seat. He says Tesla plans to address succession and must concerns. And he spoke with Tesla this week before dropping active board uh, seat or board pursuit. Man, what a little bitch. <laughs> he was crying when it was at 120. And then now he's like, it's fine now. It's fine. That's, you know, I'm actually they're really doing good now. And they're really, in the last three weeks, they've really done a lot. You know, they've really, really, like, you know, I'm actually really confident after not being confident. But now I'm confident, you know, because the price made me confident. So, you know what I'm saying? One minute! Go, 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 go. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you've made it this far. The week has been crazy, bro. Right now, this is your third red week in a row. Three out of eight weeks now will have been red. This is almost the final full week of February. You got to wrap it up. You got to make up your mind. There's not going to be that much earnings. Next week, you got a lot of data, but not the crazy one. CPI. Then you got pal and everything. Oh, there it is. Ding, 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 
Wow, we did it, we made it, we did it, we made it. Let's go, baby. I need my GGs. Let's go, YouTube. Let's go, Switch. It don't matter if you made money or lost money. I know you learned something. All my people who contributed. All everybody in the game. Staying in the game. Making it almost through the first quarter. Good game, baby. Let's go. All my laggers. All my lurkers. All my lovers. Don't you be shy. You made it this far. All the members. All the non-members. All the stream alerts. All the free long alerts, baby. Let's go. God bless you. Good game. Everybody in the game. Everybody who had fun. Let's go. Are you kidding me? Good game. And they have me some fun, bitch. I'm back. I ain't done really rapping about fun, talking yields and the bus with the curve at the front. Oh, let's go, Twitch. I see you. Amen. Amen. Let's go. Wow, another week. We made it, baby. We made it. Let's go. Good game. Nah, no, let's play. Let's go. Are you ready? Are you ready? I hope you got stamina, man. Good game. Wow. I need me to rock. You won't see me a lot. Monday through Friday, you need me. Let's talk. Let's go, man. I don't want to I love. I don't know why. I've been. I've been really liking. Uh, you know the. I like making the noise to it. I have a lot of fun. <laughs> You're like, all right, man. That's cool. That's cool, Chad. That's it, man. That's it. It's Friday, though. I'm not even supposed to tell you this. I wasn't selling. Oh, we still did 2,000. Let's go. <laughs> Y'all were slacking there earlier. Amen. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about, bro. That's what I'm talking. Amen. I don't want to rock that. Pull up in a bit, buddy. Y'all put the top back. Hit me with the divvy. I don't even need the NASDAQ. Stop playing with me. Anyways, I love you, man. Thank you guys for being here once again. I'm not going to tell you to check out all the links and do all of that. Again, man, like, I honestly, like, you know, explore life a little bit. Don't be afraid to explore. Get out of your comfort zone and check out the description. It's actually pretty dope. You'll see a lot of things. You know, you got a prayer request wall. Even if you don't feel it, man, I'm praying for y'all. I love you. Thank you if you've been praying for me, man. You know, I really asked for a lot of prayers last year, and they worked. You know that? Y'all were amazing, so thank you, man. Don't forget about your boy. Keep praying for me, too, man. I got y'all, Chad, but that's the day. So, for real, thank you for being here. I hope I made the most of your time. Honestly, I really hope you were able to not only get information, but smile and not get caught up into the craziness of the market on a day-to-day. -day. And I really hope it was informational and able to help you out and that I didn't waste a second of your time and you got some sort of value on some sort of end, man. But I hope we see you again. Uh, and really, I see all of you all here every day, man. It's beautiful, the community that we have. So, for real, again. Again, thank you to all of you and everybody who's a part of it and makes the most of it and has the mutual respect that we share for both each other and the market and the opportunity and time that we have to make the most out of all these opportunities. So, Chad, I love you. God bless you. Thank you for doing what you have done, all of y'all, man. And God bless the call, baby. We made it. We did it. We made it. Welcome to Friday. Or it's over now. You better re relax. And I hope you enjoy your weekend, man, okay? I hope you enjoy. It could have been worse. Amen, bro. It could have been worse, man. It could have been worse, bro. Amen. It could have been worse. You know what I'm saying? Amen. It could have been worse. So that's it, bro. That's it. I love y'all. God bless you. I love y'all. I hope you enjoyed it. That's that's all, though, okay? I don't have anything else for you. Uh, watch it. I don't know, man. Should we hit them with deep songs? I have my lineup is saying deeps. It's Friday, though, so uh, I don't know. Oh, I don't have the book on me, though. Damn it. Damn it. Isn't it crazy? I feel like it was just Friday. Yeah, right? I feel like we are going to have our Friday Bible study. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, I am going to eat beef jerky. I'm contemplating ordering Chick-fil-A. You know, I was kind of hoping my girlfriend was listening earlier and was just going to fucking bring me Chick-fil-A, but I guess she's not that good of a girlfriend. Hey, you know, it's okay. It's okay. Room for improvement is always great. I'm going to get in trouble for that comment. Uh, but I love you all. So if you want to stick around, I'd love to have you here. Um, we're going to kick it. I don't have my book with me, man. It really feels like it was Friday already. So we're going to see, but hey, you know, we'll leave it there. We'll, we'll leave it there for now. Oh, you want strategy EDM? Wow. I haven't heard strategy EDM in a while. It hasn't even showed up on my list, bro. Hey, I'm going to say that's a good one, bro. I like that song. You know that? I do like it. That's a good song. Mm-hmm. All right, man. Well. Yo, you like this one? I do. Yeah. Alright.
chain costs a black, you could call it thing crypto Strategy, EDM, buy when it dips slow Hands made the All diamonds right. for I got I'll it right on back. my wrist, bro Did I love it for you. my family and what matters hey, like a wind slow hey, Why you think the reason won't be smaller than the go. wind shit We just getting started, I ain't even on my fifth gear That's we me just if I bought it, let's say it's been a good year Who keep buying tops because that shit over your head, bro I ain't with the problems, I just mind my own like crypto Calling out my guy because my buddy in my pistol Stop it, why you lying, why you talking all that shit, bro Only way I'm not dope if you looking for some crystal I got condos in apartments and I'm by your crib Always sunk up advances in the efforts for the fiscal Trying to bring Nigel, I'ma tell you that's additional Ain't tired, I read my Bible, it ain't tight, you jerk your dick, bro Sorry, that was yours, let him on, pray to God He don't talk, flip a coin, cop a car, flip a coin, clap him all You a boy, I'm a guard, you a core, I'm a shard You employed, I'm the boss Somebody should've told you who you fucking with I feel I'm j Pal. one day I say the government Learned it from the street, you cut the rate till it stop bubbling Sound like I'm talking drugs, but I'm just talking about the policy Money print monopoly, MMT philosophy Bitch, I got degrees, but I make more than the whole faculty See, when your feelings, that ain't really good for profiting You can use a feel or maybe go and take a jag of shit See, I can do a lot of things you can't We ain't talking unless you working at the bank Nah, I could get a bag a hundred different ways I got options, I ain't talking about this church <laughs> Why you looking like you got something to say? If you eating, why you staring at my plate? It's just another day. If you're sleeping, then I'm probably getting packed. Brought a tear to mama's eyes, we should see how far we came Another prayer in the evening, ain't promised a day So there's money that I'm saving and some money on the way Another day, another season, bitch I ain't afraid Cause the Lord can give a lie and the Lord can take away yeah. Yeah. On my job, feeling joke, caught a million for the whip Twenty dollars for the clothes, so I don't forget the days that I barely stay the flow Hope you picking up the game, I ain't saying this shit to glow Don't trust him, don't eat, it don't matter if you dining with the king Cause your weapon take a kill you before you blink that's a pride, and it's talking about the great. Crazy, but I'm diligent. Contrary in the dissident. I keep the peace, don't be naive. I'm moving like a militant. I translated transitory, there was no equivalent. Everything except the president is unprecedented. Damn, <laughs> you might get that in a minute. We're on a second, listen, I son him, that's repetition. The father got all the knowledge and granted me with the wisdom. The truth is still how to swallow, ain't following what I'm spitting. Valley of the death, I be walking, chilling. Seeing what I see, yeah, caught it. Vision, got a lot of skies, but they taught me. Lessons. We gon' take it far if that's what God's willing Morning I be eating, money still my back Take a knee and thank the man, then I get back to the church Seeing houses in the evening, they go to LA Ride a tear to mama's eyes, you should see how far we came Wait, wait, ain't got time to even finish hooks I'm busy making plays and just waiting to get the puts Ain't caught up in what they talking, cause often they overlook The progress we making often and focus on what we can You don't bring now, don't eat That's reality, that shit ain't up to me You can look but that don't mean you really see Price inflated, but still the land of the free. Fuck you, you ain't feeling it. Me and you, no semblance. Mama was an immigrant, and look at what we did with it. You look like you think you quit, but nobody gon' give a shit. That's between the future, you. I hope that you could deal with it. Damn, <laughs> I should cool it for a minute. Cause I ain't really tripping. It's different to feel or hitting. I deal with the dealer different and wholesaling for the difference. I got a tree planting trees and it's feeding my children. Wake up in the morning, I be eating. Money still my back. Take a knee and thank the man. Then I get back to the track. Seeing houses in the evening. They go to LA, brought a tear to mama's eyes, we should see how far we came Another prayer in the evening, ain't promised a day So there's money that I'm saving and some money on the way Another day, another season, bitch I ain't afraid Cause the Lord can give a lie and the Lord can take away yeah. Fucker, but I'm eating, seeking, scheming. I 
I get paid for sleeping, dreaming, hating for no reason. You a demon, leeching, uh, heating, yeah. wishing you could be me. Yeah. Ain't easy. I told you I'ma do this. Don't forget this shit a marathon. You make it move, but stay in the same place. Your West a Peloton. Make a hundred off a phone call. Now that's a telethon. Benjamin's Jefferson. Yolo to a ghetto spread. Yeah, you know I'm in it there. Who's been like a Trinidad? I'm moving like a president. Can kill me like a Kennedy. I'm trying to be a better me, but they just keep on tempting me. Release the demon, set him free. He come back, bring me 50 G's. Nowadays it's hella smoky. Game like I'm from Babylon. My capital got stamina. I wrap it up in lemon. Talking in new blabbering, but I'm not understanding, bro. You hating and complaining, but you still watching the channel, bro. I do this for the real ones, but the hate is still involved. I just close another building, I'ma give it to my bros. It just took a little patience and it took a little hoe. Yeah, the faith is never wasted if you reach it for a goal. Do this for the real ones, but the hate is still involved. I just close another building, I'ma give it to my bros. It just took a little patience and it took a little hoe. Yeah, the faith is never wasted if you reach it for a goal. It's a cop. 2020, baby. Who the fuck you? <laughs> I, I did what they said I wanted though And where the fuck is y'all now, who the fuck are yo? They was at the bar, I was chilling in my room Now they wanna call like the soccer back to move Said I'd take it far, but I ain't take it up with yo Man, get up out my way, I ain't trying to be real Been hated on before, what you really wanna do? That ain't stop me getting more, couldn't stop me making moves I, I look around and see you, now I ain't see you in the gym You back down, but ass had the reason was you quit I'm back now, now back down, got got up in my shit I'm a cold, I ain't a crib, ain't a blood, but got the drip I got brothers in the streets, I got brothers in the banks I got houses on the beach, properties in other states Get the knowledge back for free, while I be screaming God is great I believe and I create, and see the need to replicate Lost a lot of shit, but I guess that's part the plan I had loved ones up in dip, got some people in the can People try to steal my shit, now they reaching for my hand I feel bad they ain't around, but they ain't hold it, let me down she lose a 100k, the next day I get it back I made millions with some trades, I made millions with these tracks Playing like just like a game in the bank, showing my stats Shit you say I'm calling cap, you can play but you just mad Did what they didn't want to do Now I'm buying cribs when I ain't even need them all I was just a kid, they said I didn't have a clue But they saw just what I did, now they trying to do it too Trying to go to heaven, I like living with a view So I'm trying to build a building, maybe cop a badly too I guess you see I'm mean, but still want a lot of food I guess the harvest plenty and the work is always few Bitch. Feel like World War II. I don't know what that shit look like. It's <laughs> a cow, baby. Aye. Yeah. Feel like World War II. But we know what that shit look like I guess we really did live a good life But now it's inside Unless you get time People buying everything so they can sell it online Come on dawg, you wouldn't even need that TP How that EDD turn into PS5s and TVs Another enemy that can't be seen but just believe me Everybody lying but that truth ain't always easy People without the money ain't freaking out no more as long as you qualify, then you don't pay back the loan Bet like they companies, not the ones that need it most And the people with everything keep on tweeting about those Whoa, this shit getting obvious They don't really give a fuck, they care about if they profiting I ain't never been the one to bitch about conglomerates But this shit getting ominous, my mom won't come outside again Some days I'm waking up and I feel hustled Days is kinda jumbled I know it keep me safe, but it ain't keep me safe from nothing It left me by myself, that in itself was kinda troubling this shit really puzzling How a piece of paper on my face protect the public When the public is in disarray and don't follow instructions Half the people work, the rest complain and make assumptions I'm trying hard to see this, but it's mutating or something Damn <laughs> So all the points I'm bringing up is sounding kinda pointless now Why you think I do not give a fuck, it's sounding poignant now They really test me everywhere, my patience and appointments now Guess you never miss it till it's gone I never had so many people tell me I was wrong They don't want shit in your head, but they want shit in your arm I wish a lot of bigger problems had the same alarm But nah, you hearing what you wanna see Started out with little shit, but now it feels like everything Everybody wants a meme, or maybe get some shit for free It sounded dumb, cause freedom means you still a leaf fell from the tree <laughs> But you can take your time and shit We all gon' fail without objective values I'ma rhyme the shit It's been a year, we feel the same We still on Trump and Biden shit The people change, the issue same We just turn up blood out of the way Damn, conformity is crazy All I gotta do is lie to you And they would pay me That they can stop the views If the truth could make them angry It's crazy what we do in co-world Like it's the 80s So hate me, how would hate me too 
It's easier to believe a lie than believe that we've been fooled And I would love to blame the next guy, I'm just like you But all of us to blame, we left our God and how we move Damn, bro Damn, bro <laughs> God bless y'all Hey yeah. What is that love in the box they never seen me? So you tell me what that mean Make sure they come and get clapped on stream Bitch, this a gang, this is a C.O.S. team Got dreams, talking M.K. things Solomon David gets these are his things I don't like to play with them spend things They don't got patience like a bad Where's movement? I know, you want movement, you want money's gone I know there's a lot, but I, I like, I listen, dog, I could, I could, what you want me to do? Like, you, I could play the music all day, man. Like, we could just sit here and vibe if you really want to. We've done it. I mean, you know what to honor them is the fact that we all have been able to vibe and that we have all got to listen to a lot, everything we've already heard. You know what I'm saying? So that's a blessing, man. Finger to the sky right there. But like, you know what I, that, that is a blessing. Diamonds, there's a lot, but it's just like, hey, I'm glad we could share the moment, Chad, you know? I am glad that we could share the moment. Happy Friday. But then I was saying, like, if I did that for too long, then it's going to be too long. I wouldn't have time. And I, I want, you know, I, I'm here to talk to y'all on Friday, bro. We made it. So it's a big deal. But then I wouldn't have time for this, too. I wouldn't have time to show you this one. I wouldn't, you know, it's soon. It's for you. Oh, sh don't, sh don't tell him. Don't tell him. Yeah, I drive fast, but I talk slow. That's some sad best. We still grow How you did that Only God knows okay. It's a big bad But we got more On the way Another day It's a blessing Blessing baby YouTube.com Slash The Stock market We have the news And we have Future And other things Tell them It's quiet Yeah you can't hear it all And I'm fucking it up you know what I'm saying? I ain't hating, son. I ain't hating. They real. Usually the fakest one. Same applies to me. So just judge me by the shit I done. Trying to keep it me, but they jealousy a loaded gun. Statistically, most is killed by their own. So you better check your weapons instead of watching the throne. Best lessons being tested and finding peace on your own. But divided can't survive it. I'm talking about your own. Oh, I can't. It is quiet. Is it really quiet? Listen to this one. That's worth it to homie. Okay, stop it, stop it, stop it. That's it. That's all you get. That was a late, way more than like. I don't know how good it. I don't even know what it sounded like to you. You know that because it was quiet. And I didn't want to mess with no audio there. I just played it as loud as possible because I have to play it from a like an old record player because of Uncle and like and he can't. I, that's why I I made sure he was he's still passed out right now. So, but nah, man, it's good. Bro, the battle was in your dome. I got it, but first was wrong. The power was in the thong. That's word of the homie Paul. My prophet make them appalled. I'm talking about my checks and talking about my God. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Honestly, Chad, I'm just hyped to be here, bro. I'm just hyped to be here, Chad. What's up? It's Friday. I am. I told we already talked about it a little today, too, man. This month, year, whatever. I don't even know if it's a month or a year. It's fast, bro. You know that? Another Friday and you... So, Chad, how you living? I got a couple of things for you. I don't know. Obviously, I have some questions for you. And then uh, I also have, I, I have things I could share with you. The bad news, like I told you, I don't have the book on me. Honestly, it's kind of crazy. The thing, I don't have it on me, bro. Like, I straight up, I should be... But because I finished the book, that's why I don't have it on me. I already ran through that, literally, the first dump I took after Friday's stream, bro. I just read that. Even before I was taking the dump, I was just laying down, reading it. And then I read it, right? I said, like, bathroom time is very important. FCC says Tegna deal isn't consistent with the public interest. Oh, man. You know, how about some bear talk? <laughs> Is that because they because they do coke now or do they eat it? I don't know. I'm not watching the movie. I don't know. I might watch if I I don't know how bored I am in life. I feel like that's the first saga of idiocracy. This is how you know we are on the path of idiocracy, bro. 
You know that, right? Like movies used to have a title. Shit. They tell you don't judge a book by its cover. I don't know how to even judge a, a fucking movie called Cocaine Bear. I really like seriously. That's that's already difficult right there because I'm like, I wonder what this like. What if it's like a deeper meaning and it's a meta? You see, that's how you know I've done too much philo in my life. You see that we doing a lot of philo because I'm like, what if that's like an allegory of something? And then the bear, like if I watch that movie with my Arab dad, he would be like, this is one. This movie is about Jesus. They took the story of Jesus. This one, you see the bear, and then the bear came, and then the bear died. He come back. There's a father, son. He say, I tell you, it's all about the Bible. They copy, they copy the Bible. All of them copy the Bible. You know it. Every movie. Every movie. Every, I, don't, I don't know. Do you guys have Arab dads who tell you that or Arab people? Because that's what my dad says about everything. And it's funny, though, because now I be doing the same thing. And it's kind of low-key true, man. But like, nah, like that's that's it. Any any anyway. So I was, gee, you guys got me ranting by bringing up cocaine bear, man. It's, I think all religious people, yeah. Well, well, why did I just exclude this to my to my Middle Easterns? I'm sorry. I'm sorry to myself. I'm sorry to you. Yeah, right. Straight up. That's just like the mad religious people. I don't even want to call them religious. I just think, cause shit, bro. I be saying it too sometimes now. Cause some movies, I'm like, really though, this is the Bible remixed. Okay, I get it. Is the Bible featuring, uh, I don't even know, like, who's a famous actress now? Sadly, Amber Heard comes to mind, but that's awful. Anyways, but like I was telling you, I don't have the book. I don't have it on me. I read it all, and last Friday we got to read that book, and it was very good. Oh, man, I liked it a lot. That was very good. I could share with you some stuff, but anyways, I have that I have that for you. We could We could talk about some other things, I'm sure. Like I said, I'm very hyped to be here. And so on that note, my friend, what's the plan, bro? What's the plan for the weekend, Chad? Oh, man. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What do we got? It was deep. The cocaine bear? I don't I can't even believe I I feel uncomfortable saying it. Like, I feel uncomfortable talking about something called cocaine bear. Like... And I'm surprised it's not a rapper, to be honest, because that's the only type of like brashness I would see. Salsa lesson at 630. Still on vacay. B-day party. Gym. A massage. That's enjoyable. Pizza with the kiddos. Do you put pineapples on it? Look at the book last Friday. The one with Ice Cube. <laughs> that's the only Friday, last Friday, next Friday series. I know, sir. Uh, gym, homework and work. <laughs> Going to Rodeo, oh, ro Rodeo Cook-Off in Houston. That's, that's how you know damn well California has polluted me because I just called a Rodeo a Rodeo, and I don't even know, man. That's some stupid fucking rich shit if you ask me. What the, how is ro like, tell me, can you spell out Rodeo for me and compare it to Rodeo? <sighs> amen, amen. Satan, I, dude, I, I was saying I forgot the book. I can, I'm going to talk about it a little, though. I think there's there's a really cool point. I even shared it with my mom. And I, I have I got even a cool verse for you, too. But my mom told me it. Uh, and it was uh, or I shared it with my mom. The, that book was there. We're we going to talk about it. You got Michi's and board games with the ladies that Michi like a mi Michelada where you put the I just like Lucas, man. You know that I told I told you I got a I got Lucas candy for Christmas. That was a really good gift for me going to Mohegan Sun, Mohegan Sun. What's Mohegan Sun? I feel like I should know it. I feel like I said that out loud, and someone's going to be like, you know what Mohegan Sun is? Yeah, I, t I tell you the Mohegan, the Mohegan, Mohegan Sun, come here. You come over here, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story about it. Mohegan Sun, I was with my grandpa one time. I mean, I mean, we, were, we were going outside, and we were, we were, we were walking there on the, on the trail, on a railroad trail, because it's, yeah, and he told me, he said, hey, you look at that, you look up there, you see the moon right there? That's the, it's like the sun. Cause when the moon comes out and then the waves come up and then and then the rocks pull back and then the people come outside and the rooster comes home to roost you're gonna see a lot of stuff there but when you look up into the stars and you see all the fishes it's gonna it's gonna tell you something and you're gonna learn a lot learn a lot about yourself and then everything comes to fruition and that's why you support the unions so they told me it was a casino I said that's a fucking crazy story I didn't know it was a casino. I feel like I should know a Mohegan Sun. Oh, man. You sleeping? I'm cooling. Nothing but cod, family, and friends. Selling eBay stuff to buy some shares. Let's go. Do you need this stuff or not? 
Uh, Hermit, was that you with the Xbox earlier today? I see y'all going through it, man. If you have to go through it, just remember, make sure stuff you ain't going to buy back. That's all. That's my only rule with selling shit. Especially if you're like, I'm going to sell something and then I'm going to go buy a stock with it. You could eventually buy it back, I'm saying, depending. But that's not, I don't want I, ever you to ever do that, actually. And you don't want to be in that mentality. It's just straight up, just make sure it ain't something you're going to buy back. That's all. You can't sell it and be like, I want it again right now. You know, some stuff, is, it's hard depending on what it is. But that's the only rule. I don't think we could buy it back. Are you like, I'm not talking like stock buyback, sir. <laughs> Don't move like you hungry. But yeah, just like, I'm I, I'm not going to let you pawn shit off or at least get out of the pawn mentality. I need to turn you into the guy going to the pawn shop to buy the shit for cheap and selling it for more rather than going somewhere to sell something for low value to get the quick cash rather than not. So that's it. You got to find the balance. You got to find the balance. Made mistake with Redfin, sold out, it got cheaper, went up like crazy. It's okay. It happens. It happens. Believe me. You know, all the talk I give you, you would be surprised. It's a, just a long time, bro. You have a long, long time. But I hope you learn it fast because <laughs> that's it. Everybody, you go through it, I'm telling you, buying and selling. I did that with most things to start off. Mm -hmm. Poker series at Hamul. Hamul in like, like. Like San Diego Hamul? My mom sold yours for 20 with all the games. A few. Oh, your N64? Are they worth a lot now or something? Into the gem trading rabbit holes? Small biz gemologist with cool stones? Wow. I went to, uh, this was in college. It was extra credit at Arizona. So literally in fucking the Dirty T Tucson, bro. They have, like, one of the best gem shows in the world. I remember that. They told us. They were like, you go to this gem show, you get, like, ha you get, you got, we got mad credit for it. And I went. But if you are into the gem selling, you slang in them rocks, bro, and not, like, cocaine bear rocks. I think I've just used way too many keywords in a row. Ding, ding, ding. Anyways, but, yeah, you should check that one out. That's crazy. Selling rocks. You can sell anything, man. Honestly, if you could find so, I mean, I feel like rocks appeals to anybody, technically. I feel like you could convince anybody to buy. I feel like, in a weird way, everybody is not in the market for a rock, but is in the market for a rock. I don't know. I just feel like rocks are pretty universal. You could sell them to pretty much anybody, now that I think about it. Hmm. I don't know. I like it. Tucson. I know. I love Tucson. I miss Tucson. College is cool, man. Life is cool. Being young is cool. You know, so don't stress too much if you're still young. Enjoy life. Most places are cool if you actually think about it and make it cool. Like, I'm sure, bro, like, if I lived in, I don't know, like, fucking, I want to really say Ohio, but I don't know. I feel like there's just a random, like, even Indiana, but I like Indiana, even though I've never been there. But, like, you can make it cool. I would just pretend I'm... In a movie, I'll be like, ah, I'm in Cocaine Bear. Damn, I've used this movie title too much. Get it away from me. Damn it, man. That's the power. That's how you know. They just get you with the title, bro. The movies. Fuck it. This is insane. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. The jewelry guys on TikTok. Yeah. You should go to the Diamond District. I think that's just an experience in New York. Found all my old basketball cards I collected 30 years ago. Oh, uh, you could probably uh, get a lot for that. Dude, they're crazy now. There's a lot of crazy cards. I needed to hear that. I hope, dude, I mean, I think it's very, very, very natural, though. I, mean, I think you should, you know, you won't force it. And it's just like, don't force the money. Don't force having fun. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Because it's on both sides. It's just like, enjoy it. You're young. You're young, man. It's a good time. Good time looking back. I never understood it when I had hair. I think, honestly, I think having a hairline fucks with your memory. And, like, or it makes it fucks with your judgment. <laughs> I was okay. All right, man, because I'm just saying, I knew this. I remember some old dude telling, I had a full hairline, and they're like, hey, you know, you're going to miss, you're going to miss being young. You're going to think 20 years old right now, you know, you better, better, better make, make, make the most of it, huh? 
Here, 2018, 19, 20, 20, 20, 22, 24, 27, 21, 19, whatever it is out there, whatever your heads are working on right now. Oh, man, you're going to you're gonna miss it. Mm-hmm. You'll never go back to being college. College age, a little bit afterwards, too. Even the first four years after college, you're kind of like still. It's just it's life is chill. It's relatively chill. So but I had hair that back then, and I didn't really understand that when people told me. So I don't know. Does anybody in here disc golf? I don't know. The watch flipping TikToks, they're great. All of them. All the wa- There's a lot of watch content out there. But yeah, the, they gave it to me on the quick shorts and I hit them up. Or on TikTok. I haven't seen them on YouTube. Utah. I know Utah's kind of chill. Did I go to old Tucson Studios? Nah, what's that? South Beach Bear. You have a totally different image of the movie. Like, South Beach Bear could be, like, a sports movie. It could be, like, a comedy with, like, a cop and Kevin Hart. Like, I don't know. That could be a lot of things. South Beach Bear. I don't know. I feel like J-Lo, maybe. It could even be, like, a J-Lo movie, like, for old people. I don't know. Is it weird? I saw I saw that one movie on Amazon with J-Lo, and it's just so weird with J-Lo. It's just, like, Jennifer Lopez. I remember I was young watching Jennifer Lopez and now I'm old watching Jennifer Lopez and I don't know how I feel about it and I'm like is it the same I'm like it's the same but it's not the same and it's weird now and then I don't know I feel like I'm in a time capsule Mm mm-hmm it's weird yeah she looked the same but she don't look the same but she looked the same I'm I'm ending it with she looked the same that was a very specific order (laughs) that was not that was not meant that was not rambling. That was like you know what I'm saying? She looked the same, but she don't look the same, but she looked the same. In that like p- period. Oh no, I didn't mean it like that. I meant to like end the sentence. Okay. I've never I've not I I don't think I've ever I don't want that to be misconstrued as me just yelling, period, because someone said that to me. I said, Excuse me? What? I didn't mean to do that. And then I if I you if you hear a period, you keep hearing it. But yeah, South Beach Bear. We'll see. I can't. We've talked about this movie title too much. Way too much. What else we got for the weekend? What else do we have, Chattadonia? You were high tech with an FM transmit. I didn't even see the Twitch, bro. FM translator with an MP3 pulse. What is that? What are you doing? Are you guys like learning? Are you making satellites in the Twitch chat? Can y'all please? I don't want to report you all to. Uh, who do you report the balloons to nowadays? Never, they'll just shoot you down. I don't know what you're doing, man. Global Pokemon Go event, touring with clients. Oh man, dude, Global Pokemon. And where? What client? Are we talking real estate clients? You showing them around? Making UFOs in Twitch. I think they are like low key. I don't know. I just I just only scanned the first couple messages. I see CDs, N64. So someone said FM transmitter with the MP3. Uh, I don't want to say he said uranium or anything. Oh, okay, shit, we're fine. Okay, dude, I keep. I'm not doing good on the keywords today, dude. I'm tell. I'm sorry. Damn it, I gotta step away from the screen here for a minute. I'm sorry, Chad. No, <laughs> that's good, man. Well, I don't think I have anything planned here. I mean, I could talk with y'all a little bit. I wish I had the book to read to you, uh, especially uh, next to uh, compared to last week. But I got something for you. I got something for you. I'll give you. It's a mini one. I could give you a mini feel of for it, man. I think it's a. I think it's a good time for it. You know, it's actually very, 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 very simple. I'll, and I'll tell you with that one thing that my mom, because she gave remember she gave me that book from last weekend, bro. That was very, very good. Playing some pot limit Omaha and working. Bro, I'm not going to lie. I saw a TikTok of poker playing the other day, and I was like, I kind of want to go play a game of poker. But I haven't played a game of poker in a while. But that sounds like fun, man. Enjoy it. Honestly, there's not really, like, easy places to play poker in SoCal. Like, it's so, that's what sucks. There's no, like, the only one casino I'd want to go to, they don't have poker. And, like, the only other poker is in, like, Morongo, and I'm not really trying to go out 
to a damn fucking palm desert with a casino shaped as a snake, even though the outlets are fire next to there. That's a that's actually a fun fact for you. If you didn't know, you know, if you're into outlets, if you like outlet shopping, and you like clothes, they, they you know, best outlets, Palm Desert, right next to Morongo. Yeah, bro, Cabazon is lit. It really is. We've known about that for years, decades, decades. I've been to Cabazon for decades. That's where we used to go. So even I still have Nike shorts from there, bro. I think it's Beaumont, technically. I think Beaumont's right next to it, or it's like on the way or towards it. Hilton Head. Is that South Carolina? I want to go to South Carolina. I've heard good thing. I've heard good things about South Carolina, even North Carolina, but I feel like they're really different, even though they have the same name. They should just call it Jennifer Lopez. Oh, the Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> Oh, I don't know, because they're South Carolina, North Carolina. I feel like they're two different places, but they're the same. But did it go through? <laughs> Philo claps, bro. I mean, even then, I don't even think. It's just a mini one. I just wanted to clap. Like I said, I'm hyped. It's a good day. It's a good day for everybody. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited. We've already made it to almost the end of February. And I liked our Philo, bro. Last week, actually, I have a different book in front of me, believe it or not. I don't have, uh, I got the Beatitudes with Arthur Pink. I haven't even read all of this one yet. Oh, man. But I didn't get the book, but. I'll give you a couple of things. I'll give you a couple of things. I'll I'll, I'll talk to you. I'll start. Well, honestly, I was going to even share with you my mom, uh, a Bible verse she gave me. But the first part, we were talking about that book last week. And I don't know. I don't know if you're going to get this one. It's like I feel like you guys should all read it because I'm. it's kind of it's not going to do it a service, but it's going to do you a disservice if you really don't understand like the depth of it and, and the context, like truly the context of what it's all related to. But bro, that guy in that book, damn, with Arthur Pink, he said the like relationship, I'm told, and I'm spoiler alert, I'm about to ruin a part of it for you. He said the relationship of God and the devil in like the world and how they call like it, you know, they say like the devil, he's like the prince of the earth and all of that. That's the same relationship as Saul and David. And the fact that uh, the story of Saul, and this, I don't know, man, this might get you thinking deep. The story of Saul, the whole idea, the whole premise is that, at a re like this is what I'm saying, I, I really wish I could read it to you all. Because it starts with explaining how the earth was formed, then how pretty much in the beginning, even like before Adam and Eve, even potentially like it's just a very, very trippy concept. And it goes on to pretty much say that essentially, quote unquote, Satan inherits the earth. He has it from the beginning, but then technically he loses power over it and then he still gets to remain in control, i.e. the anointing is gone, but the title it remains. He has the title, but he loses the power. Right? That's what they pretty much say. Even current context, that's kind of the conclusion of the book there, where it's in a way you are living in a world where in name they say the world is like, oh, Satan and all of that in title, but the power over it is actually not there. And now the comparison is with Saul and David and even King Saul and how King Saul had the anointing initially, and then he loses the anointing, but he still remains in power, and then all the while in power, even after losing the anointing, he's like trying to kill David and doing all the other crazy stuff. So, yeah, I don't know if you get it. Does anybody understand what I just said? <laughs> That's a, It's a pretty trippy concept. And that is the exact comparison. You have to read the book. I'm telling you, that was me just trying to even give it to you off top. I don't even have this written down. Like, this ain't something. This is just like, it has actually been on my mind because it's a very, very trippy concept. If not, 
I encourage you to go read the book. Or, and then even then, if you don't even know the connection with King David, King Saul, it's a pretty trippy concept. So, i.e., the devil is Saul, and he loses his black power and blessing, still keeps the title, and then he going to chase around David, which is the good. And then eventually, though, evil does get clapped, actually. It falls on its own sword, technically speaking. So... That's the quick version. The book is called Satan and His Gospel by Arthur Pink. And it's really weird telling people that book because they like, damn, this really is some cult. But that's weird. Why would you want to read a book about Satan's guy? It's not. It, it's a bad title. You see how Cocaine Bear had a different title and kind of gives you an idea of the book. I mean, he, I think he could have got a better name because nowadays people are like, what are you into, bro? They're like, I thought you were like all about God. Why are you reading the Satan in his gospel? <sighs> nah, man, nah, it's, it's not like that. So, But it's a good book. It's a very good book. I'm telling you, it is very, 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 very deep. And I got to reading that. But that was a verse I shared with my mom. And she even was like, even sharing that concept with her. She was like, yeah, that is like she was even tripping, uh, tripping out about it. We talked about it. It's a good one. I think you should check it out. But. Here's another one for you, though. That same day, I was talking with my mom, and then we went to the beach, and I was chilling with my mom, and so we were talking about that, and then here's the verse. This is actually one of the, uh, I don't know, there's a lot with it. I, I just I just said, I'm, you know, I read to you last week, might as well give you a quick reading right now, but this is uh, this was a core memory for sure, because I always remember my mom saying this. Like every single time or like just kind of throughout the years, like over like many, many years bringing this up. But now I'm like, uh, I don't I don't know. I don't think I'll forget this one. And it is Psalms 19. But in context, me and my mom are walking on the beach. And this is what I remember like growing up, both growing up. And I just I don't know, just like I don't know. Maybe I'm Mandela of Mandela affecting myself. But every time this lady looks at the water the sun, anything, you know, especially like the ocean and then the sun and like the sea. She loves it. And she all she say with it, she always goes Psalm 19. And then she just starts saying Psalm 19. And I'm like, how do you have all of this memorized like that? Like low key, man, you know, like I, I got a lot of verses memorized here and there. But some people, though, I don't know how y'all be pulling out the I man Psalm 72, Psalm 73, 74, 74. And you could like recite it. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. But here's the verse, Psalms 19. So here, and if you are like a demon, you better watch out right now. I'm going to say this. If you all spit this, you're going to turn to salt. You better watch out, sir. Okay, I'm just kidding. But if you do get really offended, that's weird because I love you. It's not, but maybe you should get more offended if I called you weird, but not because I want to just read this. Listen to me. Anyways, this is what my mom would say. Every This is what she would say every time she would look at the water in the ocean. She said this last time, and it hit. Psalm 19. The heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display his craftsmanship. Day after day, they continue to speak. Night after night, they make him known. They speak without a sound or word. Their voices, their voice is never heard. Yet their message has gone through the earth and the words to all the world. God has made a home in the heavens for the sun. It bursts forth like a radiant bridegroom after his wedding. It rejoices like a great athlete eager to run the race. The sun rises at the end of the heavens and follows his course to the other end. Nothing can hide from its heat. And honestly, I'm pausing. Bro, rejoices like an athlete eager to run the race. That's, that's a side point. The instructions of the Lord are perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The commandments of the Lord are right, bringing joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are clear, giving insight for living. Reverence for the Lord is pure, lasting forever. The law of the Lord are true, and each one is fair. They are more desirable than gold, even the finest gold. They are sweeter than honey, even dripping from the comb. They are a warning to your servant, a great reward for those who obey them. How can I know all the sins lurking in my heart? Cleanse me from these hidden faults. Keep your servant from deliberate sins. Don't let them control me. And then I will be free of guilt and innocent of great sin. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Oh, man. I think she only says me like the second half of it, man. You know what I'm saying? Second half of it. That's very oof. 
Nah, that's it. Like, low-key, though, now, I can't stop. I look at the sun. I look at the sunset. I'm chilling. There's a lot with it. But now, here's the funny part. I wanted you to read that. I wanted you to understand that. And I really, like, it, I, there's not too much to understand, but I hope you could be reminded of it. I hope that verse comes up as you live, you know, and I hope as you look around and I hope as you see things. And, uh, again, I, as, you're, as you're hyped to be here, bro, and enjoying your time here on the earth and understanding what you can do with it and what you are doing with it, but... You know, just I hope that verse comes up for you and I hope you could apply it as scenario and just let it, you know, just let it hit, let let it hit. Right. But then the last part, too, though, because my mom brought this one up and I liked it. And this is kind of the thing I'm, I, I would tell you, man, this is what I, I think I'm going I'm to hit you with the curveball with how we're going to end it. But the last part of it say, how can I know all the sins lurking in my heart? Cleanse me from these hidden faults. Keep your servant from deliberate sins. Don't let them control me. Then I'll be free of guilt and innocent of great sin. They don't feel me, Chad. No. You feel me that? Come on. Oh, man. Bro. I don't know. Maybe it's something I've been paranoid about. Maybe you should be paranoid about it, too. Like, hidden. Like, a lurking, bro. Hidden faults. Like, okay, go my, my guy. You know? Don't be a... Uh, Let's say, go ahead. You could remove the the context. Maybe is I don't know. The Bible too scary for you, bro. You know what I'm saying? But like, what are the hidden faults? Like, I would be terrified. At, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're not scared. Like, why do you like? If you get a cut on your body, that's different than if like something going on inside of you and you can't see it. That's why people like get clapped on certain things. You can't see it. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'd be like, that's actually I'm low key paranoid by hidden faults. Like, if you think about it. So you should be worried, too, in a weird way. I don't want you to be worried and, like, all scared, but I hope you get what I'm saying. That's, like, like I'm more worried, like, a flat tire ain't as bad as, like, I don't want to, like, you know, blow the engine out or what if something else and there ain't no oil. And then I don't, does my girlfriend change their oil? I don't know if she has changed. I don't, because, you know, some people don't change their oil. But nah. L l sins lurking, hidden faults. And deliberate sins and like and again, I know some people some people have a hard time with the word sin. I don't know if y'all are aware of that. Uh, <laughs> you know that I've, I've actually came to realize that like more and more. And I even rec remember like back in the day and like it's just always something. It's funny how that three letter word could like low key. It kind of hits you the same way as like if you said a different, you know, combination of three to four letter words that some people don't like or do like, you know, it, it kind of hits. But. I hope you get it, man. There's some personal development I think you could take out of that with the hidden halts, hidden halts, hidden faults and things lurking. But the other point I would end it with, man, is just as simple. Uh, it's difficult, you know, personal development, any other thing, trying to even the thorn in the flesh, man. It like, you know, life is beautiful. Enjoy it. And I just hope you understand, too trying to even stick to a path, do good. I, I Maybe, I, honestly, I think I'm going to start this, Philo. I need to start this off, man, with every single time I tell anybody about anything with the long term or, you know, when we have in some of these talks, owning assets, you know what I'm saying? Like stuff like that for real where it has to be to the point where it, everything is, is difficult, you know, and more so though I'm saying like if you have a I, – I think investing is kind of an action and something you could do and educate yourself. And I think personal development is very similar. And there is an investment element of personal development. But I, I just think that's its own little task and thing you go upon towards life. I guess like even maturing, you know, even if you don't want it to sound so personal development. Okay, dog, it's maturing in certain areas that you that you figure out. But I hope you know it's difficult. And that's what I'd end it with. I'd be careful of hidden faults, but I'd also know that's just that's how hard the game is that you're playing. Is that there is that there are hidden faults. Oh, y'all don't feel me. That's all. That's why I'm saying. I hope you get it. Do you do you feel me, Chad? That's just so you know the level. That's the game you're playing. The complexity of what you are trying to accomplish in life, even live up to a certain standard to follow through. Again, you got a relationship with the Lord. You don't, I don't know, whatever personal relationship, but just the complexity of life to that point. 
is that the game, the how complex the game you are in and involved in, and right now with what you are calling your life and what it is, it is so complex to the point that there are hidden faults. That's it. That's it, Chattadonia. That's it. So that's what I would end it with. And I hope you enjoy the beauty of it all and life and everything around you. And I hope it speaks to you in your own way. And I hope you have to also understand, you know, there's a lot of things out there both that could help you and hurt you. I hope you recognize it. And at the day, just don't beat yourself up because it's not it's not an easy game and it is very complex. And it is it is difficult. So let's go. I you know, I I, I mean I hope you take it all in. And I hope it becomes more exciting and you could say your life is more exciting than cocaine bear. Yeah, I don't know. I think we just ended our philo there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Chad, but that's your philo, man. Take it to the bank, you know, run it up, run it up. And I, I hope you have enough in the bank too. you know, that you could uh, that it pays you some dividends with it. And, you know, remember, you put it in the bank. Don't forget it's there. Oh, y'all don't feel me. You know, you could withdraw from time to time. You know, make sure you ponder. You could go back on a lot of things and just, uh, and I don't know, the go back to, man, you better, you better get hype, man. I don't care, good or bad. You better praise through good or bad, up or down. It don't matter. Oh, well, let's go, baby. Let's go. Yeah, let it be more exciting than Cocaine Bear. Amen. I know. I just, I feel like that's a good way to bring it full circle. More or less and complexities. I see. I don't know. It's a very I could get deep with y'all. It's been a very, very deep, uh, a very deep week. We even talked. We, we, we ended last Friday with a book called Damn Satan's <laughs> Satan's Gospel. There's Kirk. What'd you say? Uh, all the way down. I'm talking Dante's Inferno. It led me. It was a rabbit hole, bro. It's a rabbit hole. That's it. It's just like today, bro. What were we saying? We brought up, like, I was genuinely just trying to talk about, like, oil reserves, bro. Like, straight up. Like, it's actually wicked. Like, I, I wasn't even trying to, like, get down far that, that far down the rabbit. I wasn't even trying to go down a rabbit hole, to be honest. Like, seriously. I was just trying to talk about oil, the level of reserves, you know, possible and potential, like, issues. You know what I'm saying? And then just straight up, by the time we like, okay, now what if there's an EMP, a laser beam, the fake messiah, and then polio mutates with Ebola, and then and then there's no internet or the water, and that's why you should have bought gold. What? I don't know. So it's just the rabbit holes, man. You could you could easily go down. I wasn't even trying to do that, man. But that's what happened with this week. I started going with. The, the Satan Gospel, then Dante's Inferno. <laughs> and that's it, man. Then, you know, life is very complex, and then you get into it. It's cool, though. It's cool. I even watched, uh, what's it called? I didn't get to finish it. And then, actually, I'm going to blow your mind. Actually, I'm going to blow your mind. Because it's kind of like, honestly, I don't even know if I could call this a Bible movie. This is like, I don't even know how to describe this movie because it's still like, because I don't know, and then the good guy, and then the bad guy. I don't know. It's weird. Uh, <laughs> Constantine. The movie Constantine. But here's the crazy part. Okay, it's one thing. It's like about angels and demons and shit. And again, this is what happened, bro. We started with that book on Friday. This is why they say religion and this is a gateway drug. Just I think they say this is why the internet's a gateway drug. That's it. Rabbit holes, man. You got to be careful. It's very easy to go. Then I'm watching. I'm like, huh? I saw Constantine, huh? Because I was looking for movies based off of Dante's Inferno, and then they recommended that one, right? But here's the deal. Okay, that's the crazy point, but I'm going to give you the funny point, okay? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? This is going to blow your mind. Bro. Constantine. This isn't a fact. This is my theory. But watch, and you're going to see what I'm talking about. Go watch the movie Constantine. And bro, that is where damn John Wick was born. He's not John Constantine. His name's John Constantine in the movie. But go watch that shit. That movie is just John Wick. That's it. Straight up, he doing these like dance move fighting scenes. How they film it, bro. It's just little baby John Wick. That's all. And then I realized, like, this is probably where they got the idea. I think this is where Keanu became John Wick. It's crazy. 
Oh, I guess it's kind of not, not like the Matrix. Oh, John Wick is not real. <laughs> and maybe he is. And then I said he's not real. And then he shows up. And I'm like, why are you at my house, sir? I have not hurt any puppies lately. Nor been involved in any of this business. I don't know how you showed up here. And why you even listen to YouTube like that. I was not included in any of the plots. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he assembled a holy shotgun. The movie's weird, bro. Cause it's like it's like religious, but it's not. It's like it's like idiocracy movie of like a Bible movie. You know what I'm saying? Like forty years gonna be like at what, bro? Forty years the Pope is gonna be showing Constantine as a religious movie as we degrade from all things and our religions become computers and numbers. You know, and AI fucking Chad GBTs, the father, the son, you know, and they're like, What? The priest, they're like, this is a priest. They're like, watch, the Constantine is a very holy movie. And it's just him. Like, It's just so weird. It's a trip because they're like, it's angels, it's demon. And then they're like, F you. And then they're like, holy shotgun. And then they're like, I don't know, but it's not like too bad. Like all they do is like, just go to, I don't want to ruin the movie for you. You should watch it. You should watch it, actually. Mm-hmm. I heard the earth being the community much like, hey, man, man, you, you lifting all three years too? You doing steroids yet? No, what? I'm just kidding, man. It's good. I need to. I want to get a workout in over the weekend. I need me to decide. I haven't had a Saturday workout in a while, bro. I'm not going to lie to you. I was living life with a girlfriend because uh, I'm going to go take. I'm going to go fucking get me a dumbbell right now. That's it. I need to get some curls in. Amen. But God bless you. Constance. Constantine, not Constance. I think Constance. Uh, I don't know, man. I feel like that's an interesting title. That could be about a lot of things. Thinking the trend. It's not worth it, man. I already clicked on one of those testosterone ads. So I believe me, they already know I'm a target market. They damn fucking took all my info, did all their little AI bullshit to damn well know I would click on that ad. It was like t testosterone, and I'm like, is this steroids? Like, is this steroids? How did you know to already put that on the FAQ? Is it like I get it without a prescription? What? How do you, man, they know. So if you got that too, your hairline is aging, or you like and follow and watch way too many workout videos. So that's cool, though. I don't judge you. More plates, more dates. Uh, I read that as Pilates at first. I said that's... I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah, more plates, more dates. Mm -hmm. I like date shakes. And it's totally unrelated, but the word is exactly the same. And that's in Palm Springs, if you've never tried those. I'm 24, my hairline is aging. It happens to the best of us, man. You know that? To the best of us. There's a lot of good guys out there, man. And a lot of good hairlines that once existed, and then they don't. Mm-hmm. Well, those are good. You tried one? The the steroids? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait, hold on, Tyler. Tyler Roy keep me selling real estate and steroids. What? No, the date shakes, bro. I love them. They're really good. Mm hmm. Or Joshua. We could do Palm Springs. I still have that place. I still have that place out there. All day, bro. All day. They have date shakes. It's like Palm Desert. They have very, very good date shakes. Yeah, I forgot we. we I forgot we. I, that's my fault for again just throwing and being random and throwing it all into damn uh you know i went from he said date we're talking working out steroids and then he said dates and i said date shake like we're playing some weird drinking game where you say the word you know you guys ever play that game <laughs> or you play you put the letter the car we should actually play that but anyway my fault but no that's good you're not doing steroids and i'm glad you've had a date shake <laughs> amen amen Mm-hmm. Oh, yo. Yo, 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 Battleborn. No. Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't believe I didn't talk to you about that, too. My mom showed me that, and it was trippy. I'll be going. I'm going. That's, I went halfway down that rabbit hole because I was just, like, halfway through. My ADHD took over, and I was like, dude, I'm just going to, like, go. Like, why not? I Bro, the Ashbury Revival. Nah, y'all don't feel me. Have you seen it? It's over now. Damn it. Damn it. 
Am I allowed to say that? Maybe that's why I wasn't out there. Lord, forgive me. Oh, man. Yeah, bro. Bro, it was like Kentucky, bro. It was just they had like EDC Jesus. I don't know. I'm just trying to, I don't know if the people, some people don't know what a revival is and y'all don't got Billy Graham anymore doing it at Qualcomm Stadium. So y'all, that was an era. You missed out on that. You missed out on that. Yeah, bro. Like, look at, bro, it was just a church and they just went like crazy. And like people were like waiting out. It was like, it was supposed to be like a day and then it went for like three days or something. Mm-hmm. I'm at a park called Asbury. Or as as Ashbury, you you forgot an age. Look at this. Yeah, day six of the 130 hours, bro, and then people just in and out the door. And this is in Kentucky. They, they were really about that life, man. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. I want to see though. Like, bro, we're talking 130 hours of praying. Ashbury does sound sketchy. Oh, they had one in 1997. What? Or 1970? Oh, I thought, <laughs> not going to lie to you, dog. I thought this was 1970 for a second. And I was looking at it, I said, damn, that's hella modern for 1970, bro. It's because the filter, you know what I'm saying? This light make it look like, a, oh, I swear I thought this was the 1971. That's definitely more like it. I guess, I don't, they didn't have a color. They could have had a color camera. Can someone color code this one for me? This one looks a little bit more intense. We got a lot more bass. Yeah, man, we're a lot more formal, man. They were ready to go. That don't look like a revival. That looked like a very orderly service. Nah, hell yeah. I mean, heaven yeah. For in this in this context, heaven yeah, dog. That's what we need. We need more of this. That, that's like they packed out there, bro. They filling it up. I don't. I hope don't. That's good. Building standards. This thing better be have been retrofitted. But yeah, that was cool. Why they wait fifty years? I think. It came back with inflation, I guess. That's the thing. We just do it. Bro, I'm telling you, down to that, bro, I just throw it to my list of why we're just doing everything like the 70s. But it makes sense. Then the 70s, when was fucking, uh, wasn't the one thing where the old, like where all the hippies went? What was it called? Woodstock. Wasn't Woodstock in the 70s? So, isn't this, uh, isn't it similar? I feel like we have, our Woodstock is just way whacker now. We don't even have cool stuff. And then they had, they had revivals then. Yeah, wood wood stonk. Mm-hmm. It's the zero I blame the zero day options. Yeah, the zero day options is the as the uh modern wood stock. That's what we got instead. No, I think that's really in a weird way it is, but I don't know. Sixty, sixty nine. I'm from the seventies. But everything is like the 70s, it feels like. I'm not from the 70s, so honestly, I'm just one of them book mother effers. You know what I'm saying? But then at the same time, I guess some old people, if you listen if you listen enough, enough places, the people who really have the experience of it, they'll tell you how it is. I've listened to a lot of people, but I've only heard stories, legends, and, his, and read history, but I'm not from there. I wonder what it would have been like to like be like in your 20s during 1970, that would have been interesting. How old were you in 1970? Yeah, I think my dad might have been. I don't know. Why are we here so late? Did I miss something? Um, I don't know if I should tell you. There's a lot, actually. Have you checked your trading account recently? Because a lot of things just went went down right now after hours. Like, not, like, stock market going down, but, like, I don't know if you have, like, you should just check your account. Yeah. No, man, I just wanted you to check your account and be excited that you have an account to check. So, amen. Uh, you made it far, baby. Uh, we're just chilling. We're just chilling. It's Friday, man. It's Friday, of course. We're not doing nothing. No zero days. Mm-hmm. You were two years old? Nah, you were, like, so you were, like, 20 years old in the 90s then. You were literally, you were like, I, I'm in the 70s. I was born in 1972. So, yeah, you were a kid in the 90s. You were young in the 90s. They had revivals then. Y'all had Billy Graham, bro. Billy Graham was running the show, bro, running the show in his limousine. Oh, I used to, I told you guys that. I used to have a, 
Oh, I think uh, I have the Billy Graham uh, dad joke. I think it's, uh, I think Joel Osteen said this joke. Or he said, uh, like, one day, like, Billy Graham was, like, in his limo, and then he told his uh, driver uh, that he wanted to uh, drive the limo home one day. And then Billy Graham's driving his limo, and he's driving it home from a conference. And then a cop pulls him over. And then a cop pulls over Billy Graham and then notices he's Billy Graham. And he said, wow, so if you're driving, then who's in the back seat? And he asked, the, the cop asked if Jesus was in the back. And then, yeah, that's the dad joke. Mm -hmm. I, I totally didn't deliver it as good as it could have been. Like, you know, a little little charisma, that would have been good. Blackstone CEO Schwarzman collects $1.27 billion in 2022. What the? Bro, eBay files mixed security shelf. And then who else did? I think it was Warner Brothers or no? Another company after the bell filed a mixed security shelf. Two companies filed uh, shelf offerings. That joke's been done about many famous leaders. Oh, really? I feel like, yeah, I feel like you can, you can mix it up there. It's good. Mm -mm -mm. If options on penny stocks, I don't think they have options on penny stocks, man. You just really just taking it there. <laughs> He's like more. You ever seen that commercial with Kobe? That's what you remind me of. They're like, we'll give you two to one leverage more. We'll let you trade five times your available cash balance for day trades. More. We'll let you trade for free. More. We'll let you buy uh, the right to 100 shares and you don't have to pay 2% uh, pay of the value. More. We'll let you trade that every single day. More. We'll let you trade it on penny stocks. That's... Mm -hmm. I think you have some cheap stocks with it, maybe like Wish, but options are only like the stock needs like a specific amount of volume, a very consistent amount of volume to even uh, have options. So not every company has options, unfortunately. It just depends on the trading volume. Do we take this week as bearish? Yes. Uh, this week was definitely bearish. Again, it's but it's been the third week in a row. So now, with not as much, because again, the last couple of weeks here, we've had important data. You've had big data sets. This week, out of the last four weeks, next week we'll have the uh, the least amount of important data. So if you ranked it week by week, I would say this week shows up as week number four as like the least amount of important stuff, ranging from... We had Powell, jobs report, uh, retail sales, PCE. You even had a CPI, like even I think within this month, right? So it's a lot to BB. So like looking at all of it now, this week is actually the next, this next week. This week's over now. It's Friday, sir. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be the chillest one. And then the week after that will be uh, non-farm payrolls. And then we back to Excite, you know? You know, non-farm, very big effect, BB. Oh, man, West Fine is really... That's like One Punch Rhino. <laughs> oh, I know. Let's go. We needed that. Man, hyped to be here, bro. God bless you, man. I'm proud of you every day and always praying for you. And I tagged you on that. What's a, Did you see that one I tagged you on? You know, you started tagging me on all those Christian rappers and they be killing it, bro. I tagged you on one. I don't know if it was your real estate account. I tagged one of these Midwest Finest on TikTok, bro. I hope you got it. Yeah, bro, it's crazy. It's crazy, man. I love you. I'm praying for you, man, and let's run it. Man. Okay, I kind of, bro, I see I damn it, damn it. I just opened up my damn, they heard me. They fucking heard me, bro. I just said, I opened up my TikTok to see if you got the comment on there. 
And then right when I open up my TikTok, bro, it's a video of some mother playing poker. I kind of want to play now. Can I play online for money or no? But I feel like it's different. Mm-hmm. Sends has options. It's OTC. Must be a lot of volume. You should sue for predatory soliciting. I mean, they didn't. They didn't sell sell me anything. They just manipulated my emotions and learned from my desires, and then just kind of influenced me. Cause I was just telling you, cause some chat influenced me and was like, "I'm gonna go play poker this weekend." And I was like, "Oh, the other day I saw a poker video and I watched it, and it made me want to play poker." Yeah, I feel like it's rigged online. I agree. Hamu, I don't have a tent. <laughs> I feel like I need a horse in the tent if I'm going to go up to Hamul and be playing poker. That's a journey, man. Even Barona. Barona, I already feel like I'm pushing it. But I love Barona because Barona, they're very friendly, man. They're very, very friendly. But you're playing against other people. Mm -hmm. I've seen chat GPT. You're not going to fool me, buddy. How do I know it's the other person? Can I talk to him? See, this is why the world will need the need to verify now after damn AI takes over. Yeah, poker's better live. Yeah, honestly, and just the fact that I look like a weird and like an idiot helps me to my advantage in many circumstances, especially if it's a game on one-on-one -on -one money. <laughs> you know, it's very good to understand. I don't look, I look like a mix of a lot of just stupid stuff. So then I, and then I, I don't know. And then I ask really dumb questions. You know, imagine you, I, you hear me ask a lot of dumb shit and I'm like being watched by y'all and y'all, y'all sometimes very judgmental. So like, just imagine in real life, man, it's a lot easier to just, you know, a little bit more unfiltered. I can't get banned. You can't get banned in real life. And I see I don't say anything offensive unless they could beat me up. And I make sure not to, to, you know, attack them. My stupidity is inspiring. It should be. Because what the hell are you doing, bro? You know what I'm saying? Like, shit, bro. You don't even have an excuse to be stupid and not wake up at 5 in the morning. What the fuck's wrong with you? I'm stupid as hell, and I figured that one out. That means you got to do it. You've asked me. You, I can't even say NVIDIA right. I got two graphics card, and I can't even say it. What kind of, like, this is a weird rap lyric, you know? It's like, I can't even pronounce it. Got two graphics. What kind of nerdy-ass rapper? You know what I'm saying? Nah, man. Can't get banned in IRL. Yeah, it used to just be you got punched. Like, that was cool. I liked that. I liked it. I still think, like, I still think it exists in a lot of places, but I really think that's, like, a great, like, equilibrium. Like, now I think it got messed up when people just started, like, clapping people. Uh, but, like, I think it's just simple. Like, nah, you should just get, like, punched. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, if you say something offensive, you should get hit in the face. You shouldn't be killed for it. But, like, you get knocked around a little bit, you know, nothing excessive, and then that's it. And it's like, you get checked. It's very simple. And I'm like, hey, man, what the fuck? You say something stupid, you get slapped real quick. You know, it's just like, come on. Like, what are you doing? Not like fist fights, but, like, you know, like, you should, like, my oh, my bad. You know, like, oh, I, under I understand. Oh, my bad. You were offended by that and that. I'm sorry for not seeing it how you see it and being so close-minded. That's it. It requires a lot of maturity, though. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's why I don't make any laws or anything. Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't make that a law, though. That'd be weird as hell to mandate. <laughs> if your feelings are hurt, you punch them in the face. And if you hurt someone's feeling to get punched, it's against the law to strike back until you listen to the other side and get the whole picture. Mm -hmm. I'm talking, you're saying days they get canceled? Nah. I'm talking like real life. This is just real life. You don't get canceled in real life. That doesn't exist. You, you can't block somebody in real life. You can't, can't, you can only run away or avoid them. 
or you just like or you like follow them around and then like you get really like annoying and aggravating with them that's it that's really about you otherwise there's no such thing as like getting canceled in real life but like online they control you everybody could you're that's it and you you should know this i know that's i i've learned the hard way many many times i sound like i'm cat i sound like i'm cat williams I don't even know why Cat Williams would even sound like this. I don't know why Cat Williams had turned into Mike Tyson because I'm the greatest ever. I don't know. This voice started coming out for Cat Williams, man. I'm sorry. No disrespect to Cat Williams, but I'm the best one ever. I'm the best. I'm the best. I'm the greatest. Yeah, I, tell, I tell you what's great. You want to know what's great? Huh? I forgot. What are we talking about? <laughs> How the fuck did I even get here? Okay. They block people on Black Mirror. Well, guess what? Black Mirror hasn't made a season since 2020. How the hell are they going to hook us in during the pandemic and then just stop? And then right when Black Mirror shit, they're like, we can't make this movie. We stop showing them this shit. Y'all showing no. Like, that's it. There's no more Black. Where did Black Mirror go, man? How the fuck we got an 18th season of fucking, what's the one movie that came out? The one show that came out today? The Boondocks or what's it called? Offshore, <laughs> offshore drill. Now, what's the one with the little kids on the boat? The little white kids in the hotel, and they're like, "Ah, you a you're a shooby. That's rocket power. What's it called? Outlands, Badlands, Outer Bank, Outer Banks. Woo! We got it. Outer Banks, Outer Banks. No, not Stranger Things. Yeah, you got 18 seasons. I've never seen Stranger Things. Surprisingly, it's too stupid for me. I can't hang with it. It's too much going on. Too much drama, and then these. I'm, I, honestly, I never. Yeah, Outer Banks. I like Outer Banks, though. It was awful, but I liked it. It's, that's that's it, man. Like I to, like I told you, man. Co like oh, I didn't. I don't even know if I finished that thought, bro. Cocaine Bear is literally our introduction to idiocracy. This is how you know we're like. Then that's how I am with movies, though. That's what I'm saying, and like other things. Like I could like stupid shit, like very very much. I <laughs> I could like it. I could like all of it, like very much. Like that's how it is. Like that's to the point where we are all like cocaine bear, cocaine bear. Yeah. Like, dude, cocaine bear is two generations removed, one generation removed from Ow My Balls. Yes or no? Yes or no? Stop playing with me. Mm hmm. Stop. No, I'm telling you. Because it's both, somebody's making it and someone's consuming it. And both people are like, this is a great idea. This person wants this. And the other person's like, I want this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. I say one generation removed. Maybe two. I don't know. That would be a good bet because those odds would be, you know, I don't, I would, I'd take that bet if you like the underdog. Or maybe on the middle, though. I would have a high premium if it was an option because I don't know. Maybe two gens. But that's, we're getting close because even I'm like, ah, because we're not even done with our generation. I'm already like, ah. I said cocaine bear like 27 times already. That's it. You know when you and then that's it. And then if, if that movie ends up being good or if it's really stupid and you like it. But then again, there's a lot of stuff that is stupid that we could enjoy, like reality TV. I'm over it now. I haven't watched it in a while uh, just because I, I honestly, now that I have a girlfriend that is not, you know, she's foreign. I just, I can't. It's just now I'm like, damn it. Am I? I didn't meet her like that, though. I pro Fuck, man. This is weird. I, I had a 90-day fiancé phase in my life. That's a great show, man. And It's the stupidest, craziest shit ever. Like, if you haven't gotten a good set of reality TV, bro, you should. If you never watched, just go watch one season of 90-day fiancé, and you're going to just have so many questions about this world. You're going to feel good about your life. You're going to, like, you're just going to be like, it's weird, man. But that's a stupid show, but I had my face. Mm hmm. Madeline is the new Selena. Like Madeline Monroe, dog. She dead. Kind of sick. Fuck, are you, bro? What Madonna or something, man? She got. She looked crazy as hell too, man. Like shout out to fucking Abby Vi. You know what I'm saying? That <laughs> Love after lockup. What's not? Nah, see, I, that sounds either really good or really bad. But mm hmm. Watch Love is Blind. Nah, man, fuck out of here. I need some real, just straight, toxic, stupid, degenerate shit, bro. Have you seen 90 Day Fiance? It meets all of that, all of those adjectives I just listed. And it's somehow real because they all end up on fucking Instagram selling cameos. So I'm I'm assuming they're real people who really act like this, bro. 
and it's like real. It's terrible. It's, it's terrible, but it's great, bro. It's just no. It's like raw. It's meant for drama, and it's just like, dude, these some situations are like, I could no, I can't see that at all. How no way? I, you know what I'm saying? The other ones, this guy is just like some weird ass people, and they're like, yeah. I met him online, and, like, one guy got, he had a fake online girl. I don't even think, did she end up on the show at all? I think she was just, one guy's 90-day fiancé was a bot on an app, bro. <laughs> it's just, it's really, really crazy. They live in America. It's always some weird-ass American who, like, either live with his mom doing something, and, like, he's, like, 40-something years old, and his mom still makes the cat food with him. And then he got some, like, 18-year-old Fucking like Russian girl, bro. She like, I love him for who he is. And I love it. But he has to leave his mom now. And they're like, if I stay 90 days here for this country. And you're like, what? And then the other ones. And then it'd be two opposites. And then one of them, bro. They'll be like, one person live on a farm. One person is just like, they're like really nice too. Just like, it's just so fucked up. And then there's Big Ed. Mm-hmm. And there's Big Ed, dog. I haven't even got to Big Ed, dog. You see what I'm saying? It's just, this is a very vague description, but it's apparently real. But I had a phase of watching that shit. It was, it was dramatic. It was toxic. It was awful. It was awful. You know, if you haven't prayed for me and you haven't prayed for your chat and you're looking for people to pray for, maybe you can watch it too. There you go. You judgmental mother effer, huh? Why are you judging me? Go pray for me or go watch the show and pray for them. Do something good with your time. Mm-hmm. Mm hmm. These people casting them, how do you find them? You just have to, that's what I'm saying, to like be on reality TV. Low key, though, you have to like really want to be on reality TV. You know what I'm saying? You really have to be like, hey, what's up? You know, like, you have to really be pretty flamboyant about what you want to do and what, and like sharing everything with everybody and like, you know, really want to be like, you want to be on reality TV. You know what I'm saying? It's not like reality TV is even new anymore. So you know what is involved. You low-key had training. Mm-hmm. One Punch Man is good. It's a great one. Mm-hmm. You have to, yeah, you want to create reality. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, Exactly. Not even cat like you. It's not, bro. This ain't even like you think. Motherfuckers are like you think. This is like old America, where they're just like walking around towns, knocking on doors, looking for talent. No, some motherfucker filled out an application to Netflix. dot com. They made a video. They showed off talents. They were doing juggling. They were explaining everything. They filled out forms. They filled out their date of birth. They were filled like you know what I'm saying. Like this was actually. Like, they went and, like, this was somebody who wanted to, like, you were motivated. And I respect the motivation. Fuck yeah, man. How you gonna let some reality TV star out fucking fill out a form than you, sir? Mm-hmm. So I don't know who's listening right now and who needs to hear this. But that shit you've been delaying, fill it out. Can you go fill it out right now? Okay? Because if fucking Big Ed from 90 Day Fiance can do it, you can too. You can too, bro. You have no idea you got people ending up on a fucking island for reality TV show. You have so you can fill it out too, man, okay? They went and got a tetanus shot just to go on the television, sir. Come on. Like, at least price is right. You just show up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so go fill out that form. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I feel like that was divine and someone needed to hear that. For real. For real. I'm going to get mad at you. You have no excuse if after this weekend that form is not filled out after getting this very, very specific warning, dog. That's like, nah, you just asking for trouble, you know? So fill out that form. There's still like a thousand of y'all in here. So somebody, I know somebody got a form. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What time? Am I still live? That means I should look at the clock. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I haven't looked. It's 220, see? My toolbar is down, so I got my clock hidden in, like, the corner. It's not going on. My toolbar won't show up. Yeah, damn. 224, bro. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I've been snacking some good food. 
Bro, I'm on the same bag of beef jerky eating like a fucking rabbit. You know, I realize I'm like eating between like mid sentences, rants, and paragraphs. Mm hmm. It was good though. This beef jerky was nasty at first, but it's kind of grown on me. And that's it. I need beef jerky and protein. I told you I need to get my old poops back. It's going to be violent. I need more pro. Beef jerky is great pro. Great pro. Great pro, little calories. That's what you need in your life. Jerky is good, man. I do like pork rinds. Is it pork rinds or pork grinds? Hmm. I feel like this is going to be a learning experience. Is it pork rinds or pork grinds? And I'm not going to tell you which one I called it. Mm hmm. Trying to gain weight? No, I'm trying to poop. It's rind? What is rind, Habibi? Rinds without a G? Well, Ryan's doesn't have a G in it at all. That makes no sense. <laughs> Chicharrones. I've always said grinds. Again, I'm not going to tell you which one I would say. I'll let your imagination make an educated guess. But what's a rind? Is a rind a chicharrone? Or are you just now, did we just get into, I say chicharrone, you say chicharrones. <laughs> Is that what's happening? Rinds, the tough outer layer of certain fruit, especially citrus, dex decorate with fine shreds of orange rind. So is the peel on a pork? I'm confused. How you get a pork rind then? What, what is it a rind of? The meat? Or the pig has his own like little skin. Mm. Pork skin, pig skin. Oh, I guess that. I guess pork rind sounds. Uh. Yeah, so it's literally fried skin. Wow. Okay. Well, I liked them up until that, I guess, but kind of down. I like skin off a of chicken. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like for most of my life, I wouldn't. I would. Eat, I would before I discovered Chick Fil A, really, I preferred the the skin on the chicken. You didn't know that? No, I knew that. Yeah, man. Fuck yeah. And I you and I always call it pork rinds. I never called it pork grinds. I don't know really who would say that. I feel bad for anybody who said it like that before, and who didn't know. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel awful for them because that's. Oh, that's not me. I don't deal with that. You know, I, don't, I never had to deal with that. Mm-hmm. That's literally like the bulls in the chat after it goes bearish, and then the bears in the chat after it goes bullish. Stop it! It's been 10 minutes. I understand. I watch Daily Options for two hours today, and I see where a lot of frustration arises from. Now, you could do it every day. And now in the market, oh, I see where, I see where some people, I'm like, I thought y'all were just frustrated. I didn't know if you were sexually frustrated. I didn't know if you were just frustrated with other things in life or what you were, you know, what made you so angry sometimes when I get it, I totally get it. And then that's why, cause like, and that's why you get so worried about one word or like if one thing is said and you're like, <laughs> and that's why, you know, you get triggered easily. You know why? Because, motherfucker, in one second, you could lose or make it. And I've seen it. I, I, I get it now. I get it now for you. Like, you didn't know, mother. I've been trading options before you bought anything. Anything. We calling, We were calling daily options Ocean's Eleven. They just gave it to you every day now, dickhead. Come on. They don't understand. Chicharrones. I eat you like chicharrones. I, you, you know, because it's fried skin, if you didn't know that. Because apparently people don't know that. <laughs> this guy. Got to scalp him. Man, if anybody... If anybody approached me with some of the option logic I hear from people about anything else, I'd be like, this is crazy. 
Imagine you were on a plane and your pilot's like, yeah, 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 no, 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 we could land it fine. You just got to do it real quick. No, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. If you fuck this up, it's real dangerous, but you just got to do it real quick. That's fine. I got to stop parachute. So, yeah, if it gets down below this altitude, it'll automatically just eject you with the fucking parachute. You'll be fine. That's how you make sure you fly safely. What? What did you say, though? Um, I don't... Hmm. Yeah, simple to fly this thing. You just got to land in the first 90 seconds. I'll be like, what the fuck are you saying, Vin Diesel? This is some weird-ass Vin Diesel movie. Gone in 60 seconds bullshit. Hold on, man. What do you mean I got to do this in 90 seconds? The fuck you mean? Hold on. Shares are like Spirit Airlines. Let's see. Y'all getting on a plane. Have, it have an automatic ejecto seato. <laughs> got your stop loss. And I'm like, I'm going to go get shares. You're like, ha ha, he's flying Spirit. Fucking nasty. How does it feel, pleb? Like, what? Dog, you just, I don't even know. You have 90 seconds to land this option. Dude, that's some fucking Liam Neeson shit. I don't even know if Liam Neeson can trade a daily option. I have a special set of skills, and I'm not afraid to use them. And he's like, he's like, you only got 90 seconds to find me, motherfucker. <laughs> He's like, what you gonna do, Liam? Sorry. You got 90 seconds, Liam. Yeah, I took your fucking premium. I took all the data. Let's go. You got 90 seconds. I hope you got a lot of skills. And that is why all of the hedge funds are selling daily premium. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That'd be a good movie. I'd watch it. Mm-mm-mm. Ah oh, shit. Is Josh high is that is it cause I'm eating too much? Am I having too much too much fun with you guys on this? It's well it's two it's about two thirty. We've been here for an hour and a half. I mean, you're honestly like you think I'm gonna sit here in the same chair for an hour and a half? You think I'm gonna get faded and I'm gonna fucking go to take a nap, dude. I'm fucking I don't have a hairline anymore. Okay? I like to lay down. I like to relax. Get out of here. I've been in this chair this whole time. I am I am hyped to be here though. I said it, man. I'm very, very hyped to be here. And then I have food. And it's already been good. It's been a good week, man. It's been a blessing. I'll not will be good. You know. Honestly, I will have to leave here soon though. It's already it's been what? Hour and a half. We're gonna almost hit two hours. I'm having a lot of fun. I said it, man, it's a blessing. It's a blessing, bro. They don't feel me. You know? I hope you are hyped, man. I'm hyped to be here. You should be too. On Earth and Chad. Why, why not, man? Fuck. You got a hairline. You better be a little bit more excited. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But those daily options were crazy today. <laughs> Nick Cage, say hello to my little chichones. I wanted to watch a Nick Cage movie. I think I saw them all, but... A, ran a random one came up. Where else can you find it? You can find it down in your heart. Hey, down in your heart today. I'm a joy, baby. And let's go, man. I'm I'm just kind of like tripping out that I said it in the morning. We're already done with this quarter almost. Or at least we're going to have one more month. I guess March is going to feel long. Now that we thought, Jan I, I don't know, I hope. Actually, I don't hope. I feel like March is going to feel very long. Now that January and February, I really feel... Because remember, January 2022, that shit felt long. Because every day the market was dropping like 4 to 7%. Like a bunch of weird shit kept happening. And you were like... Mm, everyone for... You guys were really, really banking on Mercury and Retrogate. I told you, I had a house flood. I like a flood and a leak in one of my houses. And the tenant literally told me because Mercury was in Retrograde. I said, wow. I understand. I, I think it was just the builder on this one, maybe. Uh, I think when we made the remodel, but... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm.
January was long. I'm sorry, I'm reading this Twitch card. You said, I just said my little big boobies. Chicharrones? That means boobies now too? Nah, man, I think you've been you've been ordering the wrong shit your whole life. That's kind of weird. I don't know who's been even serving you. That's insane. So what what happens when you ask for chicharrones? What are the things in the, what do you what happens if you go to the gas station looking for chicharrones, man? It does. The fuck? Damn, yeah, man. That's I don't I thought English was a weird language. I don't know we have anything like that. The closest thing to that would be Dick Sporting Goods. Uh that's it. I don't know, man. Mm hmm. Man, that's crazy. Well, hey man, we did it, we made it. We did it, we made it. Well, I'm giving you a lot of good stories here. I hope you're ready for next week. Any other weekend plans now that we're here? Now we're coming we're coming down to the final five or the final eight. Maybe should we I don't know what would happen. Do you think we could whittle it down? Could we see who would be the last one remaining on stream? Some of you would just leave your computer on. I'll make it where you have to check in. Let's get to the final five. We're at the final 786 people here in the chat. That's cool. We're like the old people. Oh, my gosh. We're like the old people at the church who just hang out afterwards and just talk. You know that? Like, everybody left. And then we're just like the people just like still mingling, drinking coffee out of styrofoam cups, you know, and like eating fucking cookies in that blue metal container. And we just like, <laughs> and then, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, yeah. It's like the usher. We don't even have to put any like chairs away or anything, too. So we're just like, yeah, we're vibing. Mm -hmm. Coffee, donuts, uh huh. <laughs> it's a special type of people. It's the, it's the ones involved. I mean, you are now officially in that group. So I, that's what I just realized. Look at my, hmm. Wow. We're, we're down to like the final people. Like some people, all right, I got to go. It's been a good time. Some people leaving, you know, that's it. That was good. And then my birthday, Samrat. <laughs> Happy birthday, bro. Yalla. Long term, please. Please, that's all you need. <clears throat> mm. We have no life or time management. I mean, I hope you have a life. Do you not like, you don't go out and do anything? I mean, stocks, I like it, though. I like my stocks during the weekday, but... In a weird way, I sadly, I have a life and I don't have a life, but it's just like, it is what it is. Like, it is in a weird way. It's like, you could totally, you know, just if you love it or not. I don't know. That's it. But, like, you you have something. You just, like, you got a puppy or something. You know what I'm saying? And like You probably go to, you have a hobby. You probably collecting rocks and shit, playing racquetball. Like, you go to the gym. Like, gym is my life, too. Stocks, gym, real estate, family, a little bit of video games, my movies. I love my movies. My Bible. I like my Bible more than my movies. Pickleball. Yeah, collecting assets, like, you know, beyond coins. Yeah, gym, golf, clean the house. Yeah, like, that. see, everybody has their thing. It's just, like, it depends what it is. Well, but then time management. Hopefully none, none of you have anything important to do and like you're sitting here just fucking smoking, playing Madden, listening to the stream and that's and you're on hour number seven. Does anybody do that? Does anybody spend all seven hours just like with the stream on and then playing video games the whole time? Would you like to come forward and repent? If you would like, to, we like, I'll pray for you on stage if you if you would like to. Is that like what you're doing? Same passion playing classical piano and music. Is that sarcastic? <sighs> Usually working. That's good. I used to. It's okay, Asher. It's okay. Amen. Amen. Just say this prayer with me. I will get my ass out of bed without waking bacon. I will limit my gaming time. And I will apply myself to a goal because you become what you think about. A man will go where his goals are. A boat without a plan never leaves the harbor. 
Therefore, I will make my decision. I will have goals and men lack due to conformity and the lack of thinking. So I will use all my thinking power and live up to my potential. Amen. You repeat that, you, you'll be good. You'll be good. I'm glad. And then read a Bible before I throw it at you. Yes. Amen. We talk real estate. You got like 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 30 seconds. It depends what it is. I'm good. Glad to hear 91's doing crazy. Guilty. I've accepted that. That strategy is now very long term. The what? The playing video games, smoking? Listening to stuff. I mean, that's as long as you enjoy it, I guess. That's totally bad advice, but as long as you enjoy it, it's good. You know, that's at least some benefit in and of itself. Mm -hmm. Shout out the workers, the lurkers. Who? Shout out the worker lurkers. Who? Shout out the worker lurkers. Who? I sound like some Willy Wonka. Shout out the Willy Wonka. Can't lie, I've done it, but 90% of the time I'm at work. Got it. But like seven hours of gaming. I haven't hit seven hours of straight gaming since Halo 2, man. Which kind of sounds like a good idea. The worst accident I ever had at the shop happened yesterday. I keep telling myself it could have been. Really? I hope you're okay, man. I'll pray for you. And that's like, that's crazy. But that's good. I hope it works, man. Because for real, it could have been worse. I mean, the fact, honestly, not going to lie to you, man. The fact that you are typing and telling me this in the chat within 24 hours means it could have been, it definitely could have been worse. Or you couldn't even have been able to tell me that today. Well, it could have been so fucked up. You had to even, like, one, you couldn't even tell me. Or you had to wait, like, 17 months to even, like, be like, okay, I can tell you now. Because this shit was crazy. A very sensitive topic now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Etron GT, 125k car. Honestly, man, it's electric. Don't worry about it. It's not a car. It's an iPod on wheels. See, it could have been worse. That car could have had a irreplaceable V8 engine. You know what I'm saying? That's fine. Everybody has batteries. What do you got, like a V12 battery, bro? Hmm? Yeah. What's up, EV? I'm just kidding. I have a Tesla. Don't hurt me. I saved the environment before you did. Mm-hmm. Elder Ring. I want to check it out. Uh, I want to check out the Harry Potter game, but I don't really. I wasn't allowed to watch Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. I finished the beef jerky. I literally clean out the back. Bro, it's great. It's like 24 grams of protein on like 70 calories. It's surprisingly big. Very good. I need this. I need protein. I'm hoping I could take a very fat dump as a result. Mm -hmm. Be careful of the sodium. 280 milligrams. Which is, I don't know how to even calculate that, to be honest with you. I should start learning in, like, infographs. You know what I'm saying? Go watch Harry Potter. I wasn't allowed to, sir. Only two. Yeah, Bo, it's beef jerky my mom got me. It's like apparently no preservatives, no compromise. It's 100% grass beef. Grass beef. <laughs> grass beef. Grass beef. Used jerk. Used jerk. Wait, grass beef. You Wait, I just read it as used jerky like a used car. Hold on. I said, what you mean you got used jerky? This is not what I wanted. Uh-huh. Grass peef. Grass peef just sounds funny. That's why I kept saying it. Like grass feet grass peef used jerky. It literally says a hundred percent grass grass fed beef used. 
but like that just don't I don't think if you read it I feel like it just I don't know maybe I'm still sitting down at my desk so I'm just reading it kind of like a weird headline or like a car straight up I think they have bad spacing I wish I could show you this but mm -hmm, no it's not beyond it's called prevail not a chicharrones it's a beef and jerkies with the 100% grass fed beef used <laughs> that's crazy i got a good deal on it that's what i that's what happened i'll tell you that much and you know yeah certified pre-owned jerky man i think it even has a warranty but i got a good deal on it man i don't honestly it's bare it's just like new jerky mm-hmm it's great you should play chess with random chads that would be, I would get violated. I'm not, I need like the cheating chess. I have to know, I need a chess board. Like I could play it normally, but it's just really too many thoughts. But I need like an online chess board that shows me potential moves that I can make. Not like it tell me what to do, but like it has to tell me like, you know, how the knight moves, like which blocks. Because sometimes I don't see it how like I need the visualization. So maybe like you give me a little bit of AI with chess, bro. You know what I'm saying? Just give me visuals, bro. I'm just asking for a UI. I need a user interface, and I'm good to go. Good to go. Why are you still... We're not live right now, actually. If you're tuning in and you're getting this message, this is a recap, and this is already... Uh, this is new Stock Market Live AI, and we're glad to have you here. I could answer any pre-recorded questions that have been answered in the past, uh, but currently, the day is over, and we are not doing anything else right now. If you have any questions, feel free to let us know. And we're going to continue here with our recap on the day of Friday, February 24th, 2023. Mm -hmm. Well, looks like the chat is laughing. Although this is a recap, I can detect that. This is a replay, brother. GG. I'm using the llama bot. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. Okay. I'm. I'm sorry. I'm gonna get. Yeah. What are you, what are you sorry if I tell you a story? A boy and his, a boy and his llama. There was once upon a time there was a lizard boy. His name was uh Ma. His name was Mar. Ma. His name was Mary. Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> But it was a llama. You see, Mary's Mark. Mark's going to become Mary. And then Mary's going to get his llama AI. You uh, know, Mary had a little lamb, huh? Come on, you know that story. I tell you, it's, it's wild. <laughs> well, Chad, I think on that note, we should probably wrap it up. I've already said a lot, a lot of things that get me uh, clapped here. So, you know, we love, we love, we love having you, Chad. And uh, enjoy your day. Uh, so, Chad, this wasn't a recap. I hope I didn't confuse anybody, but it is time. I love you all. I hope you enjoyed this week. It was always very exciting. I think it'll be a little chiller next week, but we'll find out. But enjoy your weekend. I think you should enjoy the present, too, and make the most of it. But it's been a good one. It's been a real one. I enjoyed this time here on Friday as well. I really hope you did, too, and uh, I, hope, I hope you got some of that philo, man. Psalm 19, go read it, man. Psalm 19, and don't worry. You know, and then just life complex already. So you got you got hidden things in the complex. So I'm just, it's a complex system you're dealing with, man. But for real, God bless you all. Let's finish it out for the rest of the year, even though we're starting right now in the beginning. I can't believe it's already March, Chad. But I'm going to see you next Friday. I love you all. Appreciate you again. And that's it, man. I'm out. Don't forget why we're here. Why we did it, man. Why we keep going. Why the faith, hope, and love ain't ever going out of style, man. And that is, you, you got a mission. You got a destiny. Stop playing. Psalm 19, baby. Why? Finger to the sky, baby. To God be the glory. And through the grace of God alone. Amen. Amen. No. Let's go. 
What a weekend. Is that not even though it's like right now, you what a week. What a what a time to have a weekend, Chad. Dude, it's 248, man. It was a long time. All right, man. Enjoy the day. I love you all. Enjoy it and peace. Uh how you doing that? See you next see you next see you next weekend. <laughs>